When do you think it started, folks? Washington's 106.7 WJFK. Here starts Ron and Fez. Okay, good. You're in for that, right? Ron and Fez. You know, uh, we're trying to put together something for this uh, $5,000 giveaway. We're giving away 5000 bucks on this show, which we've never done before. And Wonderboy uh, gives me some kind of a uh, proposal. And Monster's all tied into it. And I go, what is your love affair with Monster? <laughs> that I don't understand, because I saw the same thing. And page two of the proposal is entirely Monster. <laughs> Monster will do that. So it's basically you and I turning off mics, <laughs> hanging in headphones, over to Eileen Warnos, the male version. Why Wonderboys and him uh, exchange love use. So I don't know where that comes from. I'm still, I'm shocked, first of all. That monster was able to get the internship. For some reason, Cameron was completely out of the mix on that one. Then the other kid, he is uh, driving in from Boston twice a week. So I don't understand why that happened. Again, I was in the office for that day when Cameron came in and says to Wonder Boy, what's this about a new intern? Where's the paperwork? Again, that was stuff that I had already given to the proper people. I just hadn't shown what it to proper people. Bobby, who's the, uh, I guess, I'm not sure what she... Her department is like, I think it's like HR. Office manager. Right, office manager. But I gave it, I had told her about it. Right. But and I was just waiting to give it to her. Well, but you have to understand <laughs> that Cameron is the person. You know, Bobby's not going to come down and go, wait a minute, that kid looks weird. Right. She's just trying to get things done. <laughs> I wish she would at this point. It's up to Cameron to say, you. this Wonder Boy has brought a very odd person into our, into our place. Well, again, he was not that odd when right. he showed up. He's gotten odder since he's been he, here. He, he's creepy, and he's around every corner, and you two wear caps like your newborn chemo patients. He looks like he should be standing in front of something that says his height. That's what he looks like. He looks like he's in a lineup. He makes me feel weird. He makes Fez feel weird. And I'm telling you this, Wonder Boy, you're breaking me. I did not think it was possible. But as I left here today, I said... Uh, I called my chick, and I go, this kid's breaking me. And she goes, no. I go, yeah, it's happening. I don't know how much more I can take. Usually it's been the other way around. It's always been the other way around in our career. This kid's We've amazing. never fired anybody. This kid is amazing of what he's able to pull off. Right, here's Crazy Jen. Crazy Jen, you're on Manifest. Hey, I want to tell you about Warner Boy. He gave me a crazy call on Friday. He called me, right? And at your house? At my house. He called me. At Wonder Boy, you're calling her at her house over yes, the weekend. Yes, they did. After, yes, after a show, right? And at first he said he felt bad for me and everything about Thursday. You know, I messed up and everything. Did he ask you what you were wearing? He did. Uh, he said he was going to give it to me jersey style. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and then he said that he was sorry because he couldn't help me. Because when you asked him to help me with that bit, yeah. he didn't understand what you meant. And he just went off and he played off like he did because he didn't want to tell you. Why don't you want to tell me? Just same thing happened with the opening tonight. Well, I don't understand why you can't understand me and Fez. First of all, I never said that to you at all, Jen. Well, I you never, you oh, me, you never said her. that. Well, the thing why today, would thought, you? Why would you constantly pretend you know what we do for a living, pretend what we're talking about, and yet you never do when push comes to shove? I don't know. If I really didn't think I understood, I would definitely check with you. Oh, what, come on, Warner. What else you happened, Jen? That? And then he said, he was, you know, I was, I was saying how I was sorry for messing up and everything. Yeah. You know, I really loved your show. And I said, you know, you know, Perry offered me, you know, the co-host or whatever. And I said, His no, I love show. your show. Yeah. And he said, well, you know, you should really keep your options open because there's more than Ron and Fez out there. What I said was that you oh. don't want to what I said was you don't want to obsess on one particular thing. That was all I was saying. Yeah, what should I... she be doing? She's stuttering Jen now? She no. She's doing the Leno show? I specifically said you don't want to run around trying to go on other shows. I specifically said that, but I also said what? you don't want to get why fixated. Would you, why would you call a nutty caller at home <laughs> and start telling her weird stuff? What is wrong with you? Go ahead. Just no. to throw this out there real yeah. quick, on Friday, Crazy Jen had tried to do a gossip segment. It was awful. And and it went right in the toilet. And she's banned from the show now. Yeah. Hey, and then I asked him, I was like, by the way, I was like, why do they call you Wonder Boy? He was like, because Ronnie said I'm so wonderful and all my shows go so great. Oh, no. Uh, that's what he said. Oh, you I'm didn't... so 
uncomfortable. Oh. Why are you calling a listener at home he, he to begin it. with? Because she had asked me when she's here, oh, call me anytime. We should talk. Blah, blah, blah. You're, you're, you know what, man? You're full of it. You need to get the lion tamer in. I did not <laughs> tell you to call my husband. You have for a fact told, told me that. And then since your thing didn't go good on Thursday, as no, someone whose called, things haven't gone well, he, I thought I would tell no, you, hey, it's no biggie. No, 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 no. He called my house. He was like, hey, hey, this is Wonder Boy. Hey, let me give it to you Jersey style. Look Ronnie and I. Tell him you didn't say that to me. Did you say, let me give it to you, Jersey style? I said it sarcastically. What a stupid she, thing to say. No, because she and what is a Jersey style? It's nothing. That's why she I said it. I was being sarcastic. With another guy? She No, that's not <laughs> Jersey style. She said something is that about... Where you can't take the smell anymore? No, it has <laughs> nothing to do with that. It's nothing. It's not even a real thing. It was just something I right, said ask, to her. Ask Cameron, next time you have a meeting with him, say, with all these new rules coming down from the lawyers... Is it okay if I call listeners at home? Is it also okay if I bring up sexual things? Like, I'll give it to you Jersey style. Again. Just see Ed, if that gets over. Ask Fidel about calling listeners at home. As I go even more inside. He said, you like that, huh? You like that. Now, come on. That, I, I did know, not say. I know that you did. You know I why? I did not. You know why I know that you said that? Why? Because you're denying it. And anything that you deny, you actually did. <laughs> Hey, That's you, really broad, though. Did you yes. Say you say your name is Wonder Boy because you're so wonderful. If you, I guess, if you're saying it. Hey, did you say it? I said I did a good job when I no, first no, no. showed up did, with did them. Did you say because you're so wonderful? And hey, and last question. I called you Wonder Boy because Fez hated you, and I used to tease Fez. By acting like we were keeping you around. Well, hasn't it come back on you? Yes. <laughs> and did you say, did you tell me that you didn't understand what Ronnie told you on Thursday? And no. And that's why you had to play off. Look him in the eye. And I say, am looking him dead in the eye right now. And why, saying, no, why is your one eye going lazy, then? Well, that's a different problem. Hater. Fess up, man. Come on now. There's nothing to fess up to. Jen, you don't have to defend yourself here. We know you're telling the truth. Thank you. I'm just trying to look out for you guys. Well, thank God for you, because we've got nobody else. Yep, you got a rain man, then you got this one. Poor guy. Who's rain man? A monster. Yeah, let's not monster. switch names. Yeah, or monster. monster. Yup, his lackey. Who's who's lackey? That's what I don't understand in I this think, relationship. I think monster's uh, Wonder Boy's lackey. Wonder Boy, you're breaking me. You're literally breaking me. So we weren't supposed to find out about this phone call? Yeah, he told me not to tell you guys. I wasn't supposed to tell you guys that I talked to you. I did not did you say that. Oh, you know? yes. I did not say it. I did not say that at all, Jen. You what did. I said was, I was just calling you up to just try to be nice. Did you want her to started. make this call to me and Fez then? Tonight? Night? Yeah. No, I was just trying to call and be nice and be like, hey, look, you know, things happen. You just dust yourself off and keep going. You I don't feel what? like Why? that merits no, no. the show. Don't dust yourself off, Wonder Boy. Next time it happens to you, stay down. Like we pleaded to Rocky back in Philly. Stay down, Rock. That's why he's laughing, because he knows he's lying. Yes. Of course no, he is. His mouth's moving. I'm laughing because what you're saying is absurd, Jen. You I did not try to what? hide this. Here's the only part that matters to me, that you offered to give it to a listener jersey style. Yep. I didn't actually offer to do it. She was acting like I wanted to stop by and come over. You're full of it. When I, when I said you called me up, you, you were like, hey, how you doing? Let no. me give it to you, Jersey style. You're right. I, that was how I opened the phone call. I called you up. You, I said, hi, is Jen I there? I hey, I want to give it to you, Jersey style. I, I, I do. Did. I do have a girlfriend, and I have no interest in Jen at all. Wonder Boy, you say you want to give it to me, Jersey style, though, right? Would you please quit saying it? I I'm know. getting uncomfortable. I know. I can't stand it anymore. I don't even know what it is. I don't it's know not know even either. anything. Tommy does his what girlfriend, I guess. Doug said we can't dwell on that phrase anymore. First of all, is it even a real phrase? No, it is absolutely not a real phrase. She asked if I was from New Jersey, and that was how it came up. I knew there you is from no. New Jersey. All right, I don't want to hear Jersey again. Seriously, I no... hate the state. You big liar. <laughs>
because of you. I used to love it for Springsteen, and now that because you're from there, you've ruined it for me. <laughs> I'm not even going to go back to Atlantic City. Can we say I'll put you in a garden state? Wonderful. You're the biggest liar I ever met in my whole entire life, and I knew some big ones. My well, thank goodness. You. I appreciate it. I finally accomplished something. You're, you just did not ever. Oh, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Just I apologize to her. I can't apologize. You her said something did. to her. I called you know what? to be nice this to her. Is why, she fun of me. This is why I always believe Mikey D over you. Wonderful. Always. Oh. Mikey you threw me under of... the bus on Thursday because you said, you were like, yeah, Ron, I'm going to help her out. And then you were like, I don't even know what he was talking about. Oh, is that what you're saying about me? No. Like I I'm didn't... a bumbling, crazy bastard? No, not at all. Jen is crazy. She's literally no. crazy Jen. Jen. You know what? <laughs> I'll <laughs> still <laughs> take her over you. I'll take her, hurry. I'll I'll take any, I'll take Osama over, over you right now. Do you think we can get him? She's talking about conversations I never even had with her. They're only you called her inside of her home. head. You called her I at home. I did call her at home. But I oddest, up. First of all, let's stop there. That's the oddest thing I've ever heard of before. Well, Calling Crazy Jen at home. Yep. What time was it? Uh, it was 11 o'clock at night? No, it was, was not 11 o'clock at night. And you right know she, there, that's a lie. And you know she had to climb uh -huh. up that pole to answer the phone. I heard a ring, 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 ring. And I was like, who is calling me 11 o'clock at night? He was like, hey, want a jersey style? I was like, who is this? Uh, He's like, stop saying that phrase, okay? You're don't, annoying me. Don't say that again. Stop saying it. Right it doesn't mean anything. He was going down 95 South. He said he wanted directions for some mystery place. I don't know where he was going. Oh, geez. I don't know. That's He's, crazy, Jen. I don't mind. Booty you know what? call. He That's said, a booty call you made. No, a booty call is after 11. We don't even get off till 11. There's no way I could have called you. I, I, yes, you couldn't have called her before 11. Exactly. He said, I can't tell you where I'm going in case you talk to Ronnie about this phone call because oh, I don't want that stuff my, to get on the I just want to answer feedback. Trey says, I'm from Jersey, and even now I hate the state. Yeah. Bon Jovi has moved because of you, too. <laughs> All right, Jen. All right. All right, stop screaming. Oh, I don't know who I hate more. Right now, I don't know who I hate more. <laughs> Jimmy, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, guys. Hey, buddy. Go ahead, pal. Hey, um, Wonder Boy. Yeah, Jimmy. You're a scumbag. Why am I a scumbag? No, it's it just fact. You're First of all, you scumbag. call as a business. You don't call. You don't call a customer after nine o'clock. Ever, ever. Well, you're, you're right. I guess. I guess that makes me a scumbag because I was trying to be nice and didn't get a chance. How to was I trying to be nice? nice? Do you think I know that, what Jersey the way style means too? I know, but no, no, it doesn't mean anything. I, I don't even want to hear the phrase again. Okay, the phrase stops now. Right. The phrase stops now. There is nothing. I didn't think I had to tell you this. I don't want you calling up the listeners at their house late at night and coming on to them. I would Particularly not. Particularly one who is clinically retarded. I would not come on you to didn't. any of the listeners. You called a retard. I, I did thought... call. I did call Crazy Jen, and I did call her tonight, but I would have no. Is it interest in her in the least? What else do we need to do to go over the basics here? Uh, don't dig up some of the listeners' dead grandparents. I'm going to ask you that one. Because apparently we have to do all of this. Yeah. Well, don't poison listeners. Uh, don't go paint swash stickers on listeners' houses. All of this we have to go through with you. Now we have to give out all the rules to you. Because you don't know the difference. Those are things I never would have done. Uh, try not to kill our listeners' pets. If I had a gun, I don't, right now I don't know whether I'd kill myself or him. Maybe murder-suicide. Maybe murder-suicide. Take I, me out, too, just so I don't have to answer a lot of questions downtown. I planned on it. <laughs> I am certainly not trying to cause any pain odd by doing this. You're odd. I didn't say I wasn't odd, but I have the... Just stop talking. Stop talking and, and get in the wastebasket. Stand in the wastebasket and think for a minute. Dubs, when you, hey. you know you don't face us when you stand in the wastebasket. I don't think I get both feet in there. You do your best. When he gets his feet in the wastebasket, push his face up against the wall so he can think. There you go. Lean right in there, Dubs. Thank you. You know what I feel like? I am the uh, caretaker... <laughs> of some kind of house for the retarded when one of them touches the other. And I know that they don't mean to, and yet it still skeeves you. <laughs> Are you thinking, Wonder Boy? Yes, I am. Is it helping you? I guess a little bit. You need wet shoes 
That's probably the best part. I feel like that would distract me from thinking about... Sometimes I think if your socks are wet, it'll help you. All right, we're going to take a break. I don't know what to do here, Fez. I don't know what to do. Wonder Boy, I want a blanket apology to Jen and everybody from the, from the Garden State. I apologize to everybody from New Jersey, except for Crazy Jen, who All I right, think is doing. All right, now you're not just... You can't let us get out of it, can you? At least admit that Mikey D is right and you're always wrong. Not I'll admit I, that. No, I would sooner apologize to Jen. Mikey is never right. Well, if you would have apologized to Jen when you were supposed to, I wouldn't have brought Mikey up, who is always right. Mikey is the biggest liar I've ever met. He, because he lies without even basing anything on fact. He has things that happen in his imaginary head. You know head. what, though? He, seriously, you're worse than a liar because you conspire to keep things away from me and Ronnie. That's the part I hate the most. That, Don't tell them. That's worse than a lie. And let's say this. Crazy Jen, no matter what we say about her, she's truthful to a fault. Thing about her. And has. All right, we're going to take a break. Oh. It's like I get a neck ache from him, Fez. He's a dagger. He's it's a like, walking dagger. It's like every show we're doing turns into the hideout. <laughs> like, we're, like we're working through phone lines, telling each other that we love each other. I love you, Ronnie. Don't, don't even joke. All right? Let's not joke about that. Oh, the head just is killing me. All right, here's our friend Mikey Day. Mikey Day, how are you, buddy? Hey, guys. What's up? Not a pal. Well, listen, I just wanted to, um, I'm sorry to burden you with this, but the WB conspiracy continues. Oh, please. I really can't stand thinking about Wonder Boy. Well, this is an interesting fact. Yeah. You know, he's been saying, you know, crankcase, he, nobody wants to play. Cameron doesn't want us to be down there. Right, because I asked you to play your band to come in. Right. Uh, Skank Shift to come in and play at our next live show. Correct. And, you know, this mongrel off the street, as W.B. has called me... He called you mongrel off the street, that's right. Right. I was able to converse with uh, Cameron over the weekend. Uh-huh. And it seems that it's not a W.B. call, it's a Ron and Fez call, and Cameron has given me the green light. He says he doesn't even understand why I would not be invited to anything. Now, uh, where did you run into him? I emailed him. Now, uh, the, uh, because you were so upset by what Wonder Boy said. Yeah, I was upset because, you know, I'm not just a mongrel off the street. And um, I, I think I you. have a nice repertoire with Cam. Yeah. That we could talk. Right. And I wanted I him to that, call him Cam. Yeah. Call him Cam and have a French word with him. <laughs> Come on. I think that we're able to speak to each other. Right. You know, and, you know... No, hold on, J-Dub. But good things to say. J-Dub's the one's getting involved. Yeah, I saw the email you sent Cameron, Mikey D. What did it say? It was like, whether it's a bit or not with, with Wonder Boy, I still should be able to play the show. Really? Yeah. Now, and so Cameron doesn't even know what... Yeah, he's like, he's like, what bit? <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. I try to sleep at night. This has been a wonderful weekend so far. Wonder Boy has called a listener at home inappropriately. Uh, Mikey D has called the boss, the program director, and emailed him. And I was at a listener's house, Jafters, uh, going through his wife's underwear drawer. So it's been a great weekend. Also, me and Hefe told each other we love you. Yeah, it's yeah. Very of course, odd. the debacle at the hideout. All right, Bond Daddy's calling us just the ambiguously gay duos. <laughs> it is odd. It is odd. The quartet. So Cameron said, yes, you can play the gig. It has nothing to do with... With anything he, actually, he, he has nothing to do with with Wonder Boy. It has he hasn't tried. banned you, Mikey. What, Mikey? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with me? Doug? I don't understand where you get off. Where you think you're involved here? You're not. I am. Why do you think you can talk to my boss? You're insane. You know why? That I is think I can? up for you to because be doing that. Because I can, and you can. No, you can't, Mikey. You can't. You can't just, just start calling. He it's just inappropriate, did. and it doesn't mean anything. Well, he caught Mike, you in a lie. He's placating you. He's like, sure, Mike, what do I care? Because he doesn't want to get involved. No, That's why I'm here. No way. He's you... insane people away from us. You used Cameron's name. Did you not? Yeah. Because yeah, Cameron and I talk, and he knows so Mikey's he Mike? nuts. No, Mikey and him don't talk. Mikey stalks him. All right, Mikey, why don't you read us the email back? You read want us... me to read the email? Yeah, I want you to read each email. 
Okay, hold on. Let me get to my computer. All right. Uh, Fezzi, why this is all going on, uh, Wonder Boy, please step away. Is this the weirdest life we have now? This is bizarre. And you and I, we have done things that we yeah. that we'll never discuss again even yeah. to each other. Sure. People are buried. <laughs> okay. And, yeah. All right. Go ahead. Uh, this is mine to, to Cam's. Yeah. Subject, just a hello. Just a hello. Just a hello. Cam, I wanted to say hello because it's been a while since we have seen or spoken to each other. I hope everything is okay with you, but I'm sure you've been very busy the last few weeks. I know there are more important agendas on your desk, but I do want to say on behalf of Clank Case and myself, we would be honored to play at any event in the future for the show. Bit or no bit with Wonder Boy, I wanted you to hear that from me. As with everything else, hang in there, and I sincerely mean this, if I can ever help in any way, please let me know. I hope to get down there soon and we can chat. Keep up the good work, Mikey D. Does he know what crankcase is, or does he think you want to work on your car and in the studio? He knows what crankcase is. Believe me, Fez. Yeah, everybody does. All right, so that was the odd letter you and sent to like, poor I Cameron. have to play dubs. Right. This is what I said, verbatim. Yeah. All right, and then what did he write back to you? He just said, Mikey D, very cool to hear from you. Your emails are always a welcome sight. It's been a little rough here, but the worst is behind us. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> we I, haven't gotten that email yet. <laughs> yeah. It's a rough way to live, but the climate... That's how the climate is. All right. That's, I think, man, well, first of all, I'm uh, Mikey, long, uncomfortable is, because it's too personal. Mikey, that is just stock things. He's just blowing you off. He's, He's not, not saying he wants... Off. Mikey, you haven't seen him because you're not in his life. And he goes, right. as for the band, that is all Ron and Fez's call. Yeah. And not WB's. And I can't imagine that you that you are not invited to anything. All right. J-Dub just wrote to me, I'm labeling this as the gay... Show for the best stuff. <laughs> it really is odd. I'm very uncomfortable with I, all of you. Like you have no business writing to the people where I work, trying hey, to you have try no to go business over. Telling me who I can write. To, you can't bro. go over my head, bro. That's you can't. Not over your you just head. did it. But that you, there, you have no reason. And if you think that means you're coming to the gig, you're out of your mind. Well, yes, he's coming. He's oh, coming and he's playing. Oh. There's no reason. No, the we're going to get a, no. a good band. The only reason why Fez and I didn't say exactly yes, because you told us all that Cameron doesn't want him here. Because we don't want crazy people. We make a concerted effort here to keep insane fringe people away from the shows. Uh, Mikey, well, by the way, that. Uh, tell Mob Monster to get more water. <laughs> you can't sit around and say that we don't have nutty people here. When you hired a kid who went into rehab at 12. But he hasn't written one inappropriate letter to Cameron yet. Or, you know Mikey or made one inappropriate phone call to a listener's home at after 11 p.m. Yeah, and you snuck monster by Cameron. That's Mikey, true. you don't know Write that anything. Next, write that in your next letter to Cameron. Mikey, I get know. one to Alan, too, Mikey. You don't know leave Alan you or Michael Hughes in the dark on this. That's the next step. Alan's going to get an email from me. Do you know how insane that sounds? It's not Seriously. insane. Why don't you just write a Dear Mel letter and get it over with? What do you, you think I should? He'll throw you in jail. You're they out of your me. mind. Let me right tell you believe... something. <laughs> I'm able to socialize, Wonder Boy. This is the weirdest thing since Cigar Sick cornered Alan in the parking lot. What do you know about an internship? What happened? <laughs> what happened? Why am I out? Alan's like, who are you? Mikey, just because you've seen Cameron one or two times does not mean that you and him are pals. What did Cameron say to him in the letter? It's cool to hear from you. I'm, you know. Your emails are a welcome sight. And he even liked the techno crap. He yeah. loves it. He loved me from the very beginning that he met me. Why aren't you here, Mikey? He doesn't love you. He's being nice to you. He's being professional. And I'm getting sick and tired of you thinking you're going to come and do my job. Because you, you know do why I'm not there is because of... You're not there because I'd whip your ass if you showed up. Oh! oh! Wonderful. Oh! Listen. Oh! Listen no, to listen to what? Why don't you send me an email, Mikey? No, I'm not going <laughs> to send And I'll tell you, you what email. a welcome sight it is to see your drivel in my inbox, you ass. Watch your back, okay? Because I'll come down there and I'll... And do what? You, I Techno will me to death? up just for fun. Uh, anytime. And I have to be on the air. 
Okay? Oh, yeah, I'm going to get you on the street. I mean, we can't do boxing uh, on on the air anymore, but I we can uh, you can beat him up before the show if Not you want. Problem for I'd me love too. And I will. Mikey, this is another I mean, live thing. Come in early. You Any, know, anytime, liar. Just come on down anytime. You know, I'm always there early. I always said, uh, you know, whenever, whenever I'm there, I'm setting up the studio. I'm putting the carts away. You can't even do that. Yeah, That's true. And when I go on vacation, I show up early, too. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean you could be I'm here. I'm not on vacation, bro. Trust me, when you come down, it is. This is like Disney World for you. You don't belong here. You prevented me from being there. Talent and experience? No, no, it's not really. Right. Just any time, Mikey. Right. Any time. You want to come down, bring it on. I will. I will be there. You know, I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to be there. I'm, I'm going to surprise you. Great. I mean, I would love to do this. I know we can't get the boxing on. I would love to do a boxing, but you guys would have to do something. And maybe we'll do it where it has nothing to do with the station. Yep. Maybe Fez and I will go buy a club one night. We won't talk about it on the air. We'll just do it. But you guys got to be ready to put something up. I'm ready. No Whether problem. it's money, I'd say hair versus hair, but hair means nothing to you, Wonder Boy. You've been through so much. You know what, man? If I lose to Wonder Boy, I'll never be on the show again. Well, I can go for that. Yeah, and if you lose Wonder Boy, you're out as the producer. Nah, let's uh, not get hasty. Oh, there oh. you go. <laughs> you know why, Mikey? Because you are not here to dictate what happens. Right, here's, that's yeah. what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, but you know what? I have a more in with your boss than you. That's true. That part is true. What about this? And I'm just going by the seat of my pants here. If we can get a match set up, winner makes out with the other person's chick in the middle of the ring. Ooh. Would you put it up? I don't want to kiss a skank, though. Oh. oh. Do not call my wife a skank. She's not a skank. She's, She's very the beautiful. She's that you could ever kiss. I've yeah. seen pictures of skeleton. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so Seriously. Put her in there. Yeah, why attack a... a uh, a dear sweet lady like that that we all adore. Because I'm tired of Mikey. I don't know what else to do to get it through to his big, thick, dumb head that he's not welcome and it's not his. He has nothing to do with this. He's Mikey, the same would as you everybody else? Mikey, would you put up chick versus chick in a makeout match? Absolutely. In a second, I'll put it up. I, it doesn't matter, Mikey. I'm gonna whip your ass. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna whip your ass, and then your girlfriend's gonna have a threesome with me and my wife. Well, that might happen anyway. All right, hold on. Let me put you on hold, Mikey. Okay. Wonder Boy, go in the other room. Fezzy, I would love to get this on. I know we can't, but I would love to get it on the air. We're just going to have to find a dock somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Why can't we fight on docks? <laughs> on a Saturday night or something. Hey, have you ever heard anything lower? You know how Mikey feels. How we all feel about uh, Mikey's wife. And then he says that. He just screams skank in Mikey's face. It's ridiculous. And then Skellington on the other side of this. Yeah, I know. And we all know what happens when Wonder Boy puts his girlfriend up. You know what I'd rather do? I'd rather get rid of both those guys and just have their chicks make out. <laughs> and the show would still be as well produced. All right, Dubs, come here. You met both, both these guys before. Who would want to fight? Definitely Mikey D. Yeah. I'm... I'm speaking as a guy who's had beefs with both Wonder Boy and <laughs> Mikey D. Sure. And I, I know... Who would I be, how, who I'd be more afraid of if I got in the ring? You saw how many times that Wonder Boy will break into tears around here. Yeah. I make him cry twice a week. Twice a week I make him cry. His tears always get frozen to him out in the parking lot. I bone that he's now saying all he hears is Chuck and Buck. And <laughs> <laughs> it's a Chuck and Buck match. <laughs> so who would win, Chuck or Buck? Uh, Colleen, Colleen, you're on a Fez. Hi. Yeah. Hey, listen, I've been listening to you guys for a while. Um, you know, it's always when the one Mikey D comes on, he's always screaming at the top of his lungs. Yeah, he gets um, upset. I, I understand from listening to you guys for a while that Jen, she's kind of like a friend of the yeah. show. I guess it's inappropriate to call it 11. I don't know what kind of friendship they have. Uh, but I tell you what, Fez is on there honestly talking all the time about, like, I'm depressed, I'm getting help. He's just like the sweet guy doing the right thing. Don't you think a couple other people might need some help, some serious help? There like is, your friend Mikey D. Okay. You know what? Most He's of the people are attention. most of the people that are guests here. I would love to get help for. <laughs> I would love that they had the same insurance Fez does. And I'm not even saying that. I'm not saying it to be funny either. Yeah. We need one of those dream team vans. 
<laughs> so we can haul them all away or maybe take them to a ball game or something. But the screaming and the constant fighting. is The one guy's a kid. Isn't he kind of young? And the other one sounds older. It's just it's getting old. Yeah, it's driving me It's nuts. getting a little old. All right, thank you very much. It's driving me crazy. Fuzzy uh, Steels has come up with an idea, and you know how he runs the underground. He has a little operation. I'm not going to talk about what it is, but two men enter, one man leave. And it's a, it's a real fight club. Maybe we go like that with them guys. That may be the only way to go. Hi, hi, hi I'm Ron Fez. Hello? Skank? All right, this is Mikey's wife, Helen. Is that what you just called me, you ass? All right, you can't. Don't curse right now. We're okay, going through listen, a bad time. Listen, what can I call him? Because I was good enough to be on the phone with him when he was doing all his, you know what, crying about you know who. All right, hold on. My, now. Look what you've done, Wonder Boy. Do all that on the air right now. Dump, dump all of it out. That's what you get for picking on an innocent person. Mikey should not be involved in this. Mikey. And then other people get dragged into it. You're the one doing the dragon. Because Mikey won't stay out. Where all you had to do was say yes. I would like to make out with his girlfriend if, if I beat him. His wife. And now you got her cursing on our show. I'm tired of him driving. I know, but you know the restrictions that we're under now. Yes. Did everything get dumped out of properly? Yeah. Uh, the, I, I, I don't know why I, he... I, I, where, where's your song? Where's the friend, fr uh, Frito Bandito song for you? Every time you're stuttering I. She has no right, and she should not be involved in this. No, he should away. not be giving get her away. the phone. Get away. I wanted to talk to Helen, and you saw how furious she was. And right now, there's no talking to her. And Mikey knows the pressure we're under here on this situation. And <laughs> he's got her <laughs> dropping those things on the air. Well, right now, the only thing that we can even think of is some sort of underground Chuck and Buck fight club <laughs> on a dock. Which, why are the Fezzi and I have to think about things like that? Why does it always have to go that far with you? Don't you answer me. I just want you to sit and think. Why does it always have to go this far? Where normal people, nice people, are screaming. And did you used to cry on the phone with her about uh, today's C? I was sad. I don't know if I was crying. Why would you bother Mikey's wife and then say something horrible like that? I'm going to have to take the cell phone off of you at the end of the show. And not return it until the next morning. That was a long time ago, and everything was a lot different. She was nice, and we had a friend. She show. did nothing wrong to you ever. You were fighting with Mikey. Then you call his wife a skank, and that's why she's mad now. And you know she's not a skank. She's very hot. She used to peel for a living, for God's sake. For God's sakes, what more can you want? <laughs> And when a person is a professional dancer. And she's been a friend of the show for a long, long time. Before we knew Mikey and before we knew you, we were friends with Helen. And never once have we had a problem with her. And tonight you got to that furious. You, I don't know how you do this with people. You're the devil. <laughs> I'm tired of him and it got me, I, it gets me too wound up. I'm tired of him. Did you used I'm to call his wife and, and whine on the phone about how much you loved and missed your girlfriend? Yes or no? No, she called me. She called to see how I was doing, and I would I answer, hey, well, things are kind of rough. And then she would try to explain that things are going to be all right. But I was not... Oh, no wonder you call crying. her a skank then. No wonder that you would attack her out of nowhere. Yeah, somebody comes to you at your lowest time. And what do you say? Skank. Is skank some sort of code word for shoulder to cry on that I'm not getting? And I know you cried. I know you cried. Not on the phone with, with anyone's wife. You used to cry all the time around the studio when you got dumped. I got a little choked up. I wasn't always crying. And again, I was a little... How many tears called. before it turns into cries for you? They actually have to be like rolling down the cheeks. I feel like welled up is just a pretend and you cry. cried. Anyway, she is getting to, uh, to be a recipient of the fury I have with him because he doesn't know when he's not welcome. I hope she writes a, a, an email to Cameron about this. I hope Cameron gets an email. 
There's nothing I did wrong here. I'm allowed to uh, have feelings about anyone I can have. I want to have feelings about. They seem to have some sort of hotline to Cameron that yeah. you don't have. Because every day I ask you if you checked in with Cameron, and oh. it's like I haven't seen him. His door shut. But I guess he's on the on the line. I hope he fucks the crazy Jen about that crazy uh, conversation you had with her. The skank call. None of these people have to be calling my boss. It's they should Someone be corresponding with him. What other is, other way is there to get through to you at this point? Mikey's just embarrassing himself by trying to get please, his boss's message. Please stop talking. I'm gonna go back on this line. I don't know whether it's gonna be Mikey or Helen. Mikey. No, it's me, and I just want to apologize to you, Ron, and to you, Fez, because you know that that is so not like me. Okay, can you keep it cool? I'm trying, but you know what? This really, this really bites. This I know. really bites because I can't believe what a loser this guy has turned out to be. And yes, he was crying, guys. And yes, it was the only girl in the world. And he adored her. And was life going to go on? And was life worth living? And what was love? He was the philosopher. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's that Night at the Roxbury song. <laughs> what, what is love? love? Please. I know. I remember how he used to be that and time. And on and on. I used to tell him to swallow a bullet. I said, maybe you feel better if you so, swallowed a bullet. Helen, did he ever call you? Yes, of course he called me. He claimed that you called him at his yeah, house and bothered I called him. him to say, how are you? How's everything? And you know what? Maybe there were times where I did call him because I thought he was a nice person. But he doesn't seem very nice anymore, especially when he's bringing out the real ugly in people. So he should look within himself. You know what's weird about this? Uh, you know, even more offensive to me is we've always called Helen 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 because let's face some facts, kind of a blabber mouth. Yeah. Things yeah, so, so it's tell. not it's not tick a lock, but this is something she kept to herself until now. Yeah. We never knew about these mystery okay, phone this calls. This is a breaking point because you know what? There are bits, there are things that people say. Right. You can put up with it. You yeah. don't call somebody a skank. He called you skank. Okay. And said he wouldn't and make I, out with you. I won't even go into the detail of how I feel about this boy. Truly feel about him. Right now, at this moment, and I don't think it's going to get any better. So next time he falls in love, hope he doesn't split his wrist because he has nobody to cry to. Because I don't think he's making, he's not making any friends, it seems, down there. He barely has wrist. any friends. Yeah, he's not making friends. And you know what? I'll take that. I'll take him down. I know you would. Take down his girlfriend. I'll take him down. I know you would. And this, you know, guys, this is not me. I, know. I am ready. To, if he was in front of me, I would just normally have my when, way with him. Normally, when I um, I'm with you, you and I are always trying to score checks together. <laughs> so I never saw you angry. I probably have gotten farther with um, Wonder Boy's chicks than he has. Yeah. Well, me too <laughs> no. with that one. Yeah. But that was craziness. Yeah, well, you know. You know how it is, but... All right, honey. All right. I apologize for the same no, thing. No, I'd be happy to make out with you. And I apologize to the listeners and to you, too. Thank you very Not much. Not that... <sighs> I know. I know. All right. Okay, let me go vomit. I'll talk right. to you later. All right. Go vomit. Thank you, Helen. Let me go vomit. How many people hang up and say that to us? All right. That's not going to be our new sign-off. <laughs> What is love, Helen? What is love? I wish they would have taped those calls. Oh, I know. <laughs> is life worth living? No, Wonder Boy. The answer is no. Call me when you're depressed, and I'll tell you exactly what to do. I'll tell you over the phone how to make a noose. <laughs> you know, you could always hang yourself with your bed sheets. For some reason, I would always go naked with my belt from the shower curtain, like an officer and a gentleman. There's not a shower curtain rod in the world that could hold you up. Hey! Rude, rude. You know it's true. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back and start the show for real now. For real, okay? And Wonder Boy, you're not speaking the rest of the night. Woohoo! And not just on the air, but off air. You're just stand quietly. And I guess I'm going to have to take the phone. Yeah. So that none of the listeners get a phone call tonight at like, midnight. Like it was Marge Shot, what they used to do with her when she was drinking. They would have to clip the phone before she called someone crazy. <laughs> All right, uh, Fez, this is an email I got. An email? Yes, an email. The postman bring that to you today? Uh, postman, I'm not familiar with that. The emails come to us through a computer. Perhaps this will help you. And now, Ron and Fez, the show of the future brings you... 
Electronic mail. Mail sent electronically. Oh, that's how it works. Uh, this came to us from uh, Mikey D's wife, Helen, who we talked to last night and was so furious over Wonder Boy calling her a skank uh, that she dropped the F-bomb on the show and we had to dump out of it. Um, and we've never had that problem. You and I have known her for years. We've actually knew her before even Mikey D. So that we're, we're kind of shocked about that. Um, let me just read this email. It says, Ronnie, just a note to say, I'm so very sorry about last night's F-bomb fiasco. As you guys know, that is so not me. I've just been under a tremendous amount of stress lately with my mom being diagnosed with Alzheimer's and with some very major health issues again with myself. But I should have so totally not have let that happen. I should have never let that idiot get under my skin. I'm usually way cool, but I just snapped. It happens very rarely, but when I do, look out. I hope the blank didn't hit the fan for you guys. I would be so upset if he did. I know nothing made the air, but still, it was my bed. Anyway, sorry again, and tell Fezzi I'll call him tonight to say the same. It's been very heavy on my chest all day. Thanks for defending me. I realized last night just how much I missed the two of you. And all the good times. Lots of love. Helen. P.S. As for Wonder Boy, I'm so sorry you guys have to work was such a horribly, disgusting, freakish waste of life. He should be the new poster boy for pro-abortions. Thank goodness I'm done with him. Now, this was a person that Wonder Boy used to cry on the phone to after his girlfriend dumped him. Long conversations. He would uh, whine and cry, and she was there for him. So, Wonder Boy, I just want you to know that sometimes when you snap like you do, Look how it affects people. I didn't mean to affect her like that, but when people are constantly attacking me, sooner or later, did she, she blurts... Did she constantly attack you? No. She, she's Helen, never been anything but a friend of the show. Yeah. She, Helen didn't actually do anything That would me. be like uh, people at, Fez, uh, at Jeffter's party being so furious with Fez and his actions that they had attacked another person. It wouldn't make sense, wouldn't it? Would it? No, that would be wrong. I think that was totally different because I was just joking. Sometimes it hurts. What were you saying, Wonder Boy? I said it was wrong for me to attack a person that wasn't involved in Is the this fight. time for you to get more flowers like you had to for Julie Fallman? If that's what it takes. I, I... You know what? You ought to call Flores and get some kind of a deal on a truckload. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm really tense lately, and I have a tendency to blurt things out that I shouldn't be blurting out. Why you have it's... Now, you just heard the email that Ronnie read from Helen, and you're going to focus on your own problems right. and Her your mom, own tension. She's sick. And her mom has Alzheimer's. Now, we're going to hear that you're going through a lot of tension. What do you have to be tense about? I just get tense when people like Mikey feel like they have to constantly call up and needle me. And what happened was I got fed up with it. You don't feel like you have time in the day to, you know, like get us bad directions and get needled? You know what we should do is pull that part uh, that you said about his wife last night. So we'll play that later tonight. Okay. okay? But you were wrong. I keep waiting for the apology, Fez, but I haven't heard it. So maybe you'll apologize after you hear it, okay? You run out and do that. All right, I'll go listen. Run, to run. I'm going to count one, two. When I count to 20, have it. There he goes. That's going to be my new thing is to make him run out of the room. I like it a lot. Yeah, so do I. He... I look around, there's just so much fighting. He spins around a lot in circles, and then he finally takes off. Yeah, that's the part I like, though. The whirling dervish. <laughs> he really is. And to blurt out what he blurted out last night. Just forget it, Fez. Let's not even think about it. I told him afterwards, smooth move, x lax Way to go. What did you say? I told him last night, Ronnie. I said, smooth move, x lax Way to go. I put him in his place. No, last night. Was that the 1950s? Because I think that's when people said such stupid stuff. Hey, I got to reboot this. Some animal... Uh... Send us a, a virus. So give me the big reboot. Whatever you have to do to do that, Wonder Boy. Yeah. Which hopefully is you quitting and getting a new job. Did you get that piece for us, Wonder Boy? Yes, I did. Yeah. Did. And also, uh, we got something sent to us from Mike, the teacher from last night. 
which he also, um, I sent to J-Dubs. All right, so let's hear that piece. This is Wonder Boy acting like an idiot last night. Where is it, Wonder Boy? Put it in there for me. Why wouldn't you just put it in before you can run and doing all the other stuff? I don't understand. Cue it up. Here we go. WJFK is now. Oh, wrong one. What about this? If we can get a match set up, winner makes out with the other person's chick in the middle of the ring. Ooh. Would you put it up? I don't want to kiss a skank, though. Oh. oh. Why would you cut out the do not? That's where it really was great. That it was might the drama coming. of it. So you honestly think it's you. I, no, I feel like that was the part where I, I was I want really you to cold. hear how angry you got those people, and I want you to just have Mikey shock. All right. I'm sorry, is that too hard for you? No, no, no. What, are your legs painted on? No. Harry, you're on the fence. Run, I'm counting. One, two. All right, uh, Wonder Boy, let's hear that thing uh, that you did last night. Winner makes out with the other person's chick in the middle of the ring. Ooh. Would you put it up? I don't want to kiss a skank, though. Oh! Do not, do not call my wife a skank. She's not a skank. She's she a very is the beautiful best thing woman. that you could ever kiss. I've yes. seen pictures of skeleton. <laughs> wow. Ouch. <laughs> All right, so you... Uh, yeah, that's plenty, that's plenty. All right, you could understand now that you crossed the line, right? I went too far by attacking his wife. Yes, I did. I crossed so would you like to apologize? I will apologize to, he to Helen and tell her that uh, I'll definitely make out with her after I whip Mikey's ass. That's not a problem for me. All right, but I don't think now that the make out with each other's chicks, whoever is the winner thing, which honestly I set up just because Mikey's going to beat you. I never in a million years thought that you would hurt Helen's feelings from that. Well, I apologize, and I look forward to making out with her. I have no problem with it. I can put the past behind us. It's not a problem. So this that doesn't come across as an apology to me. It comes across as light, happy fun. And I want you to know that you uh, upset her and she's going through a bad time. I am truly sorry. I really did not mean to hurt Helen's feelings at all when I said that. And on top of that, I don't mind making out with her at all. Why did you say last night you wouldn't? Because I was angry with Mikey and I was trying to hurt Mikey's feelings by bringing her into it. Well, you hurt a lot of people's feelings, well, especially two. Helen's. Two. I don't think anybody else got their feelings hurt. I was chagrin. Is this Mikey online on that line? That's normally the Mikey line. Look at the speed he moves with. If it is, nobody I am me. Yeah, it's not. Okay, I heard a yeah and a no at the same time. No, it's not Mikey online, too. Okay. He doesn't want to call in and have me yell at him, I guess. So I don't want him to call in. I don't want you to yell at him. I'll next slap you now. I might even next slap you for Helen. And I'm going to start next slap in the front of your throat. Nice. Throat slaps. I apologize for what I said to Helen. I shouldn't have said it. I was in a heat. And I shouldn't have. in a heat. Does that mean that, that, is that why the other male dogs were hanging around? I mean, I was the in mongrel, a heated state. The mutt. I was heated up. Is that up. what you're saying? No. I'm not trying to say that at all. I'm saying I was angry, and I was trying to be hurtful to Mikey, and I dragged some. All right, I what, please do me a favor. Stop repeating, okay? Yes. Tell me right now you'll never repeat again. I will not repeat anymore. Is that repeating? If you do it no. constantly. You get one sentence, you say it, and then you say that sentence again. Like the rest of us can't follow English. Matter of fact, I'm not getting off into this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk to you tonight. Because of that. Because you're not good on the air. Alright, Mikey D said, I don't want to yell again, he makes me so furious. You're always making people furious, Wonder Boy. Just be aware of that. That that you have something about you that makes people angry. I don't think Mikey's a stable person. So I don't think that you can blame his anger on me. He's always angry. Wonder Boy told me that he's got some news for us tonight. I told him to shut up. And I don't know if I want to speak to him at all. Because news from Wonder Boy, Fuzzy, is bad news. That's what it is. If the news is he's going to be shut up tonight, then that's good news. If that's the announcement, yeah. I will not be speaking. I right, Wonder Boy, you get five seconds. What do you want to say? I talked to the lawyers today, and I have boxing approved on the Ron and Fez show. No way! 
I'd like to say more, but my five seconds is expired. No. Uh, you know what? I'm going to extend your five seconds and also give you the ability to use the three wise men that will be standing by. One of them is a girl astronaut. Mr. Chairman from the great district of Columbia, I would like to allocate more time to the idiot from the Rod of Fez show. Now, why do you think that every senator is Southern? No matter what it is, if all that lay, Mr. Chairman, the fine people of Maine would like to say... All right, Wonder Boy, get over here. So you've got boxing. Yeah. We're going to do a boxing event. Yes, we're going to do a boxing event. The lawyers have okayed it. All right, so why did it take so long? What did, they, what did you have to explain to them, that we're not using knives? Well, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I just said that it was something that it was really... Important. You know, I had a bored, statement to make. Now you've bored me again. I went from being excited until I gave you a little unlimited time, and I wish I had. I convinced them that this had not happened. Aye, 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 aye. That's all he does. It's the I, I, I song. This kid opens almost every sentence with I, and if he doesn't, it's him within the first sentence. For no self-esteem, he thinks a lot of himself. I know. We were on the we were on the phone with the lawyers. We were yes. Who cares? Them. Who cares? This seems like it should be backstage stuff. So you convinced the lawyer. Fine. Who helped you from here? Uh, Who helped you from the station? Cameron did. I'm willing to say Cameron did 100 percent of the work, and you sat there like a brick wall. <laughs> no. That's what I'm going to say. No, it's 50 50 at best. Because what I want to do <laughs> at best. <laughs> yeah, I mean we both shared. <laughs> Why would be that? percent for you doing it would have been the best. You Then why didn't you just say Cameron has an announcement to make? He finally <laughs> understood my babble and he's got boxing approved. Alright, I'm excited about this. That's because I know that with legal backing nobody, nobody that likes to shoot their mouth off and say what a sucky job I do here as producer is going to step to the plate and really be able to back it up. I'll, now, fight, I'll fight you right now. Well, you, I'll put the boots to you while you're down. I, I would never raise my hand to you guys. But I, I don't mean, see you raising these, your hand to anybody. No, these mealy mouth callers that always want to call up. You'll fight all tent. callers? Any caller? I love it. I thought it was comers. All right, 866 <laughs> hey, You know we're under no restrictions. You know we're under no restrictions. All right, 866 277 4969. That's what Fez fights, and then he lays down for it anyway. All right, eight six six two seven seven forty nine six nine. You'll fight anybody, that anybody wants to that wants to show up, anybody that thinks that they're man enough to take on Wonder Boy. Come on down. Now call us. We don't want them to come on down tonight. Well, call us. We don't have room for that many people. <laughs> call us if you. All right, look at the control. phone bank. Just lighting up <laughs> with people that would love to kill you. What does that feel like to make an <laughs> announcement? Anybody that wants to fight me can. You, and I just see the phone bank explode. You went from a really great announcement to perhaps the stupidest announcement ever. And I know the lawyers did not tell you, anyone that wants to, come on down and they call Wonker Boy. <laughs> this is the stupidest announcement since Howard Dean called himself a metrosexual. Hey, uh, well, that one was true. He really looks great. Jimmy, you're around a Fez. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. Hey, why is he doing that? Because he's a moron. Can I do it right now? No, we can't do it right now, but I appreciate you wanting to fight. Uh, here's Andrew. Andrew, you're on the Rana Fez show? Andrew? Hi. Right. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, hey, Andrew. Andrew. We're okay. What can we do for you? I want to fight Wonder Boy. All right, hold on. Wonder Boy, I don't know if we can do this. Rusty, you're on Rana Fez? Yeah. Rusty. Yeah. You, uh, are you in? Absolutely. All right, Wonder Boy... I just want you to look at the phone bank to see how hated you are. What does that feel like? What does it feel like to just see the lights explode? <laughs> a thousand points of hate. It doesn't bother me because most of these people are full of hot air. Everybody wants to be tough. Everybody yes. wants to be tough when there's nothing that's actually happening. Oh, I just have to call to be tough tonight. No, all these, these people are saying out. they will show up and beat you up on boxing day. No, these people are <laughs> on not boxing day, enough. as they say in Canada. <laughs> oh, I hope we get presents, too. These are just people that are looking for an easy 15 minutes that they think they can come and take me on. When push comes to shove, they're not going to be able to back it up. No one wants well, to back it up when push comes to shove. We'll do this. I mean, I can't have everybody fight you, but we'll pick out... <laughs> <laughs> what a thing to have to say. We'll pick out somebody that will be allowed to fight you. Joshua Renefez? Yes. Hi. Would you like to beat up Wonderboy? 
Uh, yes, I would. Yeah, please stand in line. Um, <laughs> we might even have to hand out numbers. Steve, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, what's up? Yeah, you like to fight mm -hmm. Wonder Boy? Yeah, man, I'm on the Chantilly wrestling team, y'all. I'll knock him out, y'all. Uh, I know, I know. Oh, yeah, everybody's going to beat him up. <laughs> Matt, you're here to beat up Wonder Boy? Absolutely, I'd love to fight him. All right, see, this is becoming a problem, Wonder Boy. And every time a, f a call drops off, another light goes up. It's, uh... <laughs> It's not even Big's town. It's not even people that want to botch you. It's just people that want to kill you and yeah. knock you out. Why don't we just give out your home address? Because <laughs> I am going to box under the conditions of the lawyers. You're not gonna just what are the conditions the of the lawyers? You each write a paper? No, I mean, it's, it's, it's one exactly free range time. Is it going to go through a boxing commissioner? Yeah. This is a real event. This is a real boxing match. All right, here's uh, what I'm thinking. We do this thing, Fezzy. Normally, we do our boxing on the weekend, Friday or Saturday night. What do you think about this, though? St. Patty's Day is coming up, fighting people, the Irish, drinking people, the Irish. We do a St. Patty's Day fight. Oh, I love that. I like that a lot. It's and the day for brawling. Yeah, you fight anyone with freckles. Anyone <laughs> with freckles that gets into the ring. <laughs> Molds versus freckles. I love it. The moles are ready. Yeah. The moles don't back down. Yeah. I don't even know what. Let's see. Let's take a look at the moles. One up another here is who's the show cartoonist. And I just want you to get a look at this guy's back. Go ahead. All right. This is uh, pretty disgusting. Huh. Just covered in moles. Jeez. Isn't that creepy? Hey, uh, Wonder Boy, when you get in the ring, are you just going to be wearing shorts? You know, I'm not. I'll have a shirt on. <laughs> What's that? Actually, better than my bag. You have, yours is full of moles? That zits. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. Uh, why don't you do this, Wonder Boy? You wear a sports bra and a pair of sh short shorts. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to just wear a regular T-shirt and boxing trunks. Hey, uh, Pat. Pat, you're on Fez. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Yeah. Oh, look, I'm an Irish paraplegic, and I'll kick the living daylights out of that guy. Uh, I'll tell you this. He'd fight any quadriplegic. I don't know about a paraplegic, though. Well, I mean, I can stand, but I have no balance, and that's still good enough to be Wonderboy. I would love to see it. We prop you up and let you just slug the hell out of him. <laughs> there right. you go. All right, hold on. Let's tie him up in the corner. Wonderboy, I'm nervous right now. Fezzy, do you think you can do this? We've got to find somebody, you know, that we really are excited about. Uh, here's uh, David Lee Kinnison, Elfish. Elfish. Hi, Fezzy. Oh, hi, Elfish. You ready to go? WB. <laughs> uh, Elfish, you can't fight. You just had a heart attack three I, weeks ago. I did not have a heart attack. Well, what did you have? Uh, it was an episode. You had congestive heart failure and an angioplasty. And Ain't going to stop me. And heart punches are legal in this fight. David Lee, the lawyers only approve boxing, not me beating you to death. Oh, that's it. I'll see you Friday. I can't, I can't have you drop well, in the ring. I'll we went start. to a hockey game with you, and you needed help up the stairs. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> it, it is true. He cried because he had to step over someone and was huffing and puffing and had to take nitro, nitroglycerin or some crazy thing. I feel like it was the 30s when you're breaking a nitro tab <laughs> under your tongue. Oh. All right, Elfish. No, I'm sorry. Why don't you do this? You just have, like, a trivia game against them. Or maybe Old Maid or something that's easy on your heart. Oh. All right, buddy. All right, baby. All right, we'll put you in a wet paper bag and see how you can get out, how fast you can. Because he's taking more, more, more pills than you right now. <laughs> that's a lot. All my friends are pill heads. Is that a country song? <laughs> if it's not, it should be. But all my friends are pill heads. Mikey D. I cannot wait. This is my time now. Mikey D, you want uh, him in the ring? I want him in the ring, man. Have you taken a number? M my number is number one. <laughs> Mikey, you're a big mouth. Your number is zero. That's what your number is. Well, That's you... what you are. All right, hold on. You... Mikey does have a reason because, A, you hassle him all the time. And, B, what did he call your uh, wife, Mikey? He called my wife a skank. And even worse, which I just remembered this, he called my daughter stupid. Right. So, to be fair, I, I only implied that. No, you didn't imply fair. it. You s implied it. You said it. Mikey, you're all talk, Mikey. That's I'm what you always talk. are. It's Why very. Boy, how long is it going to take for you to secure a site to do this? That's not a problem. I got it all taken care of. And I really think Cam did, did do all the work because he wants me 
You're right. You up. Cameron, who I guess has a crush on you, wants to impress you so much. Stop being inside. Why attack Cameron? Right, no matter what's going on between you and Mikey, I want you to apologize for calling his daughter stupid. Did I say it, or did her school say she was stupid? No, you said it. Not uh, cool. uh, let's hear the report card, Mikey. What did the school say? When, when did the school come up? I just went by what Wonderboy said. The school put out a release? I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll bring the report card. No, that's all right. You don't have to. Mikey, why do you insist on involving get torn up. everybody in your life in your silly, stupid battles you can't win? I will beat you, Wonder Boy. You're not even going to show up. You're a coward. I'm not a coward. I'm not. I, I will show up whenever you set it up. Uh, it's going to be the same. Take some time. No, it'll be St. Patrick's Day. Uh, during this break, I'll give Julie Fallman a call. And I guarantee you we'll have a club within a half hour. We'll have some place to hold us within a half hour. Some I place Julie can do that. Then that's cool, Ron. Some place Mikey will never have the courage to show up. Yeah, right. Yeah, but did you hear what Julie's school said about her? <laughs> Why bring up the school thing when you know that's a sore spot? Oh. For me and my best friend Mikey, who is going to kill Wonder Boy. I'm your best friend. Well, first, here's how my best friends go. Stevie Baldwin. Hopefully, Alec. I'm leaving that place open. Mikey, and then you. I am first on top of that list. You're my first at work. I'm your first all the time. You're my first at work after Alan. 24 Who buys hours. mistakes. <laughs> 24 hours a day. All right, so we're going to do this on St. Pat's Day. I'm going to be there. No, you know I'm going to be there. No. Now, Mikey, I know you've had some training, right? I've had, um, you know, Taekwondo tra training, not boxing. Yeah. All right. All right, that makes me pick Wonder Boy. Oh, you know why? What? Why do you always go against the martial arts of the East? <laughs> what is your problem with Asian? Fez, it's okay. You can go on Wonder Boy's <laughs> side, but I will prove you wrong, my friend. I will prove you wrong. All right, hold on, Mikey. Why did you call? His, how did that get start when you called his wife a skank? I know. Do we have that from the other night? Yeah, we have that in here. So, and his wife is actually a very, very good friend of mine, and Fez has met her. <laughs> I know telling Helen. I know, but she really doesn't like you because you always pick Wonder Boy. All right, so this is what this is part of what started it. Winner makes out with the other person's chick in the middle of the ring. Ooh! Would you put it up? I don't want to kiss a skank though. Oh! Do not, do not call my wife a skank. All right, that's my favorite thing ever. That you have to yell out. Do not call my wife a skank. <laughs> Wonder Boy, can you beat him? Yeah. There's no doubt. You're not worried about the Taekwondo? No. It, it's just another Mikey lie, the same as he was, uh, you know, same as he's so accomplished and he's so talented. It's just another lie. Can it be a uh, loser leaves the show? Please. Like we did with the late Al Dukes? So that part I didn't clear with the lawyers. I'd have to check. <laughs> the, the lawyers don't need to be part of this. Well, I've learned that everything goes through legal here. That's my protocol. Not if we want to launch someone into the street, it doesn't. <laughs> How about this? A uh, loser gets dogs let loose on him. Again, I feel like that. Anything that says loser begins like begins with. I should if, double check. If you lose, can we cut your uh, moles off your back in the middle of the ring? I would have to check with a lawyer and a doctor on that one. Nice. Man, I saw this stuff on TV. It's the new Compound W, and they're selling the freeze stuff that the doctor actually uses. Yeah, I'd love to freeze some things off your back there, Wonder Boy, just to try it out. Man, we can do it ourselves. It doesn't matter. Mike Here's what we do. We freeze it, we tie it off with a string, and it'll fall off in a couple of days. Or get bigger. I don't know which one. Fezzy, honestly, you think Wonder Boy can beat Mikey? I think Wonder Boy can take Mikey. Yes. I think Wonder Boy can win this fight. I think... Uh... Now, is you talking or the Zoloff? Because look at him. <laughs> look at Wonder Boy. I think he can handle the Taekwondo Broadway dancer. I think he's good enough to do that much. I can't believe it. I'm sitting here shocked. <laughs> this is the dumbest thing you've said since the, the Buccaneers were going to repeat, <laughs> which I had to hear every day. And look at that stupid, natty shirt you wore every day for a year. Same shirt, Buccaneer shirt. Every day for a year he wear, wears it. Even when they were six and nine, I was still saying, one more week, I think they can, I think they can get in it. Wonder Boy, are you going to let me down? No, I'm not, Fess. I am not going to let you down. Wonder Boy, are you going to let me down? 
No. Uh, you'll be proud of you when I beat Mikey's ass. I know. You're not going to let me down because you won't win. <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm you'll be very proud. I'm going to tell you why you're going to lose. You lose everything you do. You're schlep rock. Hey, Cam Daddy. I, I just, I don't know how I've become in the middle of this Mikey <laughs> D. Wonder Boy drama. Right. So I was thinking I could take advantage of it. In WWE style, can I be the special guest referee? Oh! The only problem, I just hate the thought of an average-sized man standing next to these two girls. <laughs> yeah, I would love to have you do that. I'll get like a Mick Foley-type <laughs> yeah. suit-up referee shirt, yeah. and I'll, I'll do the refereeing for the, and, for the match. And here's the thing. Yes. You'll stay out of the way. Yeah. I want to oh, fight yeah, It's going to you yeah. can imagine. Wonderboy, do you know how to throw a punch? Yes, I do. I do. I, I have a were... brother that's a Marine. My father's in the Navy. We, fighting is not a problem in my family. And you were you playing for them. Hockey. Yes. <laughs> if, if you were saying your brother Marine was coming in, I'd be hedging my bets, but I'm looking at you. No, but I mean, they fight with me. You know, we roughhouse. I've learned we some rough things. We roughhouse. Yeah, I'm saying we've, I've learned some things from him. We grew up playing <laughs> hockey where there's a ton of well, hockey, fighting. I'm willing to bet on roughhouse Ray Wagner. <laughs> I am. What are you? You grew up playing hockey, so what are you going to do? Yeah. Grab your shirt and start swinging? <laughs> No, but again, you can't the... throw your gloves off. You know you're not wearing. You know you're not wearing a goalie mask into this uh, fight. Yes, I am well aware of that. I'll just have on regular headgear, and I won't be throwing my gloves down. The punching right, Cameron, is still the same. Your special referee. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Cameron. I know Cameron's going to get hit with a shot. That's the one reason that I'm going to be just sitting there cracking up when one of these wailing roundhouses from Roughhouse. Uh, Ray uh, Wagner comes in. <laughs> I'm going to love this fight. The Whirling Dervish. Hopefully, this will just shut up somebody, if not both of them. All right. I just got a, an email from Julie Fulman. She says, give me five minutes. She's on the phone right now with the club. Let's do a quick break. We come back. We'll announce where this fight is going to be in just three weeks, Fezzy, from tonight. That's right. St. Patrick's Day. Oh, it's a fighting day <laughs> with a couple of gay guys going at it. All right, we'll take a break. The Ron and Fez Show. All right, Fezzy, the announcements keep going. It's three weeks from tonight, St. Patrick's Day. We will be broadcasting live. We'll put up a ring. The club is called Dream at 1350 Oakey Street, Northeast, Washington, D.C. That's Dream. And it is three weeks from tonight. Three weeks from tonight, St. Patrick's Day. Way to go, Julie. Way to go, Dream. Way to come through for us. Wonder Boy, you're going to be the main event of this. We'll try to get uh, together with, uh, I'll see if Mikey's band can play. We'll have no, some well, contests out there. What, excuse me, did you say no while I was talking? No, I'm sorry. I couldn't understand. So uh, that's three weeks from tonight, Fezzy. St. Patrick's Day. Uh, St. Patrick's Day bash at Dream on Oakey Street, Northeast, D.C. Wonder Boy against Mikey D. And we'll try to put together some other stuff at the same time. I mean, we're just doing this on the fly here. I'm excited, Fez. I'm very excited about this. I'm excited that boxing's back on the Ron and Fez show and that it's going to be these two going at it. Hey, J.C., you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, buddy. Just wanted to try to see if I could get in uh, on the deal since I'm Irish and uh, it's St. Patty's Day. You want to fight, you mean? Oh, I'm so tired of listening to Weenie Boy's uh, cut. Just yeah. the stupidity that comes out of his mouth. Well, right now it looks like we're going to go with Mikey D, but who knows? Maybe we can line up some other fights. Uh, I could. We we could do a Guinness between each round. We could go bare knuckle. I love you know, that. I hard. love to go old style bare knuckle. <laughs> I'd love to do the whole thing on a dock. A floating dock. <laughs> In the St. Patty's Day tradition. Yeah. Uh, right. Come on, let, let, let Weenie Boy get his butt kicked by, by an English schoolboy. All, right. All right, thank you very much, buddy. We'll see what we can do. 866-277-4969. Here's Tim. Tim, you're on the Round of Fez show. Hey, I'm on Wonder Boy's side. We should go WWF style and have it a tag team match. Me and Wonder Boy versus any other two. All right, thank you very much, Tim. My people are putting this all together now, Fez. And, and this is going to be like a really good Irish fight where you're going to have a tough time keeping the crowd out of it. That's what happens on St. Patty's Day. Someone throws the punch and everybody's ready to go down. 
So, Wonder Boy, I want you ready. I think you can beat a boy named Tim. I, I need you to. I need you to put together some kind of a promo for this. You know why? Can we drop the boy named Tim thing, Fuzz? Is that going to be Mikey D's uh, entrance music? No, it'll be Mikey D. And it'll be coming into something really, really strong. Feeling sorry for myself. What is wrong with you that you're picking on Mikey like this? I just think he's uh, actually got no in over his head this time. With Wonder Boy. With Wonder Boy, even. Yes. Wonder Boy, I think, is going to win this thing. I've never liked Mikey. Uh, all right, Bone Daddy said, here's the title. St. Patrick's Gay Massacre. That's interesting. We might be able to do something with that. <laughs> Wonder Boy, you better do this. Here's Josh, Joshua Ronifez. Hi. Yeah. I'll take on any fighter. You know what? If if Fezzi keeps attacking my fighter, I might push him into the ring with you. Just push him chin first against you. All right, Josh, show up this. Uh, it's uh, going to be three weeks from tonight, St. Patrick's Day. March 17th. The place is Dream 1350 Oakey Street, Northeast in D.C. Here is uh, Kevin. Kevin, you're on Fez. Hey guys, what's up? This is uh, remember the heart transplant guy. Oh, how you doing, my friend? Yeah, Wonder right, Boy was going to get back to us about meeting everybody that you got your heart from. How's that coming around, along, Wonder Boy? Uh, I have, I have to still. Uh, I, 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 forgot all about it, right? I was a little busy with the lawyer fight, fighting, <laughs> getting the lawyers. That I'm sorry, fight. we met this gentleman two months ago. No, the I lawyer don't. fight come up the other day. Right. So what have you been doing the last two months? Uh, you know, just working. Yeah, I was. Hey, no, my my only comment is this. I, you know, I like you, Wonder Boy, but I just want to know how uh, you guys, Ron and Fez, can let Wonder Boy fight anybody. Because didn't he a couple months ago break his own window in his car, thinking that he's going to win a new car? Yeah, we we were basically uh, t thinking about telling him when the fight gets the next three. <laughs> <laughs> That'll motivate him. Hey, maybe we could have Kevin, the guy who had a heart transplant, fight Elfish, the guy who needs a heart transplant. <laughs> Winner gets the good heart. <laughs> All right, Kevin, talk to you later, buddy. All right, thanks, guys. Here's uh, Matt. Matt, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, can we do a WrestleMania 4 type tournament to fight in case uh, Mikey's too scared to show up or yeah. the Wonder fights? Do you remember those or... tough man contests we used to do in Florida, Fez, where just be guys off the street? <laughs> They would just strap on the, and they would be drinking. We'd be in these bars, the guys would be drinking, and we'd literally be going, okay, who's next? And, like, only a couple of guys, and as the night went on, like, 40 guys would start to line up. After, like, a couple of shots, they're thinking, yes, I think I'm a boxer. And it's like, I got this clipboard, and I'm flipping through pages of guys who want to fight, and it's like, wait a minute, have you been in the ring already, these yeah. guys, that you couldn't stop them? Yeah, a couple of these guys, they would get in the ring, they'd get knocked out, they would just go stand in the back of line and keep drinking until they got back in. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Maybe a boxing tournament is the way to go. 866-277-4969. 866-277-4969. Hey, live gig three weeks from tonight. We'll broadcast live on the air. But there's nothing like seeing a major prize fight live like this, Fezzi. When you got fighting Mikey D up against uh, Ray Wagner. Roughhouse Ray Wagner. <laughs> and, and if it's any indication, the people who are who are spewing their venom already tonight for Wonder Boy, yeah. you're going to want to see him in the ring. I might just let everybody come up and, and give you a crack, Wonder Boy. I might like everybody give you a snap. Yeah, no problem. You know, I'm, so, scared. I'm, I'm so mad at you right now from that guy from two months ago. He's got a heart. He'd like to find the person who gave him the heart so he could talk to the family. I go, hey, that would be some kind of a cool, cheesy thing to do on the air. Nothing out of you. You sit and staring at the wall for two months. Have you written it down yet? Yeah, I wrote it down. I, I sent him an email, but, you know, I have, oh. I have to send more, I think. Oh, what, send more emails to what? What are you talking about? You're supposed to track him down like a private detective. Well, he was going to talk to somebody where he... He, he. It's everybody else's fault. I, I'm telling you the truth. If Mikey kills you and you die in the ring... It'll be the happiest night of my life. And I hope that doesn't come across sounding rough or rude. I hope you die in the ring. A little bit. A little bit tense there. You're going to be surprised. I'm going to win. Way, the only way I would be happier than if you died in the ring is that if your mom was there going, Oh, no, my son, my son, <laughs> I was holding on to your chest. 
<laughs> I don't think she'll be able to make it to the fight, but it's not going to matter. I'm going to pulverize Mikey. All he can do is run his mouth. Guys that really fight never use the word pulverize or Mikey. Both of those are really odd things to say. I think Popeye uses it. Does he? You know what? This fight is going to look like the passion. That's what Wonder Boy is going to be getting it for 12 hours. Uh, Rami, Wonder Boy, I want you to hit Mikey D as hard as you hit your car window. <laughs> that should do it. Hit him like he's in the, uh, like your own car. Not a problem. Like you're destroying your own property. Fezzy, why are you betting on this guy when you know what a loser he is? He's a loser, that's for sure. But I think in this instance, up against Mikey D, when I heard Taekwondo, when I think, you know, the dance training that Mikey's had, I think Wonder Boy has enough strength that he can beat Mikey. I think he can pick it up this time. I'm not saying it. I couldn't say it at all. And I think Mikey's in a rage. You know, he's just, uh, that skank comment has got Mikey all wound up. I think Wonder Boy's a little bit more focused. I think Wonder Boy really wants to avoid being embarrassed in front of all the listeners. Now, I wanted to do it this way. Loser has to give their chick over to be uh, made out with in the middle of the ring. You started the trouble by saying his wife is too much of a skank. I, I apologize for that, and I would love to make out with Alan oh, after I beat Mikey's ass. What? God, what fighter would apologize, Fezzi? Tell me when Joe Frazier has apologized. <laughs> Leon Spinks apologized. Quit apologizing. <laughs> I don't have to anymore. You stupid fighter. You sound like uh, <laughs> you're in, in the corner, man. Stop apologizing at that rock. You stop telling him you're sorry. You're Mickey now. Come on. Stop apologizing. Would Skellington have been up for this, Wonder Boy? Please. She'd be up for it anyway. <laughs> I don't think it would be a problem for her, no. She said digits don't even bother her. I don't remember hearing that. It doesn't matter what you hear. You're supposed to be training right now. Let me just see you run in place. Look at that. That's the road work this guy does. Get your knees up. Like he's running on the moon the way he's bouncing. I'm going to have him chase a chicken tender <laughs> later on. Just, uh, you know, work on his speed a little bit. All right, uh, one of these things says, Wonder Boy against Mikey D. When did you guys start promoting Foxy Boxing? <laughs> hey, I wouldn't, uh, any of those Foxy Boxers around here, I wouldn't mind booking them for the show. I, I love that stuff. I love chick on chick action. Oh, look, he's got his pen out. Yeah, write that under the dusty, uh, <laughs> find the heart transplant. Blow the dust off of that. He wrote it on the cowbell. He doesn't even have paper. He's writing it on parchment. <laughs> That's how long his notes stay with him. <laughs> Who's going to be in your corner, Wonder Boy? I haven't made that announcement yet. I haven't made that decision yet. Who are the possibilities? Who? <laughs> we, we saw <laughs> the That's phone line with me calling the fight. Yeah. We <laughs> saw the phone lines light up with everyone who just wanted to drag you down the street and beat you senseless. I'm sure I can find somebody that wants to sit in the corner of a winner, of someone that's going to come out on top of this bout. But you don't have one name of somebody who might even want to support I don't know you. that I've met them yet, but I know I can find one person that wants to be in my corner for this fight. Take the side of a guy that's going to punish a loudmouth. Maybe you should just sit there and sit quietly by yourself. Maybe that's what you want to look for, somebody that would be a trainer for you. Somebody to get in your corner. If there's any uh, backers here from Wonder Boy, anybody that want to go, hey, I'd love... To hop on the Titanic. 866-277-4969. Hey, somebody wrote in Snug and said, Hey, what about him fighting Stifler, the guy who stole your girlfriend? Not a problem. Bring him on. I, I'm that just, would be a fight right, through tears. I am just <laughs> not getting that from you. I am not getting... You don't sound like, Not a problem. Bring him on. It sounds like Queer Eye for the straight guy. This is what Wonder Boy's going to be coming to the ring to. If I'm supporting him, he is. <laughs> you know what, Fuzzy? I want you to be like that new movie where the girl, <laughs> Meg Ryan, is in the guy's corner. <laughs> Against the ropes. I want you to find the pink shorts and a tight little top. And then, ladies and gentlemen, here he comes. Ray Wagner. Drop out, Ray Wagner. 
So you need? Are you going to train for this Wonder Boy? Definitely. What kind of training are you going to do? I'd like to see you pick up a carrot once in a while instead of a bag full of cookies. Yeah, it's going to start with a new diet. Look, he's gagging. Just the thought of him eating a vegetable. Well, I don't know that it'll be carrots, but I will be able to incorporate vegetables definitely. Did he just say incorporate? What fighter says he is incorporating vegetables? My fighter from Meg Ryan's stable. <laughs> Here's uh, Jennifer, you're around a fez. Yeah, I think Warner Boy's cute. I'll be in this corner. All right, hold on. All right, you might have a valet there out of her. Uh, Dan, you're around a fez? I'll be in this corner. Now, do you know anything about fighting? Yeah, um, I did a little bit of boxing back in high school, though. Oh, high school boxing. All right, hold on. These are all possibilities for you. Brian, you're around a fez. Yeah, I'll be in this corner. I'll be ready to throw that towel. <laughs> <laughs> have the towel on a catapult. If anyone goes for a towel, I am taking it out of their hand. <laughs> It'll be a towel tug of war. A yeah, batch towel. Wow. All right, so uh, it sounds like you're putting together a stable there. Wonder yeah. Boy, this is nice for you. I'm going to have a whole fight team that's getting me prepped for this bout. What are you talking I swear, I'm looking at Al Dukes. I'm looking at a less funny Al Dukes. I'm having a whole fight team getting me ready for this bout. The team of fighters are the people that want to beat you up. That's the team that's been put together tonight. Hey, we're talking about this gig we're doing uh, on St. Patrick's Day. How about we do this? We give away uh, a four-pack of tickets. If somebody can help us, name it. Now, we know it's going to be boxing. We know it's going to be St. Patrick's Day. We need a name for it, Fez. So that is happening St. Patrick's Day night. Dream, Oakey Street Northeast in Washington, D.C. Four-pack of tickets, Fez, for hockey. That's right. Washington Capitals taking on the Sabres March 10th at the MCI Center. Those tickets courtesy of AOL, uh, from AOL for broadband. 866-277-4969. 866-4969. Wonder Boy, how many rounds do you think you'll, before you uh, hit the canvas, before you kiss the canvas against Mike? I, I won't be kissing the canvas at all. I'm actually going to knock him out in the second round. Second round knockout. You're calling it like a yeah. young Cassius Clay. That's wow, I love the confidence, Wonder Boy. I love this. It's going to be a second round knockout. This is my first boxing experience. It's going to take me a little while to get the feel. Yeah. And then uh, I think by the second round, he's old. His arms are going to be drooping. I'm going to be all over the face, and that's it. I don't see it happening. I couldn't see you knocking out a baby. And i got to be honest about that. You could not <laughs> knock out a baby. I can see Mikey D screaming, not the face, not the face. He's not going to touch Mikey's face. Mikey can punch Fuzzy like a mule. Like a mule kick this guy hits. And Wonder Boy, I've noticed, is dressed like Burgess Meredith tonight from the Rocky movies. So I think he might actually be training already. Have you trained yet? I'm starting a different diet. I started today. I went to the store. I'm replacing all the crappy cookies and stuff with some fruits, vegetables. So your way of training is eating fruits and vegetables. Well, it's a slow. It's a slow process. I'm starting. You're off. fighting in three weeks. <laughs> well, I want to make Mikey sure. uh, trains at his uh, dojo every single day. He's in the dojo. I do not need as much work as Mikey needs. That's the thing. I know how to fight. I know Fezzy, how to punch how could him. you bet on a guy on the uh, on the hair? You're betting on the hair. <laughs> I don't really need to stay awake in this race. This is him, right? This is my wonder boy, and I think these fruit roll-ups, I think this is really going to turn things around for him. And I've seen Mikey D stayed at my house. I've seen him work out with his heavy hands, his pink weights, clink, clink. Who do you think can bench more? I'll put an extra thousand dollars on bench right now, right now, wise guy. Thousand dollars. I know this kid can't bench seventy-five pounds, which means you can't bench your weight, which is seventy-eight pounds. All right, uh, we're gonna give away a four-pack of hockey tickets. Eight six six two seven seven forty nine sixty nine. All you gotta do is name the fight that we've got this St. Patty's Day. At Dream, and you better get out there because it's going to be maybe the last of its kind when you can go out and do these kind of things. Here's Mike. Mike, you're on a fez. Hey, man. Yeah. I got it. It's either the Get Drunk and Punch in the Face Festival or the Wonder Boy Gets Creamed the Dream Festival. All right, that's not even attempting. That's not how. Uh, a fight has to be like the Thriller in Manila. You know, and it's got to pop for you. 
the brawl for it all, those sort of things. Those things work. Not the Wonder Boy is going to be punched in the stomach and cry festival. <laughs> festival, he throw in. <laughs> Kirby, you're on running Fez. Uh, yeah, I figured since both these guys are, are neither real men, maybe you could call it the battle to the end of the rainbow. Battle to the end of the rainbow. So is that like a gay reference? Well, not only that, but it's also the St. Paddy's Day. You know, gold at the end of the rainbow. I'll put you in the finals, Kirby. You'll go into the finals because you used rainbow. <laughs> You're sticking with the theme, at least. Here's uh, Patrick. Patrick, you ought to be able to come up with a good one. How about Patty Day Punch-Out? The Patty Day Punch-Out. Definitely into the finals for that. Your chance to win a four-pack of hockey tickets. The Caps take it on the Sabres on March 10th at the MCI Center. 866-277-4969. Here's Todd. Todd, you're on a fez. All right, no, you're going you're gonna to be out of it just for not turning your radio down. Uh, here's David. David, you're on Runa Fez. Hey, I David. I'm here. I think it should be Rock'em Sock'em Leprechauns. Rock'em Sock'em Leprechauns. Makes no uh, <laughs> sense at all. Nathan, you're on Runa Fez. How about uh, Punching the Blarney Stone? Punching the Blarney Stone. Almost sounds too sexual for modern-day radio. 866-277. 4969. You know we need a name that's going to excite people. A name that's going to make people go, I gotta be there. I can't miss this one. Scott, you're on Fez. Hey guys. Yeah. St. Patrick's Day, Clash of the Moron. Uh, not gonna work for me. I know you're going for the easy joke. I want a good one. Dan, you're on Fez. How about Ryan Fez's Nick Knack Paddywhack? Nick Knack Paddywhack. Let's put that into the. <laughs> And also because we used to call Angel Dust Nick Knack, and that was green. <laughs> Justin, you're on Rana Fez. Justin, are you there? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. How about the Four Leaf Rumble? The Four Leaf Rumble? I'll throw it in there. You're going into the finals, buddy. Uh, Mark, you're on Fez. Hey, guys. How about the Wussy War? You know, I know that you want to go for the cheap one, but let's give them a good title. A, a decent title, and let them prove themselves or not prove themselves. Wonder Boy stood up today, Fezzi, and say he's going for the second round knockout. He's guaranteeing it. Now, you and I have a thousand dollar bet on this fight. Yeah. I'll give you four to one on a side bet. This kid doesn't knock him out in the second round. Wonder Boy? Say, I think he's going to have to outlast Mikey D. I think he's going to have to outlast him. Outlast him? You mean outlive him over a 50-year period? <laughs> he can't fight, and the only thing that he's come up so, with so far of training is eating a pear. He's a maroon, Fezzy. I'll take the four to one. I'll listen to you. <laughs> listen to you. William, you're a run of Fez. Hey, guys, how about swinging St. Pat? Swinging St. Pat sounds a little too sexual for me. I got news for you. I get a little nervous. I want this to sound like a big boxing match. Uh, Mike, you're on a Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah, buddy. How about Saint Put Up Your Dukes Day? Uh, not working for me. If Al Dukes was in it, yeah, I'd be there all the way. Uh, Steve, you're on a Fez. Yeah, how about the uh, fight for decency and we'll have the uh, Bush twins and the pre prelim? I do like fight for decency. That will go into it. <laughs> Darren, you're on Ron and Fez. I'm going for the uh, St. Pat Spat. The St. Pat Spat. Now we're talking. You're in the finals, Darren. That might be my favorite so far, Fez. What you want to do is capture the moment. It's St. Patrick's Day night, broadcasting live from Dream on Oakey Street. Wonder Boy versus Mikey D. Here's uh, Andrew. Andrew, you're on a Fez. Two losers, one bruiser. You're going into the finals. Now that's what I like to hear. <laughs> In walk two losers. <laughs> Out walks one bruiser. You can get excited about this. <laughs> Eric, you're on Ron and Fez. The Fight in Irish. The Fight in Irish. There you go. You're into the finals. We're finally starting to talk here. Kirby, you're on Ron and Fez. Yeah, what about the Shamrock Showdown? All right. Now, Fezzy. Very nice. We're starting to really get some of these. Let's. Go, you're into the finals. Let's go over these, Fez. What do you got? We got the uh, Patty Day, the St. Patty Day Punch-Out. Battle to the end of the rainbow. The Nick uh, Nack uh, Paddy Whack. Say battle to the end of the rainbow. I know you're waiting around to see if you win, but that ain't going to happen. <laughs> the Four Leaf Rumble. <laughs> Again. Fight for decency. The St. Pat Spat. Two losers, one bruiser. Fight in Irish. Shamrock Showdown. I got news for you. This thing is wide open. Even <laughs> when I'm I'm hearing some of the finalists, they should be quarter finalists, guys. 
<laughs> they should move into the corner finals. Yeah, they go through another round for the hockey tickets. Uh, Brad, you're on run of Fez. Uh, yeah, I got Clover Day clock out. Clover Day clock out? No, a little too silly, but I like where you're going with it. I like what you're trying. Ron, you're on the air. Hey, guys. Yeah. The St. Patrick's Day Massacre. St. Patrick's Day Massacre. Man, I wish we would have done this on Valentine's Day. Uh, just missed by a nose. Just missed by a nose. Um, Steve, you're on a fez. Hey, guys. How about the Great Blarney Brawl? <laughs> no, that's not working. Hey, Gutter said, what about the uh, the boy named Tim Cat fight? You know, <laughs> is no one going to be on my Mikey's side? Hey, Mikey and I talked about this. We're honestly really disappointed in you, Fez. All kidding aside. And We're backing up Wonder Boy. Yeah, both Mikey and I, very, very disappointed. I got to go. You know, I don't bet with my heart, Ronnie. I know, that's true. I bet with my head. You're a real gambler. I know that from your problems that you have during football <laughs> season. Yet I've seen your head bets. <laughs> Nothing comes through for you, you schlep rock. <laughs> I always think that I've got it all figured out. I can't hear this. Let's have some kind of Irish music. It's bringing my fighter down. It's bringing me down. Why can't we have a little U2 playing in the background? Why does it have to be Irish music from the 1600s? We've got new Irish music out there, Wonder Boy. Here is uh, Sherelle. Sherelle, you're on my fuzz. Uh, it's Cheryl. Mm -hmm. And I have a good one for you. Yeah. How about... Aaron Gobral. All right. That's the finals. That's what we're talking about, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you, my darling. Nice work. Robert, you're on a fez. Leprechauns in love. All right. You're just trying to, you know, <laughs> you're trying to embarrass them. Uh, Michelle, you're on a fez. How about the Mean Green Punch Out Quest for the Pot of Gold? It's too long. i got to tell you the truth. If it gets too wordy, Ronnie and I just aren't going to say it. I like Lean Green. <laughs> I like Lean Green. That worked for me. But that's it. 866-277-4969. Four-pack of Washington Capitals tickets on the line. Looking for a name for the big fight coming up St. Patrick's Day night at Dream on Oakey Street. And believe us, you want to come out to this. It's going to be the most fun we've had. We, everybody always talks about the live gigs we've done, how fun they are. This one's going to be off the hook, Fezzy. Off the hook. Hey, uh, Paul, you're going to run the Fez. Hey, Paul. Lost you, buddy. Mike, you're on Ron Fez. What's going on, Ron Fez? Hey, buddy. What you got, Mike? What about the half point punch out? The Greek versus the weak. <laughs> the Greek versus the weak. I'm going to put you in the finals. My fighter doesn't care for that. <laughs> you think my fighter's crazy about it? He found out he's half Italian. He didn't even know. <laughs> his dad isn't his dad. He had one of those deals. A lot of things happen during WW2. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, Fuzzy? Um, Charlie, you're on a Fez. Yeah, man. Buddy. Yeah, yeah buddy. Sham, rock em and sock em. Sham, rock em and sock em. Go into the finals. Go into the finals, my friend, and sit down. <laughs> sit down at the winner's table. <laughs> Have a seat next to Cheryl with Aaron Go Brawl. <laughs> uh, Gary, you're on the air. Buddy, how you doing? Cool. You got two of them. The Sham, rock, slug fest. No. I'm not picking that up at all. Not picking up on that one at all. The Shamrock Slug Press. Uh, Dave, you're on the air. A Dreams Irish Cream Bout. <laughs> Some of these don't even answer, Fez. Most of these are bath towels. <laughs> David, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Ron Fez. Yeah. Uh, how about Lucky Leprechaun Lumpy? Love Fest. Oh, There's stop. not going to be Love Fest in there at all. See, some people are just trying alliteration and thinking that's going to get them through to the finals. Normally it does. <laughs> but in this case, it's got to sound tough. I don't want Love Fest. Uh, David, you're on the air. David. Someone's getting creamed at the dream. Oh, we got to stop the cream things. The cream is not going to work for us. Cream will never show up in a big fight. Hey, uh, Steve, you're on the Fez. Buddy. Yeah. Hey, Rover, Red Rover, knock off my clover. Stupid. So dumb. I like to go back rhyming. to I, yes, let's leave rhyming and go back to alliteration. <laughs> Tom, you're on a fez. Hey, Ron, a fez. How about the great getting ass whooping of the century? No, it's not gonna. 
I don't even want to ask in it anymore. The way that the political climate is, they'll kill us on an ass. Here's the facts that you can work on, people. It is Wonder Boy versus Mikey D. It is the boxing main event that night. It is St. Patrick's Day night. It's at Dream on Oakey Street in Northeast D.C. And the one that I think our guys came up with was something stupid like the St. Patrick's Day bash. That's what they came up with. <laughs> That's where, our Madison Avenue hard at work. Where I said, you guys just have to stop attempting. Just cut it out. And don't hand me papers anymore. Any paper you have on it, it just shows me how dumb you are. <laughs> Here is uh, Mike. Mike, you're on it, It's Celtic clobbering time. Because Celtic over here is Celtic, and that just is going to confuse me. That's going to be too hard to say. Sean, you're on Fez? Hey, guys. Yeah. Top of the mauling to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll put you in the finals. <laughs> if you make us laugh, yeah, how can you not? Do we have to throw in the to you? Now, remember, I want this to sound tough. Like, I want it to sound like it's two legitimate fighters going at it. It is going to be boxing. It is the squared circle. These guys are going to be trying to win. Uh, Vic, what do you got? How about, I wish they could only box. Oh, please. No wordplay. Mark, you're on Fez. Mark. Yeah, I got uh, lots of Blarney and no stones. Are these all Lutard? Is it just one Lutard <laughs> after another tonight? How's he getting through? These are like the Hallmark St. Patrick's Day cards that you could send out. Diane, you're on a fez. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Um, I got um, St. Patty's Day Brawl, uh, Battle of the Big Mouth, the Punk vs. the Chump. I like Punk versus Chump. I heard Wonder Boy is a punk, so, you know. Yeah, he's yeah. a wannabe punk. Though. Maybe well, yeah. Punk, yeah, maybe part-time punk. So maybe uh, punk, right? It's, it's, uh, it's a little long for us. <laughs> We're going to have to say it quite a few times once we finally decide on one. <laughs> and right. we've got three weeks to say it. Lutard's already writing in with his feelings hurt that quickly. <laughs> well, write a nice, write something nice to Cameron. Every day I'm trying to get somebody different to email Cameron and ask them if they can do things on the show. Ever since Mikey's faux pas. <laughs> Eventually, you'll just come in with a sack. <laughs> what are you happening? What do you want me to do with these? <laughs> I can't talk to every single one of your listeners. Are they expecting answers back? Uh, Rick, you're on a fez. Molly McGuire and Muggins. Yeah, that's not going to go all the way, though. You know, we're not going to stop Molly McGuire. It's harder than we thought, huh? Fezzy? Yeah. Do you think you got one in there that you're comfortable with? There's a, there's a couple that I like, I think. Here's one that I like. This one could be under the on, under the big talk versus the mohawk. <laughs> yeah, no, don't even bother, Fez. I just said, you know, I liked it because it made me laugh. But we we've got to really sign it, uh, sell it as an actual mm -hmm. fight. All right, let's. We got to take a break, and then you're gonna have to pick, Fezzy. You're gonna have to pick. So you feel like you got one in there that you're comfortable with? Yeah, yeah, I'll go over a couple here. No, I don't want you to go over them. I want this to be a Fez pick. I want to be shocked and surprised with the listeners. Okay. And I have one that I know I love, and I hope that you pick it. All right. All right. I'll be ready to pick after the break. All right, we're going to take a break right now. Uh, we'll be back in just a few moments with the winner on the Run of Fez show. All right, let's go over the finalists now, Fez. All right, here are the finalists. We've got the uh, pa uh, St. Patty Day Punch Out. Nick Snack Patty Whack. I love that one. <laughs> the Four Leaf Rumble. Hmm. The Fight for Decency. Odd. That one's just odd now in hindsight. Top of the Mauling. <laughs> <laughs> Shamrock 'em and Sock 'em. Uh, let's see here. Aaron Go Brawl. The Shamrock Showdown. The St. Pat Spat. Two losers, one bruiser. Mm. The fighting Irish. There's actually quite a few in there that could win this, Fez. You've got a difficult job. It's very, very tough. I know the one that I'm, I'm hoping that you pick. And the one I am selecting is... The St. Pat Spat. No! St. No! Pat Spat, that wasn't the one? Oh, man, you messed it up. I want one of the other ones. 
All right, congratulations. Who's uh, who's the winner of that four-pack, Fez? That is Darren. He's going to see the Washington Capitals take on the Sabres at the MCI Center. Thanks to AOL for broadband. Now, we talked about winner of this bout gets to make out with the other person's uh, significant other. I'll say since both of you are in whatever relationships you're in. You're okay with putting up your beautiful girlfriend, Skellington? For, I don't... If you lose, if Mikey D gets to make out with her. I don't mind putting up uh, Skellington, but I am not. I am not going to have Crankcase at this show. I am willing to make that compromise right. that I'm willing to put my chick up, but no bad, crappy cover music from Mikey's <laughs> band. All right, so here's the thing. To me, the funny part is seeing the chicks, seeing uh, him make out with your chick. But Mikey's going to have his feelings hurt. Not having his little cover band play. He's also going to have his face hurt when I punch it around. Yeah, all right. Uh, talk tough to him, not to me, all right? <laughs> Do me a favor. You're not going to intimidate me. All right? Yeah, that ain't going to work. I'm backing you up in this fight, Wonder Boy, but I'm going to need you to start, <laughs> stop saying things like punch its face around. <laughs> I'll give him the old one-two right in the bread basket. Oh, I'll give you such a pinch. Was that uh, Curly Joe? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> or Joe Besser. I never know which one did it. I think it was Joe Besser. I get so confused <laughs> after a while. Ow! All right, I have a lot of thinning to do here, Bubba Louie, as being uh, his fight benefactor. Here's what I'm thinking, Fez, and I haven't talked to Mikey about this, but I know how much he loves his band. If they don't get to play, it might even make Mikey matter and work in my favor. <laughs> I'll say okay to that, but we got to have a band. we got to have a band play with us at our live gig. Yeah, we can get a band. We well, can get a good band. Yeah. I don't want a good band. I want a great, kick-ass band. I don't want you to show up with the same band that you had at your uh, your mom's second wedding. That thing stunk. All right, hold on for a second. Here's Skellington. This is Wonder Boy's girlfriend. How you doing, Skell? Hi, Ronnie. Hey, Hi. Skeleton. <laughs> I'm Skellington. I'm a little bit concerned. What are you concerned about, hon? I found a picture of Mikey D last night, and I'm afraid I'm going to choke on a hairball because his hair is so awful. You don't like Mikey D's hair. That's one of the things that he's known for. Now I, if, I'm going to choke. If you lose, or if your man loses this fight, he can't lose. You've got to make out with Mikey he D. He can't lose. Middle he's of the ring. Gross. Yeah. Mikey D is gross. You don't find Mikey D attractive. Oh dear Lord! I looked at the picture, and all I could think in my head was ew. Ew, ew, ew. Where was this picture? Under Wonder Boy's pillow? <laughs> no, it was on you guys' um, website. <laughs> now, all can decide, Skellington, if you weren't with Wonder Boy, would you date Mikey D? Absolutely not. You don't find him attractive at all? Absolutely not at all. And Wonder Boy to you is more attractive than Mikey D? Absolutely. He's adorable. <sighs> so, there's no way you make out with Mikey D? I mean, if I have to, I have to. The bets are already made. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Skellington, I'll shut you up when I have my thro uh, my my tongue down your throat. You wish. Yeah, well, I'm, it's not a wish. It's going to be true. You wish. All right, Mikey, do you even want to make out with a girl who finds you repulsive, though? Yes, even better. <laughs> even better. <laughs> I'm very uncomfortable with this. And what are you doing looking uh, for my picture there, Skellington? Because I wanted to see what, like, I have a potential maybe. who's going to have your, his tongue down your throat. Well, just imagine that when you're kissing me, you're also kissing Wonder Boy. Yeah, that's true. And he wouldn't mind. Those guys almost did one night, <laughs> if you want to know the truth. And I was there. Now, here's the problem. Uh, Wonder Boy said you don't want to make out with uh, Mikey's wife, right? Nope. Are you bringing your wife, Mikey? Yeah, I'll bring my wife. You don't mind putting her up on the deal? No, because I'm going to win. Even after she got called a skank? Yeah, I'm going to be a picnic for her. Wonder Boy, if you win, you have to make out. That's part of the deal. We know how I feel about her, though. She's... I know, it doesn't matter. A deal's a deal. All right. Deal's a deal. Now, um... You're not going to get the chance, Wonder Boy. What do you know? Getting, stop getting, you know, all excited about it. One more thing, though, uh, Mikey. No crankcase. No crankcase, huh? Yeah, we had to agree to that because, uh, you know, it's the only way Wonder Boy would put Skellington up. To get Skellington, we had to lose crankcase. 
Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty messed up, man. I, I, first, personally, I feel like it's a a really decent, and we'll find a new band. But I think it's a decent trade because yeah, really? Skellington is hot. Well, yeah. whenever when, when when I win, I'll sit in with the band for a couple of songs after I make out with Skellington. It's going to be a great night for me. We, we don't even know who the band is before you sit in. A lot of guys don't like people sitting in. What bet did the band lose? Yeah, let's not blame the band yet. <laughs> Now, Skellington, here's the other thing I really find attractive about you. You have a lot of uh, health problems. And I don't know why, but I find that really sexy. You Do you? Some kind of eating problems? I'm diabetic. And... Oh, stop. You're turning me on. I'm serious. I don't know what it is. When I see the girl have to hit herself, now, do you have to shoot up anything? Um, no, I'm just on the pills, but I have to poke my fingers like about... Seven you know, times a day. You know what I would do if she was my chick? I'd give her the pills and I'd, I'd, I'd put some sweet tarts in there just to watch her shake for me. I don't know why, but I just... Uh, Fuzzy, I have that proxy thing. What's it called? Munchausen by proxy. That's how I get with chicks. I just want them a little sicker than they should be. I think it's sexy. All right, hold on. Here's another person that wants to talk to you, Mikey. Yeah. Here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're on the air. Hey, Mikey D. Yeah, Chris. I can't wait for Warner Boy to beat your ass. I can't, oh. I can't wait to see you at the ring. Buddy. You know what? 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 You don't I, even know. I've known Andrea for about 13 years. Show her some respect or I'll beat your ass after Wonder Boy gets done. Yeah, right. Get, All right. Get in line, Chris. Thank you, Chris. All right, you got yeah. it. Yeah. So what? You know her for 13 years. Who cares? You are very tough behind the phone there, Mikey. Yeah, and then Wonder Boy is very tough, you know, 500 miles away. I'm also going to be tough we'll in the ring, wise ass, so don't worry about it. Right, here's the thing. Wonder Boy, I'm going to take care of you, take care of your girlfriend, and then take care of this guy, Chris. you got a big night. You've <laughs> got a big the night. Isn't playing. Now make sure that you don't end up beating up Skellington and then making out with uh, Chris. That'll be the problem. Hey, that'll Who? even be even better for me. Who's Chris? Why? Chris is the guy that, uh, that sent me Skellington up. Oh, you don't want to fight him? No. Yeah. You don't want to fight him. No, Chris uh, has been a very near and dear friend for me for a long time. He's actually like an older brother to me. Really? Yes. Oh, that's so sweet. It's very sweet. Yeah, it is. Don't say sweet. She's diabetic. <laughs> this is really uncomfortable <laughs> now. All right, so we've got the, the uh, what's the name of the, the fight? The St. Pat Spat. <laughs> I hate it now. <laughs> what? Spat sounds like babyish, doesn't it? I like that brawl one. We got any more tickets? <laughs> And here's what we're going to do. Uh, Mikey, yeah. if you win, you make out with Skellington. Wonderboy, if you win, you make out with Helen. All right. I'm in. Hey, Mikey. Mikey. There's a lot of people on. Who is this? It's Helen. What's up? Mikey just whispered in my ear he'd rather make out with your mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. If I was in second grade, I'd be so hurt right now. Yeah, well, uh... I'm going to beat Mikey's ass like a child, so that's all going to work out. It's going to be so sad. I just feel so sorry for you. I'm a great kisser, Helen. You have nothing to worry about. Birth on Valentine's Day, the death on St. Patrick's Day. It's going to be very, very uh, ironic. That sounds People almost... In, in no. the cemetery. No, uh, Helen, you don't mind that your man's putting you up? No, because I have no question in my mind that he won't put this boy down. Give me before. a break, Ronnie. Come on. I know. Ronnie, I'm hello. Trying to, I'm trying to sell this thing. <laughs> Please. And and this skeleton getting all freaked out and looking up Mikey is obviously somewhat she, scared that this is going to happen. She, I just wanted to see what he looks like. Is everybody else has so many people look like? She skeleton. says that Mikey is not attractive. Well, let me tell you, her taste in men is, is just down the toilet. She said he looks and like Hagar Slacks and Hagar Hair. Well, he's like tell you what I think. sister looking. He has Brillo pad hair. I'm going to get a hairball. And what kind of hair does... Karina one. Does your man have? He has a your man even, because I don't know, because he talks about other chicks, you know, in other ways, but whatever. In what ways? Well, you know, those calls that we had. Certain girls were the only one. Oh, yeah, you that's never right. never find anything close to that. He used that... Unquote. unquote. He used to cry on your shoulder, right? Absolutely. So I'm totally confident he doesn't really care about this girl. Um, who cares? Really, who cares? Mikey's going to... Shelly, then does that affect you? Well, you know, what can I say? She doesn't know what she's talking about. You know, really, I don't know. That. See, Helen, you're as big of a liar as Mikey. What I used to do was call up to say hi to him. You'd answer the phone, so I would politely enter... 
I would politely entertain that you. Is cr- you as you politely entertain nothing. As I you told you. me. As you told me your story about you how you. Suicidal. You were projecting on me. You and Mikey you had a spat. And you were suicidal, dude. You have to let me talk. You used to try to tell me how you and Mikey broke up and got back together and that I was in the same situation as you. All you were doing was just, it was self-indulgent and it was just oh, trying to get, get me to relive you're, your silly, you know awful you love story. You second grade, so bring Mommy to the fight because Mommy matters more to you than this chick will ever. Or chick will ever. You know, I won't be there unless your Mommy is there. How about that? All right. My mother asked me to make sure that uh, she wasn't the oldest person there, so actually that's no, not well, a that's problem. Fine. That's fine. We'll have a lot in common then, you know, menopause and all that fun stuff. That's great. Yeah, because some... Uh, you can tell my mom what that's going to be like. So that's nice. You can help yeah. her out. You can be yeah, I can help her out. And your, what, 13-year-old girlfriend will be... Uh Oh, thing. Asking me about her period and went. All right. All right. Let's Give me the right. first sign of weakness are, uh, is when you start tearing people down. Uh, you know what? Just shut up. You sound like such a stupid little girl. Well, she hasn't been uh, deleted yet. You know what? Do something with your life other than getting piercings. All right, everybody. That's very We're going to have a nice you. fight. Yes, you should. You should get a life, and that would be nice. <laughs> wow. All right, Skellington. Yes, We'll dear. see you out there. Thank you, Skellington. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh... All right, Helen, yeah. best of luck to you and Mikey. We'll see you there. All right. All right, see ya. I'll see ya. Wonder Boy, there's a lot of trouble between you and Mikey D right now. I'm a little nervous. It's because Mikey's insane, and Mikey just calls and screams and shouts, and he's he does not ever think before he does things, which is why he's in the trouble he's in now. And you're a big thinker, are you, Einstein? <laughs> yes, I am. What did you come up with, Galileo? What are, what what have you been pondering on there, soccer piece? Uh, punching a loudmouth in the face to finally shut him up. <laughs> that was the best I could do. I got news for you. Just don't look like a fighter to me. The only thing that's gonna look good. Make sure you got skin on each side. You know, Definitely. You shave down there, like, because that's what the uh, Puerto Rican f- uh, fighters will shave right to skin. Looks like they shave right before they come out, and it always looks tough. Warriors. That's what that's what this haircut is. Is the haircut of a warrior? A warrior. Or a warrior. Now, Wonder Boy going up against Mikey D, winner gets to make out with the other person's chick in the middle of the ring. Now, you're picking Wonder Boy, right? I am picking the Wonder Boy. I'm picking my second, well, third best friend, Mikey D. He's behind only Steve Baldwin and Russ Rollins of the Monsters of the Midday. I'm your first best friend over all those people. You're my second best friend at work after J-Dubs. Now, you would think, okay, WJFK employee fighting Mikey D. Man, where do the people get around? I'm walking through the hall today, and I wish I was making this up. Salesperson after salesperson, programming people, Fez, promotions people, yes, Jag, all saying to me, I hope Wonder Boy gets knocked out. Now, he should be the hometown favorite here in his own radio station. The problem is they know him. They get annoyed by him most of all. So there's, I wouldn't say hate, but dislike and extra work before because of him. So Wonder Boy, come on in here. I want to bring that up to you, that people are rooting against you, people that you see on a daily basis. Your co-workers, people that you would have to sit next to at a company picnic. They're only rooting against me because they don't know how annoying Mikey is. If Mikey was here... I would seem like a savior compared to him. You know what they said to me? I've met Mikey. I've heard him screaming on the show. And I hope he kills Wonder Boy. Well, they're going to be be disappointed when they come out to dream. Do you know the difference between a shoot and a work in wrestling terms? Not really. A work is, well, we act like we're fighting with each other, but we're not. Mm -hmm. A shoot is, it's absolutely true. This, my friend, is a shoot. That's true. I have I have no problem with that. And the employees here are shooting on you. Do you understand that the, the hate is real? Oh, that part, no. I, I thought you meant I really hate Mikey. The no, people really no. hating me here. I don't, I'm not even bringing Mikey up now. I'm just talking about the person you are and what has happened here over the last several months. Well, that's dismaying, but I think they're going to see <laughs> after. That's it. Yeah, that, that hurts. But after they see the ass whooping I give to Mikey, I think they're going to see me in a whole new light. The, the people here haven't seen me put a lot of wins together yet, and I think that after they see me in the light of a winner, it's going to be a lot better. Well, I remember when you broke out your own car window like a complete moron. You said, I can't walk the halls anymore because no one will respect me now. Wait, let me put that in. <laughs> That may come in as part of the five questions tomorrow. Because that was my favorite thing that you ever said. 
That was the lowest of your low and the highest of my highs. <laughs> I laughed. So you're thinking if you go in the ring and beat Mikey D, get your hand raised of victory, that everyone around here is going to come out of their cubicles and support you. Yeah, everybody likes to back a winner. And once they see they have a winner right here in the same sales pit that they're in, yeah, they're going to love me. So, uh, your chance Sales pit? Yeah, well, what's the sales pit? The place where they all work. Anyway, the sales pit. The sales department. Oh, they're going to like you more now saying that they work in a pit all day. <laughs> it's your chance to get respect back. Yes, it is. Now, I don't understand why everyone has a problem with you, no matter what department it is. I think you do a fine job. In fact, Ronnie, the paper that I got tonight yeah. with all the information about our gig on it, yeah. um, it's covered with notes of other things that I'm sure aren't going to get done. Things like... Get Bloody Mary mix. Call Fred, the hair genius. Um, and this, for some reason, cat spots with big question marks next to it. Those are all things that did get attended to today. I'm sorry I gave you the wrong paper. Yes, but you need a notebook to write things in. Not my sheets. Not scribbling all over my stuff. It looks like what a serial killer would do. And I'm annoyed now. I'm not enjoying. I'm annoyed. All right, get out. Mikey D., how are you? Hey, Ron, how you doing? Okay, buddy, we're putting this fight together. It looks pretty exciting. Great. I can't wait to get down there. And you know what? I thought about this, and I want to say something to J-Dubs. Yeah. If J-Dubs is in my corner, yeah. I will be in his corner for his fight. What do you think, J-Dubs? you want to do it that way? No, I don't think so. Really, J-Dubs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I... Ouch! I can't do that, man. I can't. I... I... I mean, I'm going to be fighting before you. I'm going to win. Yeah, uh, I see. Maybe what we'll do then after you win, we'll introduce you to the crowd again, like when Muhammad Ali used to come back. <laughs> I'll go shake both yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah, make sure you go in the back, put on a suit, and come out and wave like you're retired. We'll call you the retired champion. Blow some kisses. Yeah. Wave some dreadlocks around. Well, Mikey D, I picked you. Unlike Fez. I know. I'm friend. very disappointed at that, man. Yeah. And now, and now, you know, a stab in the heart from J Dub. You know, J Dub's when I'm done with Wonder Boy. All right, you. This is one fight at a time, Mikey. All right. See, he's not focused. Well, no, he is focused. The fighter is always ready to fight Fezzi, and he's working out every day. Oh, oh that's for sure, baby. With his pink heavy hands, I've seen him <laughs> work out at my house. I've heard the clink clink. Tink, tink. Mikey, tell me you don't work out with heavy hands like girls do. I. You know what? The workout that I do, Wonder Boy, J Dubs, L Hefe, all of them couldn't do what I, I do. You, I, here's what I want you to do. I want you to focus on Wonder Boy. Leave J Dubs <laughs> out of your scope. Forget about El Hefe for a couple of moments and just focus on Wonder Boy. Do you know what his workout is? I've spent time with this man. Before you hear the clink 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 of heavy hands, I hear this. I do thirty minutes of heavy stretching. No. So it's stretching and clink, clink. That is his workout. I've seen it. you got to be able to stretch. That's the main point of everything. Oh, ballet, yes, but not boxing. Oh, yes, Ron, come on. Stretching's not going to save you on St. Patrick's Day. Right, look, I'm trying to sell a fight. <laughs> I don't want you guys talking about stretching. Clink, but, clink, clink, clink. By the way, it's totally free a dream. I want to get that in the thing. Because <laughs> people are asking me all the time, Fuzzy, what's it cost to get in? No, we're putting together this fabulous uh, night of fights. And it's absolutely free. Yeah, hey, Fezzi, what's your fighter doing for training? What, did he eat a kiwi fruit today? I will say this, he looks green today. As <laughs> well as... Celery he's eating. As well as, I had quite a few people today tell me that they believe, Wonder Boy, that you're suffering from depression. The way you uh, walk around here, or haunt the halls, as they say. I might have been suffering from it before. I'm finally coming out of it. I have something to look forward to, and that's beating Mikey D to death in the ring. Wonder Boy, hey, hey, listen. Did you change the WJFK site with the right date yet? Yes, I did, Mikey. Thanks for checking up on me. You know what? I just want to be one step of, uh, you know, ahead of you, buddy. Mikey, it doesn't matter. Listen to me. You can work out and you can stretch and you can do all the ballet you want to do. It's not going to help you clink, clink, in a fight, right, Mikey. Let me just have something. Fezzy, never do the clink, clink sound effect again. It rattles my, me, if not my fighter. I, I get a little embarrassed. That's my shame. 
It's uh, Horton from the Dr. Seuss uh, books. Would it be the only one that could hear the clink, clink of the heavy hand? Who are you, the Grand Wizard, doing all the Wonder Boys talking for him? When did this happen? <laughs> Grand Wizard. <laughs> You know, Wonder Boy, you got to get everybody else to talk for you, man. You're, you know, and and then your overconfidence is definitely going to be your Achilles' heel. Buddy. Bro, to me, he could come in there with a stop sign and you'd still win. You can't lose this fight, Mikey. I will not lose this fight, Ron. Mikey, you don't have a chance. No. You're going to show up in leotards like you're doing some kind of dance. What? You're out of your league. Are you going to dress like flash dance for this thing, Mikey D? I'll, I will put leg warmers, leotards, and a tutu on, and I will make no, mockery. Mike, I, Mike, will you walk him to the ring, Ronnie? <laughs> no. Mikey is going to steal that and put it in a promo. Clink, clink. All right? Clink. It makes us look bad. Please stop saying stuff like that. <laughs> Me up. He's, no, he's that's just fezzy. He's gonna dress like the Olivia Newton John. Let's get physical video. Don't, my No, fezzy man. You know this is you're breaking my heart, fezzy. And mine, and mine. My heart is broke right now. I can't believe this. I really can't believe this. Well, Mike don't. Tyson went into Tokyo, Japan with a broken heart and ended up losing to Sugar Coma Buster Douglas. Fezzy, when I win. <laughs> I'm going to have a shirt ready for you that you're going to wear for a year that no. says, I love my announcer, no. Mikey D. Mikey, that also sounds gay. Now, remember, <laughs> just let me do the talking for us. All right. right. Now, remember. It's... Clink, 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 clink. All right, stop hey, it, you want, baby. Stop going to baby. It's very gay sounding. Uh, also, remember, it's make out with each other's girlfriends. So, if uh, Mikey D, you win, you make out with Skellington, okay? Beautiful. Skell Skell uh, Skellington. Wonder Boy, if you win, you make out with Mikey D's wife. Well, I'll make out with the skank if I have to. If that's uh, what it takes, just go to I'm going to beat Mikey's ass. That so, if that's my penalty. You, you know, Wonder Boy, you are just setting yourself up and digging yourself your own grave. You really, really are. You do not realize what you are doing. I'm not o only going to beat you up, man. I'm going to have you screaming for mercy. Why? Are you going to keep showing me your old Broadway tapes? All right. All right. Stop. Run away. You don't think it's funny. Yeah. You don't suddenly and think you're going to be funny. up, then. Yeah. You're going to be wearing that shirt. I'm not wearing any shirt. Yeah, let's not dress each other. Let's keep it above board. All right. All right. Jeez. Beware his heavy hands, Wonder Boy. If you see a pink foreign object, watch out. What is with you, Fez? Yeah, Why what is with you, Fez? You, you see me trying to run the fight. Why have you picked sides? <laughs> I think Wonder Boy's going to win. Because you, but Wonder Boy wouldn't be able to think of one of these things that you're getting Mikey down with. Or, and more importantly, me down with. <laughs> I've been there. I've had to hear the clink, clink. I Mikey, know i got to tell you the truth. Fez is turning me around here, and it's making me nervous. Don't be nervous, Ron. Do right. not be nervous. That's the, that doesn't make... When you say Ron like that, it's just Ron. It just sounds like it's a down. Mikey, you're a femme, and that's what we're going to find <laughs> out. Yeah, you know, that's even going to be... Okay, you know what? What? I'm a femme. <laughs> all going to be the sweeter. Use that for the promo! Don't. It will all be the sweeter when I beat... All right. The Boxers don't say sweeter, Mikey. <laughs> ever. I like sweets. And right now, Wonder Boy is my sweet. All right, stop it. This is all going to go into the promos. Let it go. Promo shmomo. All right, don't, Mikey. All right, we'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was awful. My fight was... Doesn't understand having a rap. How many Jane Fonda tapes is this getting... Is he going to watch to get ready for this? You want to stop, please? <laughs> I'm asking you to stop. I have a $1,000 bet on this. <laughs> Most embarrassing thing I've heard. You did it to him. You spun. You spun him around. You used your wit and agility. Wonder Boy wouldn't have been able to do that. <laughs> he said he's gonna wear leg warmers and a tutu. I heard. <laughs> Trust me, I heard. Let Let's get into this though. Wonder Boy, you're picking to win, right? Wonder Boy, I am picking over Mikey D. Knockout or does he go the distance? I think it goes the distance. Yes, and there will yeah. not be a knockout in this fight. There won't be a knockdown. There would have to be some arm strength. Somebody will have to faint. He is going to be exhausted in that ring. What do you think Jughead's going to be? 
Is by Jughead, you mean Wonder Boy? Yes, he's already exhausted. J Dub. He's sickly. And I know neither him or Mikey D seems like they're tough guys, but Wonder Boy is actually sickly. Wonder Boy, all you have to do is be in better shape than the guy who stretches and works out with the heavy hands. Kink, kink. That's not going to be a problem. Mikey has no intensity, and that's what I'm going to bring to the fight. I'm gonna... Why don't you bring it to the show? Mike? I don't know. I'm saving it all up for that. <laughs> Seriously. Do you, do you realize, all kidding aside, there is a storm brewing about you? No, I didn't realize there was a storm brewing. Well, you know who there is with Cameron, right? That yeah. when he gets back, he wants to talk to you. Yeah, that part. I Jesus know. is coming down, meeting. There are two other department heads who are also feeling the same way. No, that part I was not aware of. All right, uh, have you been aware that at any time that there was a meeting where people go, can you excuse us, Wonder Boy? <laughs> yeah, that part I was aware of. Yeah. Yeah, I found well, that one out today. Yeah. Well, not from us, right? No. All right, so I'm just letting you know that department heads have come together and approach down about it. Well, I'm not saying there aren't kinks. You know what I mean? Definitely those meetings are about things, uh, there are kinks in the way things are getting done, but I wouldn't, I didn't know that was a whole I was storm. told, I, I was told the word unworkable. You, that you, uh, can't, we're having trouble working with you. Well, again, I brought up retraining. And they go, retrain what? And I go, him. By who? Do you and realize that Ronnie and I have to run a gauntlet to get out of here in between shifts from people wanting to stop us and talk about you? No, that part I didn't know. <laughs> and then trying to bring up the kind of person that we need. A detail person uh, got brought up by quite a few people. Yeah, details uh, I'm working on. I've Here's what I want you to do. Been detailed before right, this. this is me giving you the big heads up. When, it, when are you supposed to have this thing with Cam? Um, I, he's back later in this week, so it would be... You have got to prep yourself for how you're going to handle yourself in this. Right. You don't want to walk into the Jesus coming down meeting, whatever that is, and be unprepared. I think that Cameron uses Jesus like it's a boogeyman. <laughs> I've never heard the term before, Jesus is coming down. I think... Wouldn't it... that be good? <laughs> I think he used to get scared by that as a kid. I'm definitely going to have some notes, and I'll have some uh, explanations for the things that happened, and hopefully that's going to help. Uh, bro, you better have, like, a plan, not some notes. You better have some sort of schematic blueprint, something or other. You better have a plan for this. I'm going to put together a plan and make sure I have one, then. you got to pull this gig off like nothing you've ever done before. Yes. This gig has to rock. Right. Where's the promos? Let me hear one of the promos you're putting together. Oh, yeah. This is going to start playing tomorrow? Is this it? Uh, right there. The one in my hand. Let's see. Wednesday night, March 17th. It's the St. Pat Spat at Dream. Be there to see Wonder Boy. Mikey, you're all talk. Take on Mikey D. I will beat you, Wonder Boy. You're not even going to show up. You're a coward. Wonder Boy. I'm going to pulverize Mikey. Against Mikey D. I cannot wait. I'm very excited about this. Winner makes out with the other person's chick. Mikey D is through. Mikey, if yeah. you win, you make out with Skellington. Yeah. Wonder Boy, if you win, you make out with Helen. I'm so sorry for you. I'm a great kisser, Helen. You have nothing to worry about. It's all happening at Dream on Oak right, Street, just stop Northeast. Very clustery. What you need is to make it sound like a big fight promo. You need a big voice. You ever hear like Frazier Ali, those kind of promos. Right. Your thing sounds like a little dumb radio promo. And I'm hearing 18 voices in there. You've heard the HBO spots that we weren't run for boxing on the station. Right. Okay. You need you've it to sound like that. You've heard Larry Michael and the stuff he does. For boxing? Right. Wow, you know what would be a great idea? Larry Michael comes in and calls the fight. Wow. That would be cool. That definitely would be cool. That would sound great. Yeah, but I'm saying it to my producer. Oh. Instead, of, I'm not just brainstorming with you. <laughs> well, look, he's going to write it down on the back of Fess's card. Because <laughs> when Larry Michael says Wonder Boy's been knocked out, that's going to sound exciting. Not to do the whole night, just to come in and see if he wants to do... What would you call the play-by-play -play in a fight? I don't know what that's called. Blow-by-blow? 
Yeah, please. That's in your, you know, that's in your culture. But, I mean, that person is called something, right? Yeah. Like you have a play-by-play -play man. I think it might still be called play-by-play -play man. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, they call the fight. Right. I know that. But what would that but person be called? Fight caller. That can't be right either. Fight caller. He got hired as the fight caller. <laughs> You're not the announcer because that's the guy in the ring. All right, Mikey D said the D and Mikey D stands for detail. Oh, it changed? Yeah. He had it legally changed. I want you to tell the truth, Fuzzy. Who do you honestly think would make a better producer? Mikey or Wonder Boy? Wonder Boy. Even though you walk through the gauntlet in the shadow of death today, you honestly think that Mikey couldn't do a better job? I think if Wonder Boy could follow the directions we gave him, he could be a great producer. Is he? Is he even adequate? Not now. Not yet. Mm. But I think it turns around for him when he pulls off the gig, St. Patrick's Day night. Did you just hear the promo? Hit the promo again. Wednesday night, March 17th. It's the St. Pat's Bat at Dream. Be there to see Wonder Boy. Mikey, you're all talk. Take on Mikey D. I will beat you, Wonder Boy. You're not even going to show up. You're a coward. Wonder Boy. I'm going to pulverize Mikey against Mikey D. I cannot wait. I'm very excited about this. Winner makes out with the other person's chick. Mikey D is proud. Mikey, yeah. if you win, you make out with Skellington. Yeah. Wonder Boy, if you win, you make out with Helen. I'm so sorry for you. I'm a great kisser, Helen. You have nothing to worry about. It's all happening at Dream on Oakey Street, Northeast. See Crazy Jen's Cool Hand Loop Challenge. I saw that movie, Cool Hand Loop. I need 50 eggs. I think I could do that. I could 50 do hard-boiled eggs? I'm better than Cool Hand Loop. Nobody can eat 50 eggs. Does anyone think she's going to pull <laughs> this off? You can't believe the size of her pie hole. Yeah. Dream in Washington, D.C. We're going to do this on St. Pat's Day. It's the day for brawling. Wonder Boy, can you beat him? There's no doubt. I'll Shut you up. I'm going to love this fight. <laughs> All right, a promo can't get cut <laughs> off mid-sentence. <laughs> and. The LQ is and. <laughs> and I, I did like Crazy Jen's Crazy. Yeah. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I wonder where you got to work on that, okay? All right, I'll have a more fight like tomorrow. You want to fight like and you need a better voice than dubs. Who's That's a bagpipe? Yeah, get okay. rid of the bagpipes. It sounds like you're, it's a funeral. High energy. Well, it sounds like we're burying a policeman. I don't want it to sound like that. I'll try to use more uh, dramatic boxing music to go with the dramatic voice guy. Are you just telling us what you... Uh... No, color commentary is not it. People are writing in color commentary. That's crazy talk. Here's our buddy Jason from Dead Money Poker. How you doing, Jason? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, the fix is in that uh, so much as I hate Mikey D, uh, I got $1,500 riding on him in this uh, Wonder Boy Mikey D matchup because uh, I think the Wonder Boy's going down. Yeah, I think Wonder Boy's going to purposely kiss the Kansas. Yeah, Davis, pretty, because pretty much he's a punk. To make the bet, it's over. Yeah. All right, thanks, Jason. No problem. All right, see ya. All right, there's a guy that, that you thought liked you, Wonder Boy, <laughs> and he believes you're going to be counting the lights. Next St. Patrick's Day. That doesn't mean that it's true, though. That's just because that's his... The gambler, is he a gambler? Yeah, he's a gambler, but he hasn't won 100% of the time. No gambler wins every time. Sometimes you're going to lose. You better not lose this thing, Wonder Boy. You know he's going to lose. Yeah. He loses everything, Fez. He loses everything. His girlfriend left him, remember? And ran off with an intern. <laughs> and then made that's sure... funny. She brought him, the guy, back into the studio... Back to bars we used to hang out with. Used to make out in front of Wonder Boy. And what did he do? Nothing. He never even put his paws up. He shrunk. He actually got shorter at that point. I got two words for the way he acted. Bitch. That's exactly how he acted. Or as the kids say, biatch. I think it's going to be a different story against Mikey D. I don't think Mikey D poses that big of a threat to Wonder Boy. That Wonder Boy can't win this fight. That there's no chance whatsoever. 
I'll tell you what. I forget my idea. I'll bring a sea monkey in. Give me a week to grow a sea monkey, and I'll bring it in, and it'll knock uh, Wonder Boy out. Isn't that just like a little brine shrimp? Yes, a brine shrimp. Wonder Boy, I know you can beat a brine shrimp. I have no doubt I could beat a brine shrimp at all. And Mikey's no tougher than that. What are you doing to get ready for this thing? Anything at all? Yeah, I have some jump rope at home. I've been trying to jump rope. I see boxers do that. Hey, maybe you'll make friends. It's good cardio, I know. Double maybe you'll meet other children. Well, no, I mean, I'm not doing that in the street. You should do some twister, hey, too. Why don't you start playing tag <laughs> and really get yourself in great shape? Black girl. Buddies. How you doing, my buddy? Hey, buddy. Hello, buddies. How you doing, black girl? What can we do for you tonight? I just wanted to chime in on the... Uh... <laughs> The thriller in DC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did, uh, it, one wonder boy, you bet you got to get the conditioning down. He's not going to get it down. He's not going to do anything. He can't get uh, production down. That doesn't work <laughs> for him. This is something he gets paid for, and he won't give a hundred percent. Is this a situation where two men enter, one man leaves? Yes, of course. We're going Thunderdome rules. <laughs> I don't even know if it's two men entering. <laughs> I say it's a brine shrimp and Wonder Boy, and I'll still watch the brine uh, shrimp come out of there. I mean, I, I, Wonder Boy, you better do your, I mean, lots of cardio because if, if it goes in more than three rounds, it, which I, honestly I don't think it will. Who, who do you think is going to win, Earl? Um, you know, I like Mikey D. Too strong to experience. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Experience in the art of dance. He was in a gang. What gang? Your West Side Story? <laughs> Was he a jet? <laughs> no, I don't want everybody to start on Mikey D. All right? Mikey D, uh, Mikey is a good man. He's a good friend of the show. And this Wonder Boy's a cancer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I just think Mikey's just, just a little bit more experienced. That's all. Yes, of course. Mikey's had a fight. Wonder Boy never has. <laughs> will, will Wonder Boy keep the mohawk? Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's going to be intimidating. It's negative. It'll be sticking out from his headgear. He wants to wear it like it's a Roman helmet. Oh, God. <laughs> He's coming in like a Spartan army. <laughs> that was a tough look. <laughs> but you're as pale as a ghost, Wonder Boy. <laughs> but you won't be able to see that underneath the headgear and stuff. It's not going to make a difference how pale my skin is as to how hard I can throw a punch. Well, I understand that, but it's just uh, between the moles on your back and the... <laughs> I will all have a shirt on. We ha I have to no. box with a shirt on. No, neither neither guy can box with a shirt. It's moles out. That's my that's street rules. Moles out. Because I want my fighter to be able to pepper them. Work the moles. I'm dipping your moles in ether. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to come down just to watch. Yeah, man, get here. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to you later, Earl. All right, buddy. Let's see. Thank you, Black Earl. Who is that exactly, Black Earl? He's a friend of ours. Okay. So it will be happening at Dream, 1350 Oakey Street, Northeast D.C., March 17th. That is St. Patrick's Day night when we broadcast live. Wonder Boy, let me just see you jump for a minute and see how winded you are. All right, jump for a minute. Yeah. Oh, you got to, yeah. I'm not even going to pay attention to him anymore. All right, look at him. He's got to hold his dog chain what? to keep it to make a lot of noise. He's already uh, breathing hard at 10 seconds. Look at the color change. Look at the color of his face change. He's getting red. We're at 15 seconds. Yeah, but you're in slowing terrible. down, though, though. No signs of slowing down. Yes, you're hopping up and down for 15 seconds, and you're acting <laughs> like you're on some amazing feet here. Don't talk. Conserve your energy. Look at his eyes are rolling around now. Even his good eye can't focus anymore. That's rough. Keep going. You're fine. You feel good. You feel wonderful. Hey, great management, Fezzi. <laughs> I'm really, really excited by it. What's wrong, big dog? Nothing. Getting ready to cross the finish line. You still got another 38 seconds. <sighs> right, What's it wrong? Long, well, it's longer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Keep going. Show you quit you if you do. want to. You quit if you want I'm to. I'm going to go. Go on full minute. Keep it up. Can you do this? I can do the full minute. 30 seconds. You're halfway there. Keep it going. Losing, I think I'm losing track of time a little bit. <laughs> My head's getting a little light. But I can do the full minute. 
Actually, he's actually bouncing more. I have to try a little harder now because I'm coming across the finish line strong. 25 seconds. Let's go, big dog. Make that more of an inner monologue. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best thing to do. Don't let others hear your inner monologue. I don't want you saying to Mikey, well, here comes the right. I'm going to fake the left, and in comes the right. Keep going. You're almost there. You're doing good. 20 seconds, big man. How you feeling? My chest was really hot. Yeah. You're welcome. That means it's working. That means you're doing it right. You feeling better? Keep going. 20 seconds and you'll be there. Wow. This kid's in better shape than I thought, Fezzy. He's been able to go 40 seconds now. There he goes. He's going. He's doing it. He's going to finish the minute. Yeah, well, if he fights a kangaroo... I feel like it's going to be exciting days. Maybe a grasshopper and you can climb in. Forget the brine shrimp. You're ready for a grasshopper. How are the legs feeling? Tight. It's starting to tense up a little bit around the calf muscles. You have calf muscles? Small <laughs> ones. I'm hoping not to do this much jumping during the fight. Hey, uh, Brent, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Brent. Hey, guys. Yeah. I was calling to uh, pick up the Wonder Boy thing that, he, you know, he, didn't he win that hockey challenge back in the day and the breaking in the car thing, but after hearing him breathe... I don't know anymore. Yeah, you're a little you're a little worried about him. Yeah, I, I thought you know I thought he was a little stronger than that, but he's yeah, I noticed that the jumpy's getting smaller too. <laughs> All right, see you later. This is good for his shins too, as He gets some nice and splintered. <laughs> Jumping up and down on a hard floor is exactly what a doctor told you to do. Oh, I know you're trying. Oh, bro, you didn't make it. You were almost there. Fifty-eight seconds and you fell short. Fifty-eight seconds. You're a loser. Two more seconds. I must have been counting fast in my head. Sorry. I think I started counting the jumps and not the seconds. See, yeah. I don't want you focusing on time. Don't worry about when that bell's going to ring. You go out there and do your job. Now what's wrong? My uh, leg muscles are getting a little tight now. My calves and thighs are, are really tightening up. What did the Isley brothers say? Time is what? On my side? Time has come today. The Rolling Stones said time is on my side. Go find it in there. Go run over there. Hop ah. away. Keep hopping. I don't know. I had the same idea. I want you hopping until the fight. You got two weeks to get in hopping shape. <laughs> I want you ready for Mikey D. Steele says two top center, one bottom leaves. <laughs> and I want Monster giving you an alcohol rub down after the show tonight. <laughs> That's just, uh, you know, in your thighs. Go shoot, buddy. You're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, man. Hey, listen, I wanted to offer my services to be a Wonder Boy's cut man, you know, for the uh, fight that night. Yeah, come over and cut him. Right on. Hey. <laughs> 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 you know, so that way, you know, you can sit there and that uh, damage control as, uh, you know, his pasty body gets uh, a little get a little work over. Yeah, I don't, uh, don't shoot. I want you to tell the truth. You've seen both these guys. Who's going to win? Oof. Uh, I, you know. Oof. Uh. <laughs> oh. Uh, look, I think it's, uh, he, I think, uh, he, as you know, uh, Mikey, I think he's gonna be the Greek of the week, I think, with this. Greek whole, of the week, that's what they're calling him. Little scrap Rolo. This, uh, dope a dope. Well, yeah, maybe the Greek against the week is what we call it. <laughs> I, I don't even know what he's saying. He's saying he's a dope a dope. What's wrong with that? He's gonna go into the dope a dope mode. Where he, he's, he's gonna pull the dope a dope. <laughs> Alright, talk to you later, buddy. Ufa, take care, guys. Ufa. That's who you want in your corner, Wonder Boy. That's your cut, man. <laughs> He's calling you the dope a dope. Well, I don't think I've committed to him yet. He's just offering. What are you going to do with him? The rope a dope? No. Or soap on a rope? There's going to be no rope at all. I'm coming at him with uh, full force. I'm going to bring the fight to Mikey because I know he's going to crumble underneath that kind of intensity. He's hopping Mad Ray Wagner, Ronnie. See, what I don't like is the hopping angle. <laughs> That's somewhat embarrassing. Oh, that's going to throw Mikey right out of his game. Yeah, all of us will be out of our game. You're going to see those moles bouncing up and down in front of you. If no shoes in your corner, I want him to have some sort of double stick tape or something to tape moles back on. His name is not No Shoes. Where did you get that from? <laughs> no Shoes. One night he doesn't wear shoes and you start calling him No Shoes. <laughs> this is how nicknames get started. <laughs> and put something on your feet. This isn't a uh, nature colony here. I put my water down and Wonder Boy was ready over to get it. What are you practicing to be, Water Boy? 
No. What are you thirsty? <laughs> a little. From all the hopping. A Best thing to do when you train: no liquids whatsoever. At all. Yes, at all. When I say whatsoever, that means at all. But I mean, do you mean during training, or should I just give up drinking things at meals too? What do you think? I'm hoping you just mean during training. No, meals too. You want to train like a Greek, right? I think you've stored enough water in your moles that you should be able to get along for a while. I, I think like mammal humps. I think that uh, moles don't actually store water. They're just kind of like almost a small birth defect. Then why are they squishy? And what, if they were birth defects, why wouldn't they happen at birth? Why are they still growing on your back now? Uh, what, are you a born-again Christian with moles? No, again, they're, I, they're, I mean, they're similar to birth defects. <laughs> they're just blemishes. They're shut, not actually functional. Up. You, you bore me. I'd rather watch you hop than talk. That's the thing about you. That's how dull you are. Fezzi, I said this going in. I am completely worried we have the wrong headlining card. I'm thinking more we headline Tommy and Spoon. Two guys who seem like they want to throw leather. A couple scrappers there, as opposed to Wonder Boy and Mikey D, where you have to worry about arm strength actually lifting the gloves. Uh, Wonder Boy, get over here. Do you think it's a smarter idea for you guys to open the fight? I think that I would like to uh, start fight up front and set the tone of the night by beating Mikey right up front. Definitely. So you don't want a headline. You don't think that you guys can draw. I don't mind that. I know, you know what? I think you're probably saying the right thing. Yeah. You use yourselves. You guys are the warm-up fight. I wouldn't even mind taking them off the pro promos, Fezzi, and start using the Spoon Tommy fight. It's You know, that's got the angel against the devil, the uh, amateur pornographer against the good Christian born-again kid. <laughs> it's the battle of good versus evil. Whereas Wonder Boy and Mikey D... Skinny guy battle royal. I know you guys hate each other. Well, can they sustain that hate? Yeah, but what? are you a fighter? Like Spoon, we know fight. He's a scrapper. And you know what? When Cameron comes walking in here and says, I will bet on Spoon, that means here's somebody who's never even seen him fight goes, I know this is going to be rocking. In your case, no one said, I'll bet on Wonder Boy. I have a reputation for being too thin and sickly. And your girlfriend <laughs> is nervous that she's going to be making out with Mikey D. And instead of going, I know you can do it, Wonder Boy, she goes and looks up ronfez.net to see what Mikey looks like, to see what the guy that she's going to be stuck making out with looks now, like. She doesn't think she'll be stuck making out with him, but she did have a lot of free time, so she was just looking out for a photo. She's not... Bro, she like, IM'd me, and that's how I sent her to the picture. She's like, what does Mikey look like? I'm not going to be kissing a freak. I'm not making this up. Right. You can ask her. I then I gave her the link, and she's like, oh, my God, he's disgusting. I can't believe I'm going to have to do this. And I, and I call my chick, and I go, guess what? She doesn't have any faith in Wonder Boy whatsoever. If Mikey was hotter, she'd be throwing in the towel for you. And don't hold that, in, <laughs> if, don't hold that against her. Fez and I don't have any faith in you. The fact that you didn't come running in here when everybody was putting down your producing skills shows that you're not a confident guy and you're not a guy who steps up. If I ran here every time uh, El Jefe or Tom or Dub said or they didn't like what I did, yeah, I would, it <laughs> would constantly be defending myself. <laughs> yes. How did Tommy get put into this list? <laughs> well, just, I mean, he's not him on the phone. He, he knows he's tough. crap. He knows Wonder Boy's a reputation. I talked to a friend the other day in Little Rock and goes, I heard you got the worst producer in the world. I go, well, how do you hear this? He goes, I was checking out your boards. A buddy of mine in Florida goes, who is Wonderbeard? I go, it's Wonder Boy. He goes, is he as bad as they say? I go, he's worse. I constantly get calls from Flipper saying, when do I need to come up from Florida and straighten it all out? And he was the worst. Yeah, Wonder Boy's definitely better than Flipper. <laughs> I mean, Wonder Boy's not high. <laughs> How did it make you feel when Cameron wouldn't put any money on you? That doesn't bother me. I've never shown Cameron anything physical. I didn't. You never shown him anything streets. here. Wait, you never showed him anything at work. Anything That's part of your problem. That doesn't have anything to do with fighting. I'm saying I don't have a reputation like Spoon does for being crazy or when being is your, off or gritty. When is your uh, meeting with the four department heads? Now that engineering has joined in and saying that <laughs> you don't know how to uh, do your job. The four department heads of the apocalypse. Yeah, they haven't scheduled the actual meeting yet. I can't wait. I can't wait for that meeting. I want to be there, and I want to videotape it and play it back on days when I'm feeling blue. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Barry, you're on Rana Fez. Yeah, going back to uh, you guys talking about how uh, Wonder Boy's girlfriend had requested Mikey D's picture. Yeah. When she was on the air, she didn't express that much confidence that she thought Wonder Boy was actually going to win. She, she doesn't said, think he win. She said, Wonder Boy, you'd better win this fight. I don't think she thinks that he has it in him. Well, that's because she has to get on top. <laughs> she understands his limitations. Well, see, if she gets on top, she might hurt him, though. Yeah. That's All right. another thing to think about. All right, so Wonder Boy, nobody believes in you right now. She has not met Mikey. It's not like she really thinks he's going to win. She just saw how horrific he was, and that made her nervous. That's all. That's natural. You want to be the opening fight, right? Yes. All right, here's Mikey D. Mikey D, how are you? Hey, guys, listen, I'm not going to be no undercard. And Wonder Boy, what... <laughs> Another job is opener. <laughs> what kind of confidence that you want to be an opening fight? Why? Because I don't want to wait to beat you your ass. ass. After I knock you out, you want to, like, rest for the rest of the evening? Is that it? You're the opening act now, Mikey. What's wrong with that? No, no I don't want to be an opening act. You've been an opening act your whole life, Mikey. It's nothing new. <laughs> do, you want, do you want a medal? Do I want a what? Do you want to middle this act? Do you want a feature? No, I want to be the main event. Yeah. All right, now, uh, remember how we had to fix the website the other day? Now, uh, Wonder Boy has up there, Wonder Boy fighting Mickey D. Does he? You're... Yes, it's a poll. You're fighting a hamburger chain? No. You I have thought... Mickey D in there <laughs> on a poll. You're an idiot. You are so stupid. By the way, you Mickey D is it. winning on your own website. <laughs> 61% to 39%. Mikey, you spending a lot of time on JFK.com, huh? Bro, and you know what? Get all the... I wish you would. Would you do me a favor, Wonder Boy, and get all your stupid pictures off there and put sure. up the other ones? I want you to put up the uh, Fluff and the... And where's Fluff tonight? He said that his, uh, he might try to find uh, yeah. out later. E -E -E -E. Hey, Wonder Boy, everybody wants to see me knock you out. And that should be the main event. You know, Mikey, no. And he does in El Jefe. That's going to be, I don't care who wins Mikey, that one. Mikey, here's the, here's the deal. Yeah, I've fine. seen you fight before. Even though I'm backing you, you're not a flashy fighter. You're a defensive fighter. You know what, Ron? Yes. I what? was wrong that time when I fought. I, I know. played it too careful. Yeah. I'm not playing it careful this time. You're going to be playing it from your back, Mike. You don't worry. He means he won't wear protection. And, 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 and Wonder Boy will taste blood. Uh, I see no problem at all with you guys opening, though. I think it'll be nice for everybody. And Wonder Boy, you're okay with it? Yeah, I have no problem. I don't want to have to wait, Mike. Of course you're okay with it, you wimp. Fezzy, do you, want, do you see the, the good uh, sense here of putting Mikey on in the first rail? I totally see it. I totally see it. And it's, uh, you know, and you guys, you hate each other. I know there's heat between you, but, you know, Vince McMahon, every now and then, he'd open up a WrestleMania right with a title match, you know? Yeah, when the title match wasn't good. <laughs> but when he had Hogan, I never opened up with a title match. <laughs> I'm your Hogan. Hmm. John Hogan. <laughs> I don't know, Mikey. We'll think about it, okay? All right, uh, Mikey. Well, I want to be the main event, guys. Um, you don't. You, it sounds too much like you think this is a dance show, and I'm not saying that to be mean. It just, I, I got excited with the other fighters tonight. I got to admit that I got excited about the heat that they were bringing to this. Their confidence, Wonder Boy's lacking confidence, and I really just, I only care about a great show. We got three fights now. We got a girl eating 50 eggs. A band is being uh, lined up as we announced. This is a don't miss St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day means fighting to me, Fez. St. Patrick's Day night, Dream, Oakey Street, Northeast, Washington, D.C. All right, Mikey. We'll talk to you later about what time you got going on. All right. But I say come in dressed, just to be sure. I can't see it, Ron. All right. See you later. Go ahead and lace up those gloves now. See, that makes me feel more confident, Mikey, than in Wonder Boy, because he really has confidence that he's going to knock Wonder Boy out and be the main event. Wonder Boy, I'm going to keep backing you up, and here's another chance for you to prove yourself now. Prove that you should have been in the main event. It doesn't matter to me where I fight Mikey because Mikey cannot beat me. That's why I don't mind. I, know, I can do it up front. I can do it at the end. Mikey's not going to win. Can you imagine Mike Tyson saying, I don't care where I fight in the lineup? I don't, I don't, I mean, if you let's, win, you let's win. Suppose you're, no, no, no. Let's suppose you're a band, and you're out on a tour, and there's three bands. Where do you want to play? Traditionally, you want a headline. I mean, traditionally. There's not even, <laughs> doesn't even come up anywhere else. 
<laughs> what, what's the untraditional? Fun, there's something fun about getting there and getting right on stage and getting, you know, the night kicking it off. You know what I mean? Like, I've been in bands where you do play first. And it's I more bet. fun. You get there and everything starts with you. <laughs> everything starts with you. You know what I mean? You're <laughs> launching it. You're getting the whole thing underway. And that's cool. <laughs> you're setting the tone. So you're saying you're a happy opener. I don't mind. and I don't mind being up front. No, not at all. I don't mind opening. Because you want to make sure you open strong. you got to open strong. So, you know, I don't mind doing that. Well, I don't, maybe I don't have confidence in this whole fight now. Hey, we're supposed to be talking with Heckler about that movie. Please keep up with the producing, okay? All right. Instead of worrying about... S singing the praises for an opening act. <laughs> you realize you don't go get to go home after the fight. Then it's back to work. No, I understand. Because yeah. someone's got to carry Tommy's jock. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Wonderboy couldn't. <laughs> if he had his two brothers with him, he couldn't carry that jock. Either I one can't... of his brothers could handle that. What are you still doing in here? I told you to get Heckler. I don't want to hear about your brother's jock skills. <laughs> he is a proud person. Proud of himself, proud of his family. Is that another one you throw in there, Wonder Boy, for us, or are you just doing your own thing tonight? What's the point of <laughs> I have no idea. What is it? I'm just putting on wrestling music, that's all. Sorry. It wasn't another cover. Yeah, but that's what we're playing. Right. The cover stuff. <laughs> right. He, he pointed at the machine and just crumbled. <laughs> the head just fell apart. And it's, eh, eh. Look, Wonder Boy, you realize there's no way you're going to beat Mikey, right? No, I don't. And I'm going to look at, look at me. I'm going to tell you the truth. Right. Fez doesn't think so either. Fez was trying to go along for the sense of the show, to have some balance, to say, yes, I want Wonder Boy, but he really doesn't. I can't hide my, I can't hide my dislike anymore. But I understand that I stink at what I'm doing right now, but that does not mean I can't beat up Mikey. Mikey is weaker. You, you, sound, you sound so convincing. All right, let me put it this way. I can't hide my joy in watching you get punched anymore. I'm going to definitely get punched, but there's no way he's going to beat me. It's not possible. Now, I got a call from uh, somebody today. I wasn't going to bring this up on the air. And she said to me, I hate him. Uh, I hope he gets killed in the ring. And I go, who's calling? And she said, this is Wonder Boy's mom. And I went, <laughs> and I wish that wasn't true. That hurts. Because I've asked her not to call anymore. Well, we were doing a phone sex thing. She calls for that. <laughs> she has trouble. She calls. <laughs> Did she uh, pay you? Uh, yeah. So I got to make money. I can't make enough here at WJFK. It's a little side business I do with Wonder Boy's mom. Gotta... Now we're all in junior high school doing mom jokes. <laughs> got to check that credit card first. <laughs> One moment, please. Oh, that'll be another uh, $15 for the next five minutes. And are you bothering Don and Mike by any chance, Wonder Boy? Why? What happened there? No, absolutely not. Because, what? I again, we hear about our producers on the Donna Mike show. What happened today? And then I heard about the skinhead named uh, Ray Wagner. <laughs> what but, did you do, skinhead? No, I don't. No, I didn't know. That's about all I heard. I didn't. I, I didn't actually hear. I I don't talk to them, and uh -huh. I really go out of my way to make sure I'm not in their way. So I don't know what I could have did. You're making friends then, are you? Well, you know, I make people friends. don't normally hide from coworkers. Well, I don't hide, but if, again, I don't like barge in on them and be like, "Hey, how's everything going?" I just try to do my own thing while they're doing <laughs> their thing. Why is does it have to be both <laughs> ends of the spectrum for you? I don't know. From breaking down doors to hiding in cabinets. I mean, I don't know. I'm very one way or the other. That's all. It's just how I am. But I don't. I, I think try you're the to, other. I try not to like. You know, I don't really have that much interaction with them. So I don't know what I would have did other than possibly my appearance, which I can't which help. Which is frightening. What do you mean you can't help? Well, I mean, <laughs> you were born with with a mohawk. No, I mean, in that's, 2004. No, that's an interaction that is. I'm telling you the truth. If this was 1978, we'd be like, oh wow, he's got a mohawk. That's right. on the edge. That's 25 years from now. Right now, it looks like your head comes with a banana seat. No, I, at a sushi bar. <laughs> that's where he drinks at. It's not done to be shocking. It's just done because I think it's a nice look. That's all. I mean, yeah, I'm not yeah, trying to shock it's, anybody. It's pretty. I'm not going to lie to you. It's really pretty. But I mean, if we were in a Roman army, I'd be like, hey, where'd you get your helmet? But we're not. USC. <laughs> right. If you're in the Trojan band. Right. Or if you were playing Tusk with um, Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac. Thank you very much, Jafter. <laughs> Jafter moves on to the next round. It's the fact that I think that it lays over like Free Willy's dorsal fin. 
All right, here comes El Jefe. I heard, have, hey, buddy. Which means no one's dumping now? Is that the deal? <laughs> no, I'm off. Oh. In fact, I was doing stuff with Don and Mike, and I heard the whole thing. All right, what happened exactly? Wonder Boy's just a, a douche kind of loser who walks around real mopey. Yeah. And, and that was kind of the thing. He just walks around with the bald head. And Don and Mike think the place is haunted. That there's a sad punk rock ghost haunting the hallway. You give off a depressed vibe. Like maybe you picked the wrong job. I just try to keep myself. I don't think that means I have to seem depressed. Wowzy, wowzy, woo, woo. The, the, funniest, the funniest thing is when Buzz goes, yeah, he's real likable. Like real <laughs> sarcastic or, or everybody likes and, him. And who doesn't Buzz like? You know? That's true. Buzz loves everybody. I don't know. I always say hello when I see them. I'm not. I try not to be standoffish, you know. But I don't have a lot. They wish to talk you would be. Well, again, that is what I think would make me seem depressed if I walked around and, and tried not to make eye contact, uh, eye contact or talk. Or, to them. or make an eye contract with them and do laser <laughs> surgery. That's an eye, That's the only time where there's going to be an eye contract. Right. I don't. Think you're getting laser surgery. I don't want to do that. All I... So every nobody can stand you, Wonder Boy. I went through it with every department head. I, you know. That's no, I don't one. know. I've never been so hated for either a haircut or for mistakes or whatever the individual thing that everybody dislikes is. Yeah, it's always done something different with every single person. Yeah. I, I, My thing is do. you don't know what prizes were given out, and you don't know where the game show themes are. Right. And this is your what? Job? It can't be. It's got to be a hobby. <laughs> Tell me this, that you really are doing something else, and you're just swinging by here for fun. Please tell me that. No, unfortunately, this is what I really do. I come here. This isn't just a hobby. Choke yourself, please. At Take your right point. hand and cut off your... That's your left hand. I want it harder. Let At me know when the when the air stops. At what point did we go to hell? I think it's more like purgatory. Uh, what line is this? I have... Oh, two? Two. Okay. On that side. Okay. Hi, Juan. Hi, Faye. Oh, hi, Lene. Wonder Boy, I didn't like you since I saw you the first time. And my dad's going to kick your butt. Ooh. Hey, you know, I don't know why a child is up at almost a quarter to ten, sweetheart, but you're misguided. And I appreciate that you love your dad. But you couldn't be more wrong because I'm going to kill your father. Oh, oh. Wonder Boy, no. please. I am. Well, don't call me dumb anyway. You know why? You're going to be an orphan. You won't be dumb. You'll be, uh, you'll be an orphan soon. I'm not dumb. What's that? She's not dumb. I'm brilliant. She's brilliant. Well, yeah. you sure seem it. What's that mean, Wonder Boy? You sure seem it. Because, listen to her. And it's a 109th day school for me. Look. I'm not saying that you're dumb, sweetheart. You're a little slow, and there's nothing wrong with that. They're going to put you in classes. I'm not slow. They'll help you along, and then you won't have anything to worry about. One day, you'll probably be almost as smart as everybody else. You're a disturbed girl, and that's not your fault. Your dad does I things to you. What you should do is, is um, just paint your nails every day. You know why? Why? Just paint them blue. You know why? 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 Because I am wearing blue. Good. Mm. Good, honey. Sweetheart, this, this isn't your fault. Your dad does crazy Don't things. Don't do black, anyone. Uh, and, 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 and it, Lene, are you uh, nervous at all about your dad fighting Wonder Boy? No. No, not at all. Oh. You think your dad's a tough guy? What? Your dad's tough, right? Yeah. Good. Lene, I'll be your new dad after I beat Mikey's ass. What is that? Don't worry about That's it. I'll help you out. Play. Stop saying that. Okay? Yeah, Wonder Boy. Lene, you're going to grow up that night because you're going to see your dad cry. And that's not easy on a child. That's going to take a lot for you to be able to make it through that. You okay? sound like the child. Way. I want you to be ready because you're going to watch You're gonna watch a grown man cry. And it's going to be uncomfortable at best. I'm uncomfortable now. I am uncomfortable too. Lene, this is for your own good. I'm going to beat your dad so he can't do crazy things with you anymore that right, are inappropriate. Stop saying that. He doesn't do crazy things. Yes, yeah, stop saying that, Wonder Boy. I'm uncomfortable with that talk. Yeah. I'm uncomfortable with the things that Mikey does with a girl. That's... Stop it. Stop it. Lene, your dad's a good man. Thank you. You're welcome, honey. And I He's just, nice. I just wanted to tell... Um... Wonder Boy? No. I was Bez? just going to tell my dad because he's listening to the radio. Yeah. Of course. That, um, I'm wishing him a happy birthday because it's his birthday tomorrow. How about this? Tell your dad that after I beat his ass, I'm going to take all your toys. You know what? Take 
have more candle because you're one years old now. <laughs> yeah, that's for you. Is it weird being so young? Bye, bye, bye. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. is it weird being so young and having a dad that's so old? He's got to be, what, 60? <laughs> is it his 60th birthday or 65? No. Got to be close to senior coffee. That's going to be a big day for him. What's senior coffee? He's going to get a discount <laughs> oh, because he's so old. I thought it meant like senior cut day. And the high school <laughs> kids get to leave. He's joining AARP this year, so that's big. That's another union that's for him. That's the thing to say for a child. Oh, you can't call me spell. dumb. I'm not. You're a liar. You're, You're disturbed. You're not dumb. You're disturbed. That's not your fault, sweetheart. I'm not disturbed. You're not disturbed. Exactly. You're a very smart young girl. Yes. There's nothing wrong with being slow, Lene. They'll help you out in school. They'll try to bring you up to speed. They'll do everything they can. Just leave her alone, Wonderboy. She's a little girl. I, it's not, Lene. I don't blame you. You, you seem like you're inbred, and I don't know that you are. <laughs> oh. I mean, I'm just saying. He I don't even know what that means. Oh. Lene, the sad reality is, I beat up Greeks. That's what I do, and I'm going to beat your at your dad's ass. You cannot beat my daddy. No, he can't. I think your dad. I'm rooting for your dad. Lene. I'm I'm voting for my dad to win. I'm voting for your dad, too. And now so is Fezzi. Yeah, before I wasn't, now I am. <laughs> when I, I'll beat your whole family if that's what it takes. Thank you, thank you. And when the boy, you're right. one years old again. All right, honey. Okay, bye-bye, Lene. One. You know, Wonder Boy, I don't want to hear you talking like that to children anymore. If Mikey's going to put her on the phone, I'm going to have to talk to her. Maybe he continues to involve her. Well, maybe she called on her own. Maybe you could rise to another level then. A real parent would have a child in bed asleep right now and not just sitting around by a phone down any number they feel is appropriate. I, you know what, I've seen that family and they're a wonderful family. Mikey is a stage mom. He wants to get her on in any kind of performance he can. And so if that means calling up and talking to adults, which is no right, that's what a stage mom does. They push. And that's what Mikey's doing to this kid. I don't know. I don't... But to talk like that to a kid, you know, you could rise above that. She continues to insult me and trying to act like I'm dumb, when in all honesty, she's the one that, you know... What? Basically, she's a no-talent, and Mikey <laughs> has to see that, and that if he continues to push her, he's going to break that you little girl You just called a little girl a no-talent. Because he keeps trying to make her put on performances. Well... You, know, you, you don't know that. You don't know anything about that fact. You can tell he's just feeding her lines and she doesn't have any idea what's going on. She doesn't know what she's saying. She's too. Somebody should feed you lines. She's not so smart. You, you stop being so dull. She's not smart enough to understand what she's doing. That's not an attack on her. That's just the sad reality. All right, I got one for you. What about Autumn Song? Remember that? When she did Autumn Song? No, that was beautiful. She didn't do that. Actually, I, I, I did Autumn Song. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Here's, uh, I know some child did it. Paul, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, buddy. Hey, my buddy. Hey, you know, Wonder Boy, you are a sick individual. First he of is. all, calling a little girl inbred on the phone, I you really it. have some hang-ups. Let me finish. First I said of she all, might you got to rise above a little child if she says something on the phone and take it a little yes. bit more surely. I <laughs> hope you get your butt whooped. If she's going to call, you. sir, if she's going to call adults, she'll be treated like one. Dixon, you're on Ron Fez. Why? Uh, yeah, gentlemen, is there anywhere I can sign up to be Wonder Boy up? Yes. You come on out. I, I might just let anybody who comes to this show beat up Wonder Boy that night. I don't like anybody to misuse children. It drives me crazy on a personal level. Now right. serving number 564, 564, <laughs> it's your turn to beat up Wonder Boy. Uh, I'm sorry, Dixon. I was really uncomfortable. Scott, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, guys, I'd like to know if uh, Mikey D can maybe tap out with me and I'll step in. I'm an old man. Uh, maybe I can teach Wonder Boy a few manners about talking to little girls. You Everybody is uncomfortable with you right now, Wonder Boy, the way you talk to that sweet, sweet little girl. I'm just being honest with her. I have to tell her how I feel. If she's going to call to tell me how she feels, I have to be honest back to her. And that's what you get when you make a kid do adult things. You expose them to honesty that they may or may not be ready for. I just don't want you talking that way to children. She calls me up. She started it. I mean, she you honestly what, started it. If but you were five, I'd say, yes, you're right. But in this case, you're an adult with a mohawk. But do you feel good about yourself knowing you did that to a little girl? I, I, I don't even know if it's a girl or a circus freak. The way that they are raising her, I would say she's more circus freak than child. You're driving me crazy. That's the parent's fault. I don't blame her. Me too, because he won't go verbatim. <laughs> 
It happens a week from this coming Wednesday, St. Patrick's Day night at Dream, Oakey Street Northeast in D.C. Wonder Boy, let me just say this, all kidding aside, if you talk that way to one of my kids, we wouldn't wait till you got to the ring. We would not wait. But your kids are well behaved. They're not little lunatics. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> Mikey D. Wonder Boy, you call my kid a circus freak? She got the better of you, and she called on her own. Did you hear about Garcia, though? Garcia, I think he, what, is he going to the Bucks? That's what we're hearing. Yeah, it's not happening. It's not a good thing. That's uh, a great thing. You wouldn't want that, Fezzi. Look, Stage Mom, she started it, and I'm going to finish it from now on, okay? You want to fight Lene instead of Mikey? Is that your point? I'll beat that whole family if that's what it takes to shut him up. You're gonna be, you Why know, would what? you want to beat up a family of three? <laughs> You're digging your own grave, Wonder Boy. You're going to taste your own blood, man. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? You shower with a child, and you want to know what's wrong with me. You cannot do anything right. What makes you think that you're even going to know where the ring is? Because I hate you, Mikey, and I, that's all it's going to take for me to find the ring and punch the front of your face through the back of your head. I, to the back of my head? Yes, to the back of your head. What am I going to be doing? What are you going to be doing me, Greek style? What's the matter with you? The hey. back of my head. All right, happy birthday, Grandpa. I got you a gift. It's a beating, all right? So make sure you're here on March right. 17th to pick it up. Okay. Easy, Sugar Ray. We got to take a break. Mikey, thanks. Happy birthday, Mikey D. <sighs> what an uncomfortable night. I was having so much fun tonight. Hey, by the way, more and more people say, uh, Ron and Fez, please make Wonder Boys fight. Loser leaves the show. Wonder Boy, would you even be willing to do that? No, I don't want to lo uh, leave the show. I already so you are going to lose. No, I'm not going to lose. But Fez is betting a thousand dollars on you, and you're afraid to bet your job, which would literally only be ten weeks' pay to make up that thousand dollars. If I were to lose my job, that well, I don't know what else I would do. This and is the only job get, I have. You're right. Never get HBO. You're right. If you leave this job, you'll never not only get another job in radio, but in the American sector of business. I like this job that I have. I really Why? want to hold on to it. Why do you like a job where everyone hates you and you don't do it well? Well, because and not necessarily in that order. I don't know. It's still it. It's a nice job. It's nicer than other jobs I've had. So, you know, I like this job. And whether I win or lose, if I lose, I'm going to feel bad enough about that. I don't want to have to compound it by looking for work. So you think you're going to lose? No, I don't think I'm going to lose. But I, at the same time, if I did, it's only going to make matters worse if I put so much on it like that. It's bad enough Mikey's going to have to make out with my chick. I feel like that's plenty. Listen to the loser talk. Yeah, it's loser talk. Negative Nelly. I will tell you this, and I heard from somebody. I heard you had a workout over the weekend, and you threw up a minute into your workout. <laughs> you didn't think I'd find this out, did you, Wonder Boy? Well, I mean, I wasn't going to run around town anybody about it. Well, the IMs came flying in the emails to me. What happened that made you throw up your first workout? I, um, I was trying to do some cardio stuff, and uh, I had to do wall sits. And you put your back against the wall, and you try to keep your thighs... Uh, parallel to the ground. I never so heard of a wall sit. Sitting down, you couldn't do it. Yeah, basically. It's, well, I mean, you're sitting in the sitting position, but you're not actually no. resting on anything. You should, you're trying to what? Strengthen your thighs or your calves? Yeah, it strengthens, I guess, your thighs and your calves. Well, why do you need to do that thighs. for a fight? Well, I mean, I guess when you punch, you're supposed to use your legs to drive you're through. You're not going to. You're not going to hell and the punch. So that, that would be if you had some technique. So I, the, my trainer said, all right, what I want you to do is first I did some... Snacks. What's your trainer's name? Why don't you plug him? His name is Steel, and he uh, he works at Mike Third Power Fitness. No, no, no. It's a different <laughs> fella. No wonder you Steel. throw up. Different fella. <laughs> He's a fella, Fez. His name is Steel. He works at Third Power Fitness in Washington, D.C., and uh, he had me trying to do some stuff just so in case I get fatigued. Did he tell you that you couldn't win? No, he didn't tell me I couldn't win. Um, That's what he should be training you for. Disappointment. He put the gloves on me, and he had me kind of take a stance, and then he asked me to take right, them all. Hold on. Bone Daddy said that uh, you threw up when you saw a girl in a leotard. Bone Daddy, Wonder Boy is the girl in the leotard. 
<laughs> was it your flash dance workout? Did you wear your uh, sweatshirt kind of off of one shoulder? No, I just wore a regular T-shirt and shorts, but uh, I did bring my, uh, I have an HBO boxing sweatshirt, and I was going to wear that when I was done with the workout, purely, you know, just because uh, at random, not to act like I'm really cool. But the workout went so bad, I was too humiliated to take the boxing sweatshirt out of my bag, and I just left it a regular T-shirt. No wonder you don't have HBO. What are you, you going to pretend that you were Mike Tyson leaving no, an I HBO thinking... sweatshirt over your head? No, that's the thing. I wasn't trying to act like I was a big fighter. It just happened to be the shirt I was going to wear today. But when I took it out of my bag, I realized it said boxing. I was too humiliated from the throwing up no. to put it on. You thought you were going to do so well that you would wear that thing home and feel excited. Why can't you admit the truth? Once I again? wanted to do well, but I mean, I didn't think I was going to leave in there, uh, leave with uh, with Steele saying that I was like a, a prodigy or a natural. I just hoped that I wasn't going to puke before it was all over. Now this is the same Steele that runs the underground. Uh... No, this this is a different Steele. It's not Steele's. His name is Steele, and he works at uh, Third Power Fitness in Washington D.C. So he's a different guy. But I mean, he's a hell of a boxer. Now everyone, did you spar? Well, no, I like we wanted to, but uh, he felt it wasn't safe for me to be even sparring with him. So that's I why believe I... him. And I, I want to just say, Steele, congratulations! You just saved yourself manslaughter charge. He, um, he. Uh, at first, I put my gloves up, like just to, you know, kind of to have a guard, and I was supposed to punch a bag. And when I, I jabbed the You're bag. You're guarding yourself against a bag. Why? Well, I don't know. It's I, I didn't understand. Did you lose a decision to the bag? Yeah, basically, because he stood behind the bag. So your girlfriend was there. No. He stood behind the bag and whacked me with this piece of foam to simulate a punch coming back from the bag, and it kind of knocked me over. So that was when he decided we should take off the gloves and do more stepping. And, yeah. Uh, and then he had you lean against the wall, and for some reason that made you throw up. Leaning against the wall. No, I mean, when you have your back against the wall, you're putting a lot of weight your on your thighs. Your back is against the wall, my friend, every day in here. You're putting your, a lot of weight on your thighs. And you, I held it for about a minute and a half, and it's supposed to hold arm, like, uh, little weights out to the side. So the combination of all those things started to make me nauseous. You realize that these aren't nerf fights coming up on St. Patrick's Day night at Dream. Yeah. No, uh, no. You're not going to get hit with foam there. No, but that's why I'm going to the trainer, because hopefully he's going to show me a couple of things... You know, how to stay in shape and how to... You When's know. your next workout? Next weekend? No, it's going to be uh, Wednesday. And what about your job here? Well, I went at 7.30 in the morning, so it, could tr it wouldn't interfere with what I was doing here. We can't get you in here before 11, yet you show up there at 7.30 in the morning. Well, I mean, I felt like it was important just to see what I have. I've never no, no, boxed no, no, before. No. Your job is important. You've never produced before. If you showed up here earlier and you had a checklist then maybe Fez wouldn't be constantly gone, what is wrong with him? As well as Cameron. I've never had a show where the hosts get there before the producer. Yeah, normally the producers are always there early, so that when the host walks in, they go, here's all the stuff you need to know. On the other hand, I never hear that from you. Somebody said to me the other day, did you guys decide against Oriole uh, tickets? I go, what are you talking about? They go, hasn't Wonder Boy brought it up to you? I go, absolutely not. Uh, I, no one brought Orioles tickets up to me. I would have definitely asked you guys about that. Tammy. She never brought it up. No. I mean, you know. Why would she lie and say, I have, I have to find this out immediately? Why would that be her thing to go, I'll hold it, make my job worse, and then confuse Ron and Fez? Yeah, I don't, I'm not saying that she did all those things. I, I know just, we have Orioles tickets because they're a sponsor. Yeah, I just, I don't know, she didn't ask me if I wanted to give them out. I would have, that would no, we haven't, yes. we haven't said yes, we want to give them out. That's the problem they're in. They always ask the shows if they want to sign off on it, in case the people in the shows aren't, you know, comfortable with it. So somebody's a liar here. Wonder Boy. What do you mean somebody? <laughs> Wonder Boy's a liar here. This would be the worst game of fill in the blanks you ever played. <laughs> Every answer would be Wonder Boy. I wanted to see if he had the nerve to say Tammy's a liar. No, I'm not going to say that Tammy's lying. I, it must have been something she told me about, and for some reason I didn't uh, remember. For the same reason that you never tell us anything. And people are always saying, did Wonder Boy talk to you? And I always go, no, he hasn't. And then he'll occasionally say to me, did you get the email? And I'm like, what are you talking about? We work together. Why are you emailing me stuff? And unless you get a response in an email, why would you just take it upon yourself that I read it? Yeah, that's probably not a good system. I should just check with you, but a lot of times it. I can't stand when you just. I can't understand. I can't stand the madness. Please, Mikey, 
kill him. <laughs> hey, Harry Elvis, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Crazy Jen, how are you? Good, Harry, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing yeah. fine. What can well, we do for you, Harry? Well, I was calling up to, to make a big announcement. I know Mikey and uh, Wonder Boy are fighting next week, and uh, you guys seem to be breaking you know, Wonder Boy's balls, but he has no one in his corner, so I thought I would come down and I would be Wonder Boy's corner man for the fight. Wow, as we all stand stunned at this big announcement. Well, it's, uh, it's important. I think he needs someone in his What's corner. The, yeah, well, you guys have slept together. Of course you wouldn't be well, no, we slept free to squirt together. water in his mouth this time. I don't know where that rumor got started, but we never slept together. I just think, you know, I just want to be in the, his corner. A good you guys just live together we in a one-room apartment, and one boy complained that you were always in your underwear. No, it was, in fact... Three rooms. It was three rooms, but you were always either in your underwear or without a shirt on, though. His underwear I was, was not three in my rooms. Underwear. I you... rarely was in my underwear. I don't even like to in my underwear. What do you even know about boxing, though? How can you help me by being in this corner? I'm gonna. I'm, my thing is to emulate all the great managers. I think uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan, Mr. Fuji, Captain Lou Albano. But this know. isn't wrestling. Though we're boxing. I need you to. I need someone that's gonna help me. These two have a set up bed. This is adorable. How are you going to do it? But this is not wrestling. It's boxing. Well, I, I think I, I'm going to be there to make sure I don't throw in the towel, because I don't trust anyone else not to throw in the towel. No one would throw in the towel if he was getting the hell beat out of him. If they he starts getting shot in the face. So you're basically saying you don't like Mikey D. No, that's not what I'm saying. I, I'm just saying that. So I'm you good. like Mikey D? I do like Mikey More D. than Wonder Boy. Um... I think, How can you I be like my corner? Wonder Boy is your best friend, right? He is my best friend, yeah. And who is your worst enemy? I don't Wonder have Boy. a... It's Mikey D. Now, it's... could you imagine if Fezzy had a worst enemy and me going, hey, I like both of you? That would be a slap in Fezzy's face. It wouldn't work. The dynamic doesn't work out that way. If I started saying, hey, that stinky Pete's a great guy, Fez would be going out of his mind. Because I yeah. hate stinky Pete. <laughs> No, it's, I mean, when, out of the ring, when we're, when the fight is not going on, I have, you know, I like Mikey D, but in the ring, it's all business. So is this your chick that Mikey gets to make out with if he wins? Yes, absolutely. If Mikey wins, he gets to make out with Harry Elvis. Finally, he gets an Armenian girl. I'll, uh, you know what, I have so much confidence in Wonderboy. I'm Boy, getting nervous, I can't read this Martian clock. All right, Wonderboy, pick a round. When, do you, when is it all happening? Second round knockout. Second round knockout? Definitely. Crazy Jen, do you think a knockout or no? No, I don't think it's a knockout, but I think he's going to win. Based on what? I don't understand why everybody's betting against my Mikey D. Mikey D, who's always been there for the show. Yes, I know he showered with his daughter. I've heard those complaints, but put that aside. Have you seen Taxi Driver? He's got the same kind of look. He's the quiet guy who just had it with love. They both had a mohawk. Well, taxi driver had a breakdown. Wonder Boy wants to look like Radio Clash. Elvis. Yes. You honestly, in your heart of hearts, think Wonder Boy is going to win this? I think he is going to win it. I definitely. You don't bet against the Irish on St. Patrick's Day, and my money's on Sugar, Sugar Ray Wagner. If I Sugar Ray Wagner is Irish. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like half. I had no idea you were Irish. And you don't. I didn't the either. Irish on Have Patrick. a drink once in a while. Yeah, you're the least Irish person I ever met. You don't fight. You don't drink. Hey, I know you play hockey. Did you see that uh, smash into the ice that happened yesterday? No, actually, I didn't. There was that a was check a from shot. behind. A... What's that? That was a cheap shot by Todd Bertuzzi. It was classless. It was a, it, it's a cheap shot, he's saying. That, that it, was it was a retaliation, but it was really... It, he it, literally it, took the guy and rammed him face first into the ice. It was the ugliest thing I ever saw in my life. Well, I, I'm not getting a light up on this board, though. Which one is... Uh, is he on the regular board? And Wonder Boy, turn up the monitor behind you. Yeah, Harry. Hey, Mikey. Yeah. Perfect. What's up? You're going to be in Wonder Boy's corner. Yeah? Why is that? The situation. A loser with another loser. Why do you call me a loser, Mikey? What losing reputation do I have? Just look at you, buddy, and please do not step. Uh, do not step in the ring. Do not. I may. I would have to in between rounds. If he job. steps in the ring, will you go after him, Mikey? You bet I will, man. What's going to happen? Rounds? 
What kind of savage are you? The savage that's going to beat your boyfriend. <laughs> I think you're over, you're underestimating uh, Wonder Boy's skills, man. You're underestimating him, and he's going to come out on top. That would be shot. difficult to underestimate those skills. Mikey D, are you willing to make out with Harry if you win this fight? I mean, you will you will have won the prize. I'm going to make out with Harry Fizz. That's not winning. That's losing. Let Wonder Boy make out with Harry once he loses. So they could taste each other's blood. blood. Why would I have blood? I'm not in a fight. Because you're going to be in man. the ring and I'm going to punch you. What does that have to do with... I don't like your fight strategy, Mike. What are you you're afraid of, little... Harry? You I'm called not here. Of anything, but I'm Harry, the you man. called here. Talking smack. Mikey has approached you. The fight is one week for tomorrow. Why are you suddenly afraid? Because I'm not in the fight. Who are you? How do you know? If you show up, you could be in it. If you step in the ring, Harry, you're in the fight. And that's all I need, man. Because How about this? If he steps in the club. Okay, even better. Mikey, up, Mikey? Mikey, you treated this kid like gold. You used to take care of Harry. And he's stabbing you in your back. He's stabbing me in the back, as always. He's always done that. You know what? Fences, How about always stabbing you in the back, back Mikey? You know, you know, I drove down there on Fezzi's birthday last year. He's eating Fritos in the back seat. And he doesn't own anybody. Again? Remember that's that, Harry? Old bit that, that's an inside joke that wasn't even funny when you told your wife on the phone, man. Come on. Oh, you your can wife. Do better than that. You They're know, always bringing you know, your wife in, Mikey. Hey, you know, Ron, it's really funny that Wonder Boy and now Harry, they always have to bring my wife or my kid into it. Why is I that? Know. It just makes it worse, you big sack. Mikey, you're the one constantly handing a child the phone and telling her to call adults. You the bring boy, them in. You know what? You, you have Harry in your corner. That's the best. You've asked Black Earl for his advice. And what did he say? Run, he said. Get that cardiovascular in because he's going to kill you. You know what? What would be the trifecta? Get Al Dukes in your corner so you can know how to hit the canvas without hurting yourself, buddy. You're going to get hurt. You don't even realize what you're doing, and now you're bringing your little boyfriend, Harry, into it, and he's going to step in the ring, and maybe, you know, you know, a punch may come his way. And that's all it needs. One punch for Harry. You see that, Harry? You lost the front tonight with your big mouth. Uh, you know what? I tried to deal with this as civilly as possible. I told Mikey beforehand what the deal was, and he, you know, didn't want to remain friends. I don't understand it. I just... What did you tell me? You're IMing me that you're going to be in Wonder Boy's corner. Yeah. I, first of all, I, you know, I let what you know... What did I say to you? Do what you want to do, buddy. And you said, I just want to be friends. And I go, no one is my friend. What a push. That's fine. Harry, that's I thought fine. you were going to be the big fat heel manager. You I might. will be the heel man. Well, this is it. This is when you heel manage. You big loser. Could you imagine Wonder that Blasty would be gone, but I still want to be friends with you, Bruno? Well, I don't know what's a shoot and what isn't. It's all I a can't shoot. Do Mikey anymore. He used to be, you know, Mikey. Is, I hate to have to explain show business to Mikey, but he just—I don't understand it. it show business, Mike. You know what, man? I'm just going to kill you too. Do it, Mikey. Right, whatever. Mikey, whatever, if he comes Mikey. in that ring, I'd aim for that big fat uh, bread basket. You know what? His big fat head is good enough, Fez. I'll hit that really good. <laughs> that won't be a problem. That's a big target. Hi, right, Mikey. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Ron. All right, somebody else wants to get on us. Hey, you're on the air. Hello? Yeah, Who's Terror. This? This is Terror. Hey, buddy, how are you? Hey, baby. How are you doing? What's going on? Not a whole lot. Um, Mikey D, I'm sorry, but you you won't stand a you won't stand a chance. Yeah, thank but, you, Terror. Yeah, I like it all, but from what I know, Wonder Boy is he's a sour but deadly type. <laughs> Mikey, nobody believes in you. You know what? I don't give a damn, man. Let everybody be against me. Terror. Would you step in I'm the little, ring against I'm Terror, Mikey? I'm disappointed in Terror. You know what, Terror? I guess you've never seen the real me. No, but, I haven't. No, I well, guess terror, what? I You're going to go see there. me on St. Patty's Day. You're going to be there, buddy? Timmy Michaels. If I can get a ride down there, I'll be there. You be there so I can laugh in your face. <laughs> what are you saying? Uh, I noticed you're not threatening to hit him, Mikey. What? Go ahead, Terror. <laughs> 
I don't give a, I don't care how big he is. The harder they are, the bigger you know, the bigger they are, the harder oh, they are. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the harder they are, the better it t- Well, you know. But I'm not sitting in the back seat with him. That's all I know. Yeah, well, you couldn't handle it, Tara. Uh, what, sexually? <laughs> yeah. Mikey, please. <laughs> you know that, Tara. Mikey, you would fight Tara. Sure, why not? Tara, how big are you? I don't care. How big am I? Yeah. I'm Seven foot four. Maybe I'm about, about like three inches hung. Oh, wait, no. You mean how tall I am? You're not being funny, Tara. <laughs> well, that makes two people, Maggie. Yeah, shut up, Harry. <laughs> All right, everybody. Here, I'm, I'm about six foot four, three hundred pounds. Mikey, nobody believes in you. I'm the only one who uh, backed you up so far. Stay with me, Ronnie. Stay with me, baby. I don't know. I'm getting lonely over here. Don't get I'm lonely. I'm getting lonely. Crazy Jen's against you. Fez's against you. Harry. Uh, Dubs thought that you were going to lose. I don't, you know what, man? I don't care. I'm, I'm afraid you're going to lose Helen and Lene next. Don't the Dubs join the Wonder Boy bandwagon. Don't. Are they going to be a Wonder Boy's hey, corner? There's no way. There's no way, man. All right, boys. You don't have to make this a hair for hair match. All right, boys. We'll talk to you later. Sure. Trigger Ray Wagner in three. Yeah, right. Why do you, why do you start now? Terra. Yo. You know what, man? What's that? I'm really disappointed in you, buddy. I know it was you, Terror. Do you want to make a side bet? I am me later. Uh, all right, I'll get your I am then. You'll get my I am. And Harry? Why did you drop them? I thought uh, I thought I was supposed to drop them. <laughs> Here's a Dorian, your manifest. Hey, Dorian. Hi. Um, listen, about the fight between Mikey D and Wonderboy, I don't like Mikey D very much. I think he's kind of a jerk, but uh, he's going to kick Wonderboy's ass. I hope so. I, I honestly hope so. <laughs> I pray. And then afterwards, I hope Tara beats up Mikey D. Just for my own personal, hey, how ironic is this? We really can't lose on this one, no yeah. matter who gets the hell beat out of him. Yeah, it all works out. As long as somebody gets hurt. Wonderboy. How does it feel when it's like everyone at the station here, people that we talk to on the phone, uh, if you get beat up, if Mikey D gets beat up, everyone feels like they win? I think that people are trying to be funny, like saying, oh, I hope you lose. I hope no, I don't think it. anyone's being funny. I think they really, really want to see you get uh, your skull bashed. I don't know. I think I rub people the wrong way, but it, unfortunately for them, it's not going to matter. There's not a way on earth Mikey could beat me. So, unfortunately, they're going to be dissatisfied because they're not going to get to see a beating. Do you think this is your way of finally earning respect here at WJFK? I definitely think it's going to go a long way towards opening people's eyes up. You know what I mean? Yeah, you never got over smashing the, your own window out of your car, did you? No, I never did. It, uh, it's still something that gets brought up to me on a daily basis. But I think now I'm going to be able to show that, you know, I'm a lot tougher than I let on. You know what I mean? I don't You'd walk have around. to be. Right. Well, that's the thing. I don't walk around work like I want to pick fights with people or like I have a big chip on my shoulder here. So it makes people think, oh, well, he must be a wimp because he doesn't, you know, he's not confrontational. And they're going to see that that is not the case at all. They're going to see when I beat Mikey's ass. You get pushed around by everybody here. I saw Ben shove you earlier. But that's just because I'm willing to, I don't want to be confrontational at work. I don't think that's the right way to be. I'm confrontational in other things, I just don't feel like the workplace is a place for me to be confrontational. You sound very tough. You sound, you sound like you're going to go in there just the ultimate warrior. I mean, again, I'm not, I understand that I don't come through here screaming and yelling at everybody, but I see, I reserve my aggression, I reserve my hostility, my toughness for when I have to use it. And All right, gonna... let me ask you this. How, well, how is life going to be for you if you get humiliated once again? When we go to Dream on St. Patrick's Day night. I've never had a situation that bad in my life, so I don't really know what to uh, equate it to. But it will probably... It's got to be worse than when you broke your own window out of your car, right? Well, that was the previous low point. I can imagine that if that now gets added to losing to a sissy in a boxing match, that it's going to bring it to a new depth, a, a depth of which I have never been to. Either way, someone's losing to a sissy that night. I am, again, I am not a sissy, and we're going to see that when I start beating Mikey. Will the humiliation be so much that you just have to quit? 
that you just have to walk away from WJFK. Just walk into the sunset. I have not even thought about that because there's not a way I'm going to lose to Mikey. Will I you am... consider it? I No, I don't Will want to. Will you at least write it down and think about it? No, there's no reason to. There's not a way I'm going to lose to him. I'm I'm going to a trainer. I'm trying You've to get You've never shape. won anything. You have not won a, a damn thing since you came to WJFK. But Mikey hasn't won that much stuff either. It's not like I'm going up against him. He's a... not here every day. You lose on a daily basis. I'm sure he has losses. I just don't get to see them every day. I My losses are here. If, so if people... losing was vitamin C, you are getting your daily requirement every day. And, I mean, it's a cliche, but sports are given to him. Every dog has to have its day. Even the the what sun. Does that mean? The sun has to shine even on a dog. You know what I mean? I I have a lot of losses. I'm not gonna say I have so a lot of losses. You're a dog? I am not a dog, but in I've smelt your breath. All right, I'm working on that. And what I'm saying is, uh, by way of a metaphor, even the lowliest people have to come out on top once in a while. Why? What makes you think that? What makes you think that somehow the universe has entitled you to a win? Well, the law of averages, really. I mean, nobody... I don't see where that has anything to do with this. I Well, it has to do with everything. I mean, everything could be, you know, averaged out. I mean, yes, I have a lot of losses, but I don't have 100% losses. You know what I mean? I have had wins. How big is the universe? It's infinite. Same with your losses. You can't tell me that in an infinite universe that there isn't room for one more big fat loss in your column. If I was fighting anybody other than a wimp like Mikey, I could see what you're, where you're coming from. But no, there's not a way I'm going to lose to some twinkle toed dancer. Right now, Mikey D is like saying these exact same words. But he says crazy things that aren't based in reality. He invents little stories in his mind all the time. This is just another one. So, Wonder Boy, you're feeling confident that this... That St. Patrick's Day night is going to be your night. Finally. Yes, I'm finally turning it around. See, honey, I don't want you getting your hopes up, big man. I don't want it to happen. But, I mean, because it's just going to let you down one more time. Believe it in yourself always lets you down. It has in the past. And I'm not saying that it's past, past present, and future. I'm not saying St. Patrick's Day everyone's going to carry me out on their shoulders. But I am saying... Oh, you'll be carried out, I'm sure. <laughs> and a fireman's carry. Uh, Your girlfriend will be carrying you out. No, there's going to be no need to carry me out because I'm going to knock Mikey out in the second round. The second round of the fight, I'm putting him on the canvas. Now, you started your training yesterday and you threw up. What are you basing the fact that you would have enough power to knock out another human being? All right. I threw up not fighting, though. I threw up doing wall sits, doing cardio. And that is a little bit different than punching... Mikey around. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I opened the door of the gym and puked. I mean, I opened the door of the gym. Just from the smell. Just from the smell of your gym bag. Right. I, that, it wasn't that bad. I did a lot of working out before I started to feel nauseous. So as long as you're not doing wall sit-ups, you should be fine in this fight? I don't understand your logic here. There's none. The, the thing is, I'm knocking him out in the second round. That means that the fight is not going to be 45 minutes. I was working out. I was running and doing steps and stuff for like 45 minutes before I started to feel queasy. And I didn't puke until almost 50. You know what I mean? So I was able to fight it off <laughs> for a little while, and that's what I'll do at St. Pat's. So really, St. Patrick's Day night at Dream... Your battle isn't against Mikey D. Your battle is against nausea. It's, well, it's against my own stamina. My own stamina is the only thing that has a chance to If beat. you don't throw up, you'll consider it a victory, no. a moral victory I'll for yourself. Consider, I'll consider it a victory when I knock Mikey out. I'll just be proud that I didn't have to get nauseous doing it. Oh, by the way, just hearing Wonder Boy whine from the bathroom, I was going like this. Please, Fez, talk to someone else. I know now why people tell me they hate Wonder Boy. He's so much even more annoying to hear on the radio. And I'm going to stop talking to him, Fez. Just quit talking to him. Mikey, you can't be on all night. You know what, man? Mikey, you can't be on all night. Ron, I just want to say one thing. Ray... You're messing with the wrong person. Okay, I know. You guys do the same things over and over. No, no, this is, I, I, I'm serious, Ron. I know you're serious, but it's not coming across on the radio. 
I can't, I can't make it any more, you know, more serious than I am right now. I know. We already went through this conversation earlier. Okay. He's gonna get it. No, Mikey, you're gonna get it. You know, you yeah. know, he could, he could say the, all the things, you know, 350 miles away, but I can't say anything back. All right, I understand. I'll get him. Yeah, you'll call him at home later tonight. Yeah. That's the way to do it. I am each other. It's the computer age. All right, we're gonna take a break. Uh, Wonder Boy, do you have anything else dull to say to Mikey? No. I'm going to do my talking in the ring. That's all I have to say. Mikey D, you're on the air. Yo, where's Wonder Boy? What's up, Pothead? You know... N yeah, thanks, man. You know nothing about hockey and nothing about boxing. You're a loser, man. You're a faggot. You understand me? <laughs> why, you? Uh, why start calling names? I'm, you know what? You know, he's... he's you're going to knock me out in the second round. I'm going to knock you out, Wonder Boy. If anyone would know what it's like to be a fag, Mike, it's you. You're gay. You had... You... You're a faggot. I can't say what you did. You're a faggot. All right. And that I don't was, mean, I Mikey, don't mean it Mikey. In the, I don't mean it in a gay way. Well, then there's no other way. <laughs> don't bring it up. That's like using the N-word and saying it's not because, you know, I don't mean it in a black way. It's just starting trouble. Is that, okay. how, you teach, is that how you're raising your kid, Mikey? You're going to raise her to use like uh, language like that? Yeah, keep... Me off, one All right, Mikey, we can't have you on if you're going to curse. These things can't get on the radio. They can't get on the radio. I'm sorry, guys. Mikey, I know you don't have a job, but where we work, there's regulations, and you got to follow them. Yeah, right. You know, man, just keep training. That's all. Yeah, I you have to train around my work schedule. Keep getting me more mad. That's what I could say. Keep getting me madder. Keep getting me more angrier, Wonder Boy. Just keep on doing it. Because you Go ahead. Mikey, say something. All right, I'm going to put him on hold for a second. We have one guy who's too angry to talk and the other one who... Hey, thank you. What happened between you guys? You used to like each other. Now we're doing this boxing just so we can end this fight once and for all. Mikey's a backstabber and he's a liar. And that's why I am tired of him and I do not want... Him right anymore. That's why I'm going to kill him. Because he constantly lies, he constantly makes up stories, and he calls up just because he needs attention. Like he just did there. He calls up, and you know he just went farther in his hockey career than you went with yours. He played with a bunch of bums somewhere. It does not make a hockey career. Semi pro. It's, it's another one of his lies. It's another one of his lies. You don't lies. believe him. No. I'd right, step away. Mikey D? Yeah. Did you play semi-pro hockey? Yes, I did. You're not lying to us? I'm not lying. I have tapes. I have trophies. It's all there. Tapes and trophies doesn't mean that you're really a professional player. It means you're a liar a with evidence. Listen to me. I never said I was professional. I played semi-pro. What does that mean, Wonder Boy? I, I, you're the hockey expert. It means you're some kind of semi-professional pothead. With nothing better to do than sit around and call here. Let's, You're a loser. You know whether it's I'm a so loser. Much, at least I have a job. A loser, what do you do with your day? Boy. What do you do You're all day? A loser. What do I do all day? I probably make more in one day than you make your whole week. Doing what? You don't have a job, Mikey. You're just living. I have a record company. I have publishing. I have a business, my Oh, friend. man. So what are all the number ones that you're living off of? It doesn't matter. Hey, I could, I could uh, incorporate some crap record label and say that, that I have a, a, a record company, too. It's another lie. You haven't done it. What are you, high right now? You just call up and lie all the time. Are you high right now? I'm not high right now. I am not high right now. In fact, I'm not even smoking. How can you get high when you have a kid in your house? How can you not teach them some better responsibility? You know, Wonder Boy, keep saying stuff about my kid. Someone's got to worry just about think, it. Just think, circus freak. Inbred and no talent. Who would talk that way about their own kid? When I'm punching you, because you say that to a six-year-old girl. What I'm going to think you're about is that... Tough, then, you're tough. You are the tough guy. What I'm going to think wait, about... Wait till you see how tough I'm going to be when I'm in the ring with you, and you better, better not come close to me before the fight. Because I will kill you. What I'm going to think about is how tough you are showering with a child. I'm going to probably stop. think about that. Stop, Wonder Boy. When you have a child, Wonder Boy, you tell me how that child's going to grow up. You mohawk the girl who's, who's going out with a pin cushion of a girl. They'll grow up with their own bed and, and their I, own enough, shower. Enough, Wonder Boy. I got to agree with Mikey here. The child should be left out of it. Mikey. I know that you guys aren't getting along, but the child should be left out of it. Mikey is an awful parent, and I think that is... Uh, Say, that makes me mad. 
He's an awful parent. He has a kid that he shows his naked body to. So what? You wouldn't even know what to do. He's completely what irresponsible. You? With what? What do my parents do to me, you ask? Look, look how you look. Look at the way you are. You're True. a loser. You can't even do something that's so easy to have CDs in the room when the guys need it. True. I may not do that, but I, I'm oh, never going to be a victim. Not, that's your job. I'll never be a victim of Megan's Law. Yeah. You know, can I tell you the truth? I'd rather you had this studio prepared and took showers with children more than the way you do your job. I would be able to go and defend you in court if I had to, if I thought you could do your job. At least I have That's a job shoot. to do, Mikey. That's a shoot. Yeah, at least I'm here making more money than you. Doing what? Doing what? Where do you make this money? As a more imaginary uh, money? I'm a DJ. I do Where? DJ Where do you DJ? Where do I DJ? At all the adult clubs in Manhattan, in New York City. So you work at adult clubs and get high and think that you're raising a kid. What is it? It's I'm all legal. Kid. I'm not raising a kid at the club. You don't. What's wrong with a guy spinning so what records? Do you, what do you do when uh, when uh, your your kid asks you where you work? You say, oh, I work in a place where there's women getting undressed for guys with money? Absolutely. And that's the values that you're trying to choose. So what? What you do you have a value? That's the truth. Who is the moral majority? That's and you married a stripper, right? I mean, what? What, what kind of morality do you have going on, on over there? That is something that you can't understand. Truth. That's what you can't understand. You are the liar. You have always been the liar. You have been caught lying. I am always produced what I've been saying that I have done. Hey, Mikey, yeah. when take your daughter to work day? What do you do then? Stop it. They both, you know what? Her school has already asked me to come down. Was her first word pasties? Yeah, that was her Stop first word. It. You know, just keep getting me more and more angry, Wonder Boy. You are digging your own grave. I've said it before. I'm sorry, but you're really, really going to get killed. Do man. you give her birthday gifts and oh. rolled up ones? Stop it. What? Do you roll up ones for gifts for her? I'm going to yeah. tell you right now. Stop. When do you even spin records? You're listening to us every night. When are you out spinning records? You don't even know the shifts. How do you know what the shifts are at the club? Because I know you're you never... You don't even know what to do there. You're on the... going to assume you know my job? You're on hold here every night. What, are you calling from a club? You don't, you don't do anything, Mikey. You're on the phone with us every night. You don't have some record spinning thing. You're a liar. All right. Next uh, Wednesday night, these two guys are going to get in the ring. Wonder Boy, I don't, you know, when I hear, I hear you, I just feel like you're aggravating Mikey more. You've never been in a real fight in your life. Mikey has. I'm mm -hmm. knocking you out. You're not going to touch me, sissy. I'm knocking you out, you loser. Loser of a person, man. You are the the, the lowest of the low. Always bringing my kid. I hate that. Just a loser. You can't even produce a show. Out of all this time, you can't produce a show. True. Can't argue there, Wonder Boy. Mikey, I can produce a punch, and I'm going to produce it on your face over and over, so don't worry about it. You keep going to bed tonight, tomorrow, the next night, and keep thinking that, Wonder Boy, because you have no idea. You're fooling yourself. It's a pipe dream. It's some... Your little... life is a pipe dream, Mr. Broadway. You've never amounted to anything. What makes you think you're going to come through here? You wait and see. You wait and see, you little punk. You wait and see. Keep talking about my kid. Yeah, it's a hash pipe dream, Mikey, Keep like everything else you have. Keep talking about my kid. I'm gonna. Someone has to worry about her. You don't. No, nope, that's fine, man. That, let him keep talking, man. That lack of morality you subject right. her to every day. All right, all right. In that I'm gonna, cesspool you call a house. I'm going to stop this for a second. Um, I think it's fair that you stop bringing up Lene, Okay. Can you do that for me? I've not talked about her. I've talked about the way he no, interacts. No, no. I heard. Yeah, I'm not comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable with it. I got to tell you the truth. And if your problems with Mikey, I mean, you should, you know, leave it with him. Yeah, man to man. If she could count, she could be a ring girl. I don't mind involving her. Right, in I'm this. Gonna, I'll, I'll next slap you myself. I'll next slap you myself. We're asking you. We're telling you. Fuzzy, I can't win, uh, wait for this. I know you originally picked Wonder Boy to beat Mikey D, but listen to him tonight. you got to know that Mikey D's going to kill him. you got to know that. Mikey D, just irate. Wonder Boy's got him in a fever pitch. Can he maintain? He's going to kill him. He's going to kill him in three rounds. It drives me crazy. Uh, here's uh, Teresa. Teresa, you're on Ron and Fez. Hi, Ron and Fez. How are you? Hey, darling. I love your show. Thank you. Except for when Wonder Boy speaks. I can't stand that either. And I just want to tell Wonder Boy, are you listening, Wonder Boy? Yes, I am, Teresa. Okay. 
first of all, regardless of Mikey D's employment or what he does, he chooses to do in his home, he's a good father. When he, you talk about Lene, and she's a good kid. She's on the radio all the time. She's wonderful. She's a well-adjusted good kid. You can't say anything that he's doing anything wrong with, with Lene. He's his Wonderful. age mother. He forces that kid to perform when she doesn't want to. Wonder boy. Wonder boy. Listen, before you, before you pass judgment, just listen. Mikey D gets excited. He gets outraged. But that's provoked by you. You're that's an true. idiot all the time. It's not provoked. Is You're that, just an idiot. Thank you very much, and, Teresa. I hope and, you come out. It's going to be a lot of fun. And all of my 120 pounds, if Mikey D doesn't finish you, I'll take you on. Come on out, Teresa. And I'll tell you what, I have my, I honestly, I might take a swing at, uh, at Wonder Woman myself. And if he beats Mikey D, I'm not kidding, Fezzi. I don't know. I might just grab the gloves and just start slugging him. I don't know. Here is uh, Colin. Colin, you're around a Fez. Hey, Colin. Hey, yeah. Um, I love this show. I've been listening for a few months. Thank you very much. And um, Mikey D. Wonder Boy. Yeah. I wish they both killed each other. I mean, really, I cannot stand listening to either of them. Oh. Yeah, it really is no lose here. Yeah, it, it's kind of a pain. I wish. You know, yeah. that hurts me, Fuzzy, that you would say that. Because <laughs> you, me, and Mikey were best buddies before. And now, for some reason, uh, you seem to turn your back on that. And and I know you've always bought uh, presents for Lene. And I, don't, I can't believe that you would sit there and put up with it. I love Lene. Well, you know the best way to love a child is to love their father. That's what they say to mothers. That's what. That's how to be a good parent. Uh, Matt, Matt, you're on Ron Fez. Hey guys, love the show. Hey, yeah. Mikey D, Wonder Boy, whip them. Now, where does that come from, Matt? I don't know, man. I just can't stand Mikey D, man. He annoys me. All right. I guess everybody has an opinion. The annoyance Look factor of this fight. Are. Look how happy you are. It doesn't matter if it's just because he hates Mikey. That's a vote for me. Why do you care? It's not an election. It's a fight. So literally, if everyone uh, who shows up there wants you to win, it won't matter. He's knocking you out. 866-277-4969. Here's Greg. Greg, you're on Run Fez. What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. Yeah, Wonder Boy, I got money on you, my champion, third round. How much How much money did you put down? Uh, 50 Look at you. You're just sitting there smiling. Yes. So excited. Except it's going to be a second round knockout. I hope you still get paid for that. Well, you know, you know, string them along a little bit. Because, listen, every, we talk about this at work. I've got to confess something. Me and my buddies have been calling you two-speed, meaning you're either leaning or you're, or you're, uh, or you're falling down. And uh, You are two-speed. But tonight you showed a whole different side, my friend. By what? Attacking a child? No, by attacking a, a creep. We've been talking about Mikey D and that, that whole show and stuff ever since. We used to just mm, think yeah. he was a you know, two-bit DT or a whack job. Yeah. Ever since they, uh, I shower with my kid, especially, you don't understand. Yeah, that's We've been like, oh, yeah, this is waiting for a therapist. A lot yeah. of people don't care for that. Yeah, that's the, that's. Yeah, I don't dig back. it. You think Grammy Wally would dig it? Look, here, uh, all right, let me just put this in a personal way for everybody. Mikey's never ruined the show of mine. Ever. Ever. And that's what I'm basing my allegiance on this. That is literally everything I'm basing my allegiance on. On the show ruining thing, you have to wonder if that's going to translate. Wonder Boy, we've seen what happens to him when the pressure's on in this room. What could happen when the pressure's on in the ring? Fuzzy, why do the you... The whirling mean, dervish? Fuzzy, why do you ask? He's going to go into the corner. He's going to cover up, and he's going to get beaten like he does here from 7... To 11 every night, and then also from 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. every day. It's twice a day he's in the corner covering up. This is my chance to not be in the corner. I can beat Mikey. I'm going to kill him. You're not going to. I'm going to kill him. You know why you're not going to? Because you say that you can. And anything that you've ever told me you can do, you can't. Wow, that's a long checklist, Wonder Boy. Dwayne, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Ron Fez, what's up, guys? Hey, buddy. Listen. I hardly ever agree with uh, Wonder Boy there, but um, if you play back the tapes, Wonder Boy's not the one bringing up Lene. It's it's Mikey who brings up Lene, and then all the Wonder thing? Boy's doing, all Wonder Boy's doing is simply saying he's a bad father. So everybody keeps saying, uh, regardless of what Mikey D says, regardless of what Mikey D says, it's just not true. Wonder Boy's just saying he's a bad father. Well, you shouldn't say that. No but matter Mikey, what, let's, let's suppose this was the Super Bowl. Did anyone ever say, I'm going to tackle Joe Montana because he's a bad father? Nobody would do that. 
You don't bring that up. That, it's like a code. But you can't. But, but Joe Montana wouldn't use his daughter in well, the I've game. Seen, anyway. No, I've seen his daughter in uh, commercials. <laughs> I have. All right, thank you. All right, I'm much. proven wrong. Wonder Boy, you're a Catholic, right? Yeah. I want you to know that every day I go to the church, I light candles, and I pray to every saint that you will get killed in the ring. Every <laughs> saint I go through. Uh, David, you're on my face. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, Ronnie, you hit the nail on the head. You you said this guy, this uh, Wonder Boy kid, he sits yeah. there and he takes his whooping. He never stands up for himself. That's his character. He's, the same thing's going to trend to the ring. He's going to get his ass whooped. I'm going to tell you what, if he if he keeps messing up around here like he has been, I'm going to put a, uh, put a fork in his windpipe before he even gets to the ring. And I brought a fork in and I sharpened it. And I know it'll go through your windpipe. I don't doubt that. How are you going to box with a fork in your windpipe? I'm going to try not to mess up so I don't get the fork. See, you don't play him for anything. You know what I might do? I might strip you down to your underwear and beat you with a bag of oranges. Just beat you with a bag of oranges until you understand <laughs> what a bad girl you've been. Robert, you're on Ron Fez. Go ahead, Hello? buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, it's Robert. How you doing, man? Cool. Go ahead, pal. It's the guy I brought you the shampoo that night out at uh, Dave and Buster's. Hey, my it was boy. fantastic shampoo. It's not good. I'm glad you liked it. The only problem hey, was it wasn't a bottomless bottle. I like yeah, well, some... you know what? I'll drop some off at the studio, okay? That'd, that'd be great. Okay, listen. Um, i got to stick up for Wonder Boy. Not very often I want to, but in this case, Mikey D's a freak. That whole thing about his little girl, he ought to be ashamed of himself. I mean, he took a, he, you know, you never heard of a parent taking a bath with a baby before. Yeah, yeah, maybe with my son, but not with my little girl with, with, uh, her head at, at that, that height. You know, no, I mean, okay. this is not right. And he is a bad father, and I hope Mikey, Mikey D gets his ass kicked. All right, so so much of this goes back to parenting, Fuzzy, which I wanted to keep out of the fight game. I really wanted to be about the two people themselves. If Mikey D loses, we're not taking the kid, are we? That isn't part of this. Where does that come from, Fuzzy? You, you know what? Sometimes I feel like you and Wonder Boy, you're just trying to annoy. Before the fight starts, it's supposed to be, you know, a, this was a gentleman's fight. A gentleman's fight between two guys who argued over the way Wonder Boy produce this show. You two have managed to take the spotlight off of Wonder Boy's performance and put it on Mikey's parenting skills. And that frustrates me. It frustrates me to no end. Jake, you're on Rana Fez. Jake. Hello? Yeah, buddy. How are you? Go ahead, Jake. Hey, can you give me the tail of the tape of these two fools? Oh, uh, it's definitely a middleweight fight. Wonder Boy, uh, how tall are you and what do you weigh? 5'10", 155. How tall with the mohawk? That'd probably be six two. I, and I'd say uh, Mikey's probably a little shorter than you, right? By about like an inch or two. Yeah, I would think he's same height actually. And about ten, fifteen pounds uh, less, yeah. or about the same. Yeah, I'd say he's really. I think he's about the same body type and same height as I am, except for he's a man. He's a full grown man. That's the big difference there, and that's what I'm betting on, Jake. Man. So would you guys say these guys are in shape? Yeah, they're both in shape. Mikey stays in good shape. And Wonder Boy, even though I, I won't say that he's in shape, but he's thin. That's a big difference from being in shape. Nice. Good fight. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you very much. But, yeah, every fight that we have matches up by weight class. Tricia, you're on a Fez. Hi, you guys. Yes. You know, I love your show, and I've followed it for quite a while. But lately, you guys seem kind of antagonistic against Wonder Boy and the other guys that work there. Doesn't seem really funny. What, what are you talking about, antagonistic? I've never liked Wonder Boy. I know, but is that really a positive thing about your show? We're setting up a fight, honey. Yeah, I know you are setting Every, up a fight. Everything can't be girl night. Oh, it never really is a girl night with you guys. Well, what's, what's your point? What do you want us to do? Say we're going to have a nice fight? I didn't say you have to love everybody or anything like that, but you know what? I was always impressed with you and Fez and thought what wonderful guys you were and funny. It just doesn't seem funny. Did you hear me and Fez yelling? Oh, where? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can tell you're a great fan if you've always been a listener. <laughs> Those people, they always lie, Fezzy. They always act like, I used to like you and now I don't. That's a lie. She never liked us. <laughs> Someone told her there was a fight going on. Yeah, exactly. The fight is going on at Dream. It is next Wednesday. Spend your St. Patrick's Day night with us because there will be drinking and fighting at Dream. Yes, like Irish people. 
like Irish people do. And here's what Trisha doesn't understand. And if anyone's ever watched boxing, these guys will throw leather the whole time. And when it's over, Fezzi, you always see them hug. Ali and Frazier will hug at the end of the night. Where Trisha is going, I just want everything to be nice all the time. I just want everything to be perfect. We can't have a checkers tournament. It can't happen like that every night. Some nights it's all going to be about Fez's cat. On and on and on about Fez's cat. And believe me, if you've ever listened to this show, Fez and I have never been nice to any producer we've ever had. Are we nice to the callers? We attempt to be. Are we nice to each other? Constantly. Are we nice <laughs> to chicks that come through here? Yes. All the producers we've gone through have left. We've never fired anybody. And most of them leave and need to uh, take a break. And some of them have gone into sanitariums. So, Tricia, don't lie and act like, oh, I'm a long-time listener of the show. You couldn't possibly be. And don't act like I want to have a conversation about something and then hang up. Like, I don't know, we're your sister and you're disgusted with us. It's just crazy talk. <laughs> because we won't host Thanksgiving dinner. All right, Mikey D. Yeah. I want to apologize to you for me and Fez for having your daughter brought into this. You don't have to apologize. No, I feel like I must. And and there's, you know, don't apologize, Ron. It's no, not I your want fault. to. It's, 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 I want to apologize. Well, I, okay, thank you. But it's not your fault. It's Wonder Boy's fault because that's what he always does. And these callers are not listening because I never brought in my, uh, you know, my daughter into this. He did. He's the one Mikey. that spoke to my daughter in that way. Mikey, I, uh, oh, there you are. I want to apologize. You're a loser. Don't apologize. I want to apologize please. that Lene was born into your family. There was no reason that she should have had to suffer through that. All right, again. You know what? It's so childish. I'm not saying that we're going to hug afterwards. You're going to be. Knocked out that you're not going to... I wouldn't hug you even if you made it through the three rounds. So you're you have to steal a kiss. Now, we're going to have a doctor there, right? And somebody from the fight commission? Yeah. He's going to need it. He's going to need it, man. I'm you're also going to gonna have child... Uh, I'm also going to have child <laughs> services there, Mikey. So bring your daughter and we'll take her then. Yeah. Stop it. You don't have a child. I, hey, what did I tell you earlier, too, about stopping that? What did I tell you where? I don't and care what... He you, constantly brings her up. I, know, I didn't bring her up, man. I'm just saying the facts. Because people are you miss miss uh, uh, perceiving. The are you high? Seriously, are you high? Are you stoned right Why now? Why do you act? Because you're straight edge. You act like that's a big deal. People drink and they get high. So what? Mikey's wasting his life, and that's one of the ways I he's mean, wasting. You're wasting you your have life. Nothing you. that I have, and you would love to have one quarter of what I have. You don't have a house. I own a house. I have a family. I have income. That's. Pretty damn good, man. And you have nothing. Well, you're you, 50, Mikey. I would hope that you would have achieved something soon, by now. After I beat you in the ring, you're not even going to have a job. And you know what? That's not my fault. That's your fault. You can't produce. Did you just turn 50? Stop it. You're just trying. You're just trying, Fuzzy. Wonder Boy, I tried, uh, I tried to tell you not to bring up the kid again, and I mean it. But he brings her up. I'll come in he here. Brings her up. I'll come in here with an egg beater. I'll pull your shirt off and I'll scar your back with an egg beater. I wonder what you. Yeah, the moles will be flying, man. I don't care. That's gross. And you know you hide with the distance between us because if I was an hour away, I'd be there already, beating you up, man. Right now in the studio before the before St. Patrick's Day. Does that mean that your old hag would let you out of the house? Hey. Oh, man. Stay oh, out of man. the family stuff. Oh, man. Wonder Boy, man. You, you, I'm going to kill you, man. And who used to cry on the phone? I love this, Boy, I love this She bore-assed me on the Stop phone. Stop it. She yeah, did. I'm, tell you. I'm telling you now. You know, I'll, you know I'll do it. You know I'll do it. It's between you and Mikey. Leave everybody, Leave his family out of it. I'm just and, being honest. If you need to You're being somebody, honest. You don't know what honest is, you dumbass. Neither do you, liar. All right. Let's just move on. I just you it's know. turned to hate, hasn't it, Mikey? Well, you're on his side. Uh, yeah, Fez. Where's that come from? How do you speak for yourself? <laughs> what? Why laugh? Why laugh when you hurt me and Mikey? I've been nothing but nice to you. Why are you shouting at him then? Have some respect. Would you please Stop. not step in when Fez was going to explain himself? I'm not shouting out of him. All right, we're not I'm have, shouting. We don't have time for the explanation right I'm now. I'm sorry. Uh, Mikey, we gotta go to break. All right, guys. Take care, Mikey. Bye, Fezzy. You heard him, Fez. You heard him. 
You heard Trisha. Mikey has to understand some things. I've been there with Mikey. I've seen Mikey's work out. I have the feeling Wonder Boy's going to take him. I think it's personal. I think it's personal. Mikey gets upset if I don't go to lunch with him. Mikey gets upset if, you know, you, one time he took me out to dinner and all I had to hear, hear about the rest of the three months later was how many drinks I had. You drank like a fish, though. I heard about that. I get hurt, too, Ronnie. You I hurt. No, I know you, Fezzy. When you go out, it's your dime. You're drinking beers. And when you are out, it's all drinks. It's all cocktails. Am I a guest or am I not? But why don't you drink that way on your own? If it's a celebration, I'm having my celebration drink, my seven and sevens. And that was supposed to be my birthday dinner. And then it was ruined afterwards. You know what? Your name online should be well-branded, AOL. That's who you should be, well-branded, AOL. Because you're just a Punch and Judy drinker. <laughs> punch and Judy stuff. Even when you think you're living up pounds, it's still Seagram's. Then it shouldn't be anyone's complaint. Yeah, but they charge you the same. They're charging you well drinks and they're charging them like it's JD. If I'm a guest, I'm a guest. So don't, you know, you could say I've hurt Mikey, right, but so I've been hurt too. So that's where all this comes from. The fact that you went out, drank like a fish on his tab, and and you've held on to that now for three years. The guy bought you a night full of food and drinks, and you've held on to that pain. When I have to hear about it constantly. I, You know, I should have written a check. I should have paid for my own drinks. You know, that annoying lady was right. You're not funny lately. She didn't say that. Yeah, she said we stopped being funny. Do you listen? She didn't say me in particular. No, she said us. You don't think you're pulling me down with this well drink stuff? Holding on to that? Like there's no yesterday? There's plenty of hurt feelings to go around. I didn't turn on Mikey. Wonder Boy, I'm going to tell you right now. Between now and next week, keep your distance from me. Because you've annoyed me. I didn't do anything to attack you. Just Mikey's an awful person. Mikey sucks. I'm going to kill him. I don't know. I... Why are you still talking? Maybe you don't think I'll put an ice pick in your thigh. No. Is I... that what you think? Look at me. I know you'll put... Uh, I know that it would happen if where, you want point, to do it. Point where on your thigh did I put it? You probably put it like right no, here. I put it higher. I put it right in the muscle. Right there. Okay. And yeah. once I got in, I start grinding it around. I don't want to do anything that's going to make you want to do that. <sighs> Robert, you're on the face. Hey, man, I just got to say, you guys are doing a better job promoting this thing that Vince McMahon is doing on WrestleMania. You know what? I don't want to defend Mikey here. Fez gives me a WrestleMania ticket and takes it back, and that's all I'm saying. Oh, my God. All right. So I didn't take anything. It was presented to me as a gift. Yes, yeah, for you to give it back to me and say, no, I couldn't. This is Christmas. That's your Christmas present. My kid's crying. It's all awful. I all never know what a gift is anymore. Well, me neither. I had one. Now I feel like you owe me something else. My whole family's upset. Steve, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. I, I, I got a couple of issues, and I, and I want to try not to lose my cool. Uh, um, I, I disagree with a, a lot of the things that Mikey D does with his daughter. Me too. I, I, I've called before and expressed my opinion to him on the air, and, and that's fine. Wonder Boy is nothing but a punk. He has no business bringing Mikey D's daughter into this. If I was standing in front of Wonder Boy right now, I'd bitch slap him because he has no right. I got to agree. We're talking about somebody's daughter. But We're it's talking someone about see, raising her. Mo morality has... Uh, the, you know, what, you, yeah. You I'm need sorry. to listen to that uh, the Pearl Jam song, that whole Don't Call Me Daughter thing. That should what? be your new theme song. Why don't you come to the ring in that? What does he mean in that song anyway? Was the guy calling him a daughter? Who called him daughter? I don't I never understood what, that song. What Wonder Boy or what Mikey D does for a living? Yeah. What his wife did. For she's a, a living, wonderful woman, by the way, and you has, better admit to that, Fez. She's it, a she's a great friend. We knew her first. That has nothing to do with the the way morally they're raising their daughter. But when he puts a phone in yeah, her hand and Boy, dials a I, bunch of numbers, that I involves that, I I that involves I, me. That involves Fez. It doesn't involve you. I don't want to talk to you, Wonder Boy. I just want to express my opinion. Right. I'm not going to get into a debate or an argument with you because you're just a punk. Thank you, Steve. 
You're just a punk. I'm going to leave it at that. You're just a punk. Because um, I had no radio experience. So what? Neither does Wonderboy. No one would, no one would uh, take me seriously if I said, hey, I want to be your uh, producer, because they'd be like, why? What have you done? Everyone that we've ever met walked in off the street. Yeah, Wonderboy interned for two years. He still doesn't have any radio experience. You guys should have realized that when he interviewed Tara Reid. Boy, you do go back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was like Wonderboy's first assignment. Yes. Now, is Tenacious C going to be in Mikey D's corner? Uh, Mikey D was after her for a while. No. You know what? Uh, he never brings that up. But I know that Tenacious C used to be Wonder Boy's girlfriend. Which, by the way, Wonder Boy, come in here. You never thank me for this. <laughs> when you bring up the Tara Reid thing, I sent him and Tenacious C to Florida together, right? To, for, for spring break. And what did I say to you before you left? I don't know. I don't even remember, actually. I said, drop the hammer, kid. And what happened when you were down there? I dropped the hammer. And was that the hottest chick you've ever had in your life? Yeah. But and I never even get as by far. You're in a relationship <laughs> now. <laughs> Did You're you ever get Skellington? No. I don't, you know, no. Who's more attractive, Today should say your Skeleton? Right now, I would say Skellington, definitely. Yeah. A little late, isn't it? She's a lot more attractive than the hottest <laughs> girl you've ever had by far. Right. What's your problem with Skellington? You say she's sick too much, right? You no, I don't have a problem with that, but she does have a lot of health problems, though. And you say that's You're a turn off. You afraid of catching? I'm not afraid of catching, but I'm not really good at taking care of other people, though. So You, you know. said most of her stuff was like blood disease. Well, she has a variety of things. Blood diseases are included, like diabetes and like some other stuff. He said he was going to make her soup, and he just let some sherbet melt <laughs> and then handed it to her. I'm not a good cook, but my intentions are there. Yeah, letting sherbet uh, melt and giving it to, uh, and she told me once that you ate a big ice cream sundae in front of her, gigantic. She says as big as a stupid head. I did have a, a big... And she, and she can't have any of that stuff. Yeah, but it, that was something I was eating before I met her. It's not like I did it just to spite her. That's just how I eat. How big was the sundae that you were still eating it then? <laughs> <laughs> I was eating the sundae long before I met you. It was a Sunday to Tuesday. I mean, it was huge. <laughs> it was, the Sunday was held over for an extra week. All right, I'll call Wonderboy back in. This coming Wednesday, we are going to be at Dream, the St. Pat's Spat. Wonder Boy, take it on Mikey D. Mikey D told me this online, and I'm not making it up, that he talked to Tenacious C, and she said what? Who do you think she said was going to win? I'm sure she said Mikey was going to win. Why would she say that? Because she does not want to have conflicts. So what's she going <laughs> to say to Mikey? Mikey, no, I don't uh, agree with you, so he can scream out at the... At her all day? Wouldn't that be a conflict with you, then? No, because I would never have known if Mikey didn't open his fat mouth up about it. So what she would have did was then she gets through her day without having to argue with a madman, and no one else is ever the wiser. Remember when that guy that we work with stole her away from you? And this was the chick that you loved, right? Yes, I do remember. What was his name? Stifler. And remember the stuff that he used to say to your face about what he does to her? <laughs> and she stayed with him, right? And then I... <laughs> She on was, his arm. Yeah, yeah. And he would be yelling at her, hey, who cares, Wonder Boy? I'm going to be pumping this later tonight. And she would be, like, giggling and holding on. And I mean, the tears would come out of my eyes. The tears would come out of my eyes. I would be laughing so hard. I've blocked a lot of that out. Oh, I haven't. I got a lot of it on tape. I can play back for you. I remember the uh, the time where she made out with you after she just finished something with him. Yeah. <laughs> How do you remember that? Because you... Uh, I were in the air. We were, no, it was on the air. We were like, what? The, well, your breath smells like chlorine. <laughs> and, then she, and then he came in and told the story. I remember the time when uh, you were outside her door at 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. <laughs> banging on it to, to, just to talk to her. And those two were in there sitting on the couch laughing about it. No, not sitting on the couch. It begins with a C, which she was sitting on. But it wasn't a couch. Because she told me that later. And then uh, and uh, Wonder Boy's uh, new, I guess it would be your boyfriend-in-law, he was just saying, uh, who's at the door? Who's at the door? And she had to go like this. Right. Right. And what are you getting? You. 
That had to make you feel like half of a bitch. Well, no, that never came up, so I didn't have to sit, you know, through that and hear about it. But it would have definitely, yeah. Hey, do me a favor. Get Mikey on the other line, would you, Dubs? <laughs> I can't believe how many times you get played like a chick. Yeah, we need to string them all end to end. It's, it's unbelievable. It's a lot. How long it goes. I mean, you loved her so much, and she just started doing somebody that we worked with. I mean, and, right in front of you. And at work, remember, in the office that time, and we oh, had yeah. the lights out party? Seems inconsiderate, to say the least. It's like that. you never existed. Hey, Mikey. Yeah. Where did you see his ex chick at? I, I spoke to her, uh, like, early March. Uh -huh. And she said, I know you're going to kick WB's butt. Now, tell the truth. I swear to you, that's what she said. And you she swear to the, the great gods, right? Yeah, because that's what she would call me, but liar. please stop it? She said that I would kick your butt, WB, but I shouldn't even, even think about it. I already know that. That I would already know that. So she brought it up? Yes, she did. Now, why does she not like Wonder Boy at all? That's... How long were you guys together, Wonder Boy? Uh, probably like nine months. And this is, you loved her, right? Yes. Now, she was also dating another guy. Why? <laughs> Where are you going? Come back. She was dating another guy, right? Yes. And so I was kind of like on the side, as it were. And when we first met you, weren't you engaged and you left that person <laughs> to be with Tenacious C? I'm not going to say I didn't leave that person to be with Tanisha C. Now, here's what kills me. So, the whole time, like, we, I'd come to work, he would be our intern. And one of those boys, like, uh, Ron, can I talk to you for a second? Can I just talk to you? I'm like, what? <laughs> what would you do if I was, you were in my position? I um, really love this girl. She, If she leaves this other guy, he'll kill himself so she can't leave. I go, that's the craziest thing. I go, let him die. <laughs> right? And then I go like this. Well, then just forget about it and just keep, you know. You be the other guy. But instead, he felt like he was the one being cheated on. Well, they're not sleeping together. Uh, she's staying on them this weekend. But she can't break up with him. The second she left Wonder Boy and went for Stifler, she broke up with the other guy. <laughs> it wasn't the second. I'm the surprised. second. I'm and surprised wanted. you didn't end up with the other guy, Wonder Boy. <laughs> and Wonder Boy used to stalk her. What did he do? He used to stay outside of her apartment and look to see if Stifler was walking in. That's a friggin' lie, did liar. You that's not a lie. It? No, I didn't. That's did. not a lie. I used to cry to my wife about it. Yeah, you did. She bore-assed me, Mikey. Yeah, she bothered me. About what? She was constantly <laughs> telling me about how her and Mikey broke up. I got yeah, back from, from in front of the house. That's what it was about. No, it was not that. You Mikey know. again is lying and blowing things out. You pinhead to pucker up, baby. Who's pinhead? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ellington. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really funny line, Mikey. Yeah, that's a good laugh every time. Uh, Helen would constantly bother me about how you guys broke up and got back she together. She told you at home? And told me. How long no. was the, uh, you know, she was just trying to make an example of when, before we were married. It's just, yeah, why would she be upset? She why would she be upset you, if you man. broke up? <laughs> yeah. It makes no sense, Wonder Boy. She wasn't upset. I'm, I was saying, I called their house to talk to Mikey. She would answer and then sit and tell me the same stories over and over again. She, she used to try to comfort you. And yeah. tell me stuff that I didn't want to talk about her for. You were so scared to yeah. come over my house you used to just a tenacious C because you used to say, I'm afraid that they're going to attack, the, uh, attack us. Well, listen to this, Wonder Boy. It wasn't you that we were after. It was Tenacious C. That's an absolutely true story because Wonder Boy had told me that. And also, and also, at this moment, I could have a foursome with Stifler and Tenacious C and me and Helen. Something that you would always Why don't have you no interest in? Yes, <laughs> correct. Why don't you do it? Everyone here just kind of cringe. Why don't you line it up, uh, Mikey, even if you don't go through with it, just so we can see? I want to line it up. Man, th those two have been together a long time now, Wonder Boy. Yeah, you Stifler, I remember, Stifler told me that it's, that it's okay. I remember how you used to say this, Wonder Boy. Trust me, he's going to do her like, she's going to do him like she did me. They've been together for like a year and a half. <laughs> You loved her, you used to draw her. <laughs> She's gone with it. You, remember he used to paint pictures of her? <laughs> I did. And then, he, and, and then Stifler uh, told me what he did with that painting. 
They, Quick one on it. They would sit there and drink wine in front of you. They didn't have just sitting on her on his lap at work where you go to work. I can't stand this. I'm going out of my mind. I'm going to have a stroke. It was the meanest thing. We would have these parties. We used, we used to call them lights out parties, right, Dubs? In my office. And we would turn the lights out in the whole building, and everybody would get wrecked. And this guy would be with Wonder Boy's chick on my desk. I don't know what any of this has to do with boxing. It's so funny. It means you're a loser, Wonder Boy. We still have failure as a parent, Mikey. All right. You're not a parent because she went off with Stifler. Oh. I mean, if you had to, would you say that was the perfect woman for you? Well, I mean, in, in light of a lot of the recent developments, I'm not sure. But at the time, yeah, yeah. I would say that, yeah. Did you, uh, did you cry when she left you? Say the truth. I'm not going to say I but, think it welled up. Well, no, did you actually cry? I might have. He cried for months. Don't let him fool you, Ron. I know. He used to be red-eyed. And then he would say, like, he couldn't work at night. He couldn't work because he was stalking poor tenacious And him, apparently he still can't work. <laughs> it's affected him all this time later. He hasn't gotten over it. That was the recovery. excuse du jour. All right, let, let's... Let me... Tell me the truth. How many times do you think that you slept with her? Uh, I want you to tell the truth. Because a couple of times you said it was in your car. You guys you used to take her to a parking lot. Because you didn't have your own place, remember? He had yeah. to do that. He was dropping her off at Stifler's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're on my side. I don't know. Probably like 200. And how many times do you think he's been with her? I don't really know. You I think it's been more? I never did the math. How long were you guys together all together? Uh, about nine months. Nine months. And you did it 200 times in nine months. Don't flatter yourself. Shut up. No one's asking you. That would mean every day and then some days twice. Yeah, we yeah. did do a lot. But we did do it every day. Did you ever do it at work? Yes. Our office? No. Damn. Where at? Oh, no, that's actually, yeah, we did. In the office also, yeah. 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 That office was such a skank tank by the time we were done with it. I don't know. If I was them, I would have burned it. No wonder I couldn't find my stapler. <laughs> Where at? Uh, Billy's desk. <laughs> Gross thing I've ever heard. Oh, Billy ate lunch there every single day. Every day, Billy had food spread out on that desk and wouldn't use a napkin. The food would just lay right on the top. Oh. Ow. All right, we got to take a break. Wonder Boy, I know you're going down. I see it as soon as you're standing there. No way. Mikey's the one that's getting knocked out second round. I, see. I saw you hitting the heavy bag today. You look like a girl. Tubbs, bring the heavy bag in here and let him hit it in front of you so Fez can get a look at this. And now you tell me again, Fez, that this guy could possibly win a fight. First of all, look over at him now oh. as he's got his hands up. you got to keep your guard up. You keep it up right around your eyes. And you keep your body and turned to the embarrassing. side. You know what, I'm bro? in another awkward situation And here. the kind of fight that you're doing... You don't want to fight defensive. You want to land punches. All right, Jed has got the heavy bag. Oh, look at that. Are you going to hit it hard? Oh, my God. You've got no left whatsoever, and the right's babyish. Bro. Oh, you... God, does that look bad? All I have you... to do is set him up with the left. I don't have to knock him out with the left and set it up and then bring the right through. Bro, you're pushing your punches. you got to snap that punch. Do it again. Dubs is tired just holding the bag up. <laughs> the bag weighs about 60 pounds. Put Jen down. <laughs> Look how bad that left is. That is a girl's left. Oh, man. So it's, it's That's the an old... awful look at He's throwing the old 2-1. <laughs> <laughs> two jabs, a punch. Two jabs, a punch. What? You're, You're going not... on first. I'm not going to fight. You're an opening act. The... I'm not gonna fight. You want to, now? You're want. saying you're not can knock Mikey out with that. What do you think he's made out of? Wet paper? Definitely, he's not gonna be able to take a punch. I mean, if you do that to someone for uh, two, uh, you know, minute at a time, you're gonna knock him out. You can't knock a baby out with that. I guarantee you, if you uh, punch Dubs' hands, it's not gonna hurt him. Dubs, did you did you feel anything when he was punching? No, not really. I he mean, didn't even back up. Yeah, usually if someone's, I would have to even kind of. Hold yeah, you gotta hold on tough. 
You're going to get killed. Dubs had that uh, heavy bag in one hand while you were punching it. You couldn't knock it out of it. It's going to be adrenaline and excitement that night. It's, I'm telling you, I'm you're, knocking them out. You're hoping that heavenly forces will come to your aid. <laughs> Not heavenly forces, <laughs> but, you know. That's something extraordinary. And the, uni and the universe is going to help you. It's not going to be a knockout by divine intervention. I'm just I'm going to tell you right now, that punch couldn't even knock open one of Crazy Jen's uh, hard-boiled eggs. I'm going to be more mentally prepared. I'm going to be focused on actually punching him around, like right now, you if, know. If you're thinking that when you step through those ropes, the excitement of the moment is going to kick in and give you Hulk strength, you are nuts. Not Hulk strength, but it's certainly going to put a little more pop on Wonder those punches. punches. You got nothing. And just to warn you, and I know in your head you're not getting this, Mikey hates you on a personal level and a professional level. But he is a sissy, and he's not going to be able to punch. Sissy, did you just see the way you were hitting? Those punches you were would solid with punches with good form. They're, they're punches that are going to put someone on a canvas. That display we just saw, you're such a sissy. You should be hanging out with Buffy and Jody and Mrs. Beasley. Oh, so she's the older sister. The older sister from Family Affair. I don't watch cable. I just watch reality shows. I'm not getting it, bro. You're in trouble. Because, no. you know, that's the punches you're throwing. You're also going to be getting hit at the same time. So how are those punches going to work while you're getting hit? You're barely getting those off. How's your cardiovascular? It's not as good as my punches are. My punches are better. <laughs> uh, work, I, I, I get you, I, you want, yeah, you want my advice? Work on your cardiovascular as quick as you can, and then run away from us and quit. <laughs> How's your car window? That's fixed. Thank you. It's better. Mikey is going to kill you. He's, He's a black belt. It doesn't matter. It matters. He it's can stop a punch and you can't. He's not a black belt in boxing, though. He could be maybe he's a really good kicker, which is why you're under that. black belt. No, you don't get it for kicking. You have to learn how to snap punches. Yours have no snap whatsoever. You're literally pushing. Pushing from your shoulder. I've never seen a man punch like that. Are you or a child? Were you being serious? Yeah. That was you punching that bag as hard as you could. Yeah. Get the bag. Are we being worked? Yeah. Here's what I want to I want to see you work a full minute on the bag. All right, ready? Go. And this is a fight. You're not. That's not the way you're going to be punching in a fight. Oh, that's. Oh, there you great. go. Show your rat teeth. He's hammering now. <laughs> How you feeling now, bro? A little tired? A little bit. You've been doing it for ten seconds. That is so girlish. This is why Tenacious C left you. I right. laughed at you. Now we've gone into the windmill. Yeah. They're all coming over here, and running. Yeah, what happened to all your discipline you were bragging about? Where's the footwork? Move the footwork, Ali style. Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to stop punching to do the footwork? <laughs> I gotta get it ready. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's hideous. All right, now you're just hitting with the bottom of your hand like it's a hammer. You do not want to miss this fight. <laughs> he is pitiful. Pitiful, Fez. Spend your St. Patrick's night with us because you will enjoy it at Dream 1350 Oak Street. Look at him. He's all blown up. Come over and talk into the mic now. How, much, how long was that even, Fez? That was a minute even. <sighs> what? Nothing. I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> you should feel how humiliated. You hurt on that bag. Those were good, solid punches. You're kidding me, right? I swear. <laughs> Yes, J-Dub. You should have seen the look on his face when he was at the end. He was going, <sighs> Yeah. I know. It was just swinging. It wasn't even punching. There was a lot of punches, though. They were quick. There wasn't one. Gonna, there enough, wasn't one punch. And now your hands are all cut up a little bit. Oh, man. This is going to be worth it because you are going to die in the ring. <laughs> You're going to die in the ring. No. You're going to die. There's no way. <laughs> Jen, I'll just you say, as a girl, can you hit harder than that? Yes, I can. Yeah. You want me to do it? No, I don't want you to. Because, you know, I don't, wanna, I don't want you to hurt your hand. Thank you. But that's, I believe that you can hit harder. That's I your can. egg peel in hand. You're pitiful. I don't know how to defend that. I think that there's a good punch. <laughs> Look, you're drunk. You don't know how to defend you're against... drunk. He's all blown up and he can't answer me. <laughs> you don't know where you are right now. You're seeing white. If things are spotty, but that is all right because I'll have time to rest between rounds and I'll be ready to go again. 
I'm going to just work on my cardio a little bit so I don't get winded so fast. I'm going to probably do this a lot of jogging this weekend. Is going to be a disaster for you. There's no way he's going to beat me. I'm and telling you. Everyone at this radio station knows it. They are talking behind your back and to your face. And, you know, I know that Mikey's not a big guy. He's rock hard. He did a thing where he let people punch him in the stomach on our show. And nobody can knock the wind out of him. So how are you acting like you're going to work the body? Well, I'm going to punch him in the head, too. I mean, I'm not going to Two. focus solely on the body. Punching in the head and stomach combined. I mean, it's real easy. What are you going to do when you stomach. get hit? Oh, I was not. I have, I have a little, I'm going to slip in. I'm good with uh, dodging. I'm going to slip in. <laughs> you're going to slip into the club. But it's, you get on a slip and slide and get out of town. <laughs> you're going to get killed. No way. What does your trainer say to you? Well, we do a lot of aerobics and stuff, so we haven't really talked about punching that much. But, you know, he's... Is your trainer worried you're going to hurt your vagina? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Don't let anything happen there. It's a Rod Fez show. Welcome, buddies, to St. Patrick's Eve. Yeah, Fezzy, can you feel the excitement tonight? I am very excited. Looking so forward to dream tomorrow night, the St. Pat's Bat. I am uh, stoked for this. I can't wait to get all the guys in the ring. And I'm just ever so hopeful everybody uh, stays a little healthy here. Wonder Boy, are you backing out on us against Mikey D? Absolutely not. Actually, as it gets closer, I'm getting more and more pumped. I'm pumped ready. in what way? I really want to kill him. And I finally have a chance to shut his mouth. Why do you want to kill Mikey? Because Mikey constantly uh, breaks my balls about work. He's inappropriate. He talks to my bosses. All these things. I just want to shut him you up. No, you're inappropriate if you use that thing about another guy. That's inappropriate. He hassles me here Especially at my job. Especially the current climate. And I've asked you before. He gives please. me a hard time. Look at me. Under the current climate, would you please be cool? Yes. That would be cool. It's cold outside, but the climate's hot in here. I don't know what that even means. The heat is on. Hmm? Steamy? No, I'm not getting any of that. I know that you like to uh, pack everything together under a catchphrase, but I'm just feeling like it's already obvious <laughs> enough. I like, the, I like Wonder Boy's big complaint that he talks to my bosses. Yes, he should. But he doesn't even work here, and he tries to badmouth me and my superiors. Did, That's over the line. No, did we not have a meeting today about the, tomorrow's show? And then uh, could everybody leave except for Ron Fez and Wonder Boy? And then Cameron makes you but a promise to stop lying. <laughs> and, and because here's what's happened. Ron and Fez are sitting at the meeting, hearing things from salespeople for the first time ever, and yet you've agreed to them. Well, I mean, I'm not lying. It's just I know of... I know that you have uh, a thing that lying by omission is not lying. I'm telling you, it's my rule is lying. Fez's rule of lying, Cameron's rule of lying, is to not tell somebody something because they will disapprove or not agree is lying. Well, that's fair enough. It was just the amount of time it was taking me to tell you guys. It wasn't that Liar. I wasn't going to tell. It wasn't an omission. Liar. It is, it is lying. It is it's lying. It's totally lying, and he knows it. And he's lying now to try to say that it's not a lie. Yeah. One time I had this business partner, and we got in a very odd jam. We had bought into something, actually, and he didn't tell me all the details. And I was, like, so furious because it was leading towards legal trouble. And I go, how could you not do this? And there was, like, three of us are in on the deal. And he said to me, if I would have told you everything you wouldn't have done the deal and i went that's the first honest thing you've said to me yes if you had known the details you wouldn't have so i mean that is a lie because he's saying i to me to get my deal out of this i need you not to know all the truth and that's a lie basically and that's what you're working under wonder boy but wonder boy acts like he's saving us the stress and strain of hearing about details and it's just not true the stress and strain comes in a meeting when salespeople bring up stuff and we go, huh? Can we change this to you guys hit each other with hammers? Because I want you to get really hurt. But the fight that is hyped the most, the headlining fight, Mikey D against Wonder Boy, nobody really believes in. So the, so the thing is, let's put it out there first. Wah, 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 wah. That's a sheepy horn. <laughs> 
So as we have this conversation about you in front of you, Wonder Boy, we're going, yeah, well, let's, uh, you know, put it right out front then and get it over with. And then people are going, yeah, but if Wonder Boy really screws the pooch on this one, it's going to ruin the rest of the fights. It'll bring the audience down. It'll set a tone. That was something I didn't think about. Yeah. So no matter where we put him in the night, it's a bad thing. Now, your girlfriend's stopping by tonight, right, Wonder Boy? Yeah. And she'll have to make out with Mikey D if you lose the fight. Right, if I lose. It's You get to make out with the other person's chick. Are you nervous about that? No, not at all. There's no way I'm going to lose. I am not nervous a little bit. All right, let's say, ooh, on the odd chance that you lose something again on this show. Yeah. Are you nervous about the fact that Skellington, your chick, might fall for Mikey D? Does that concern you? No. If anything, I'm nervous she might get some kind of disease. If there's some kind of mouth thing he can give her. He, yeah, there are mouth diseases. But other than that. Other mouth. I, yeah, I mean, that kind of thing makes me nervous. Why do you do But you don't think it's going to happen? No, no way. So why be nervous? Why think about the feet? Why don't you do this, Wonder Boy, and just show how cocky you are. We uh, we make it not only a make out but seven minutes in heaven, where they have to go in a closet together for seven minutes. <laughs> That's fine. Was that only played in my neighborhood? Or was or was that a uh, was that a real deal for everybody? Did you ever have that? Fez? I think it's real. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether a neighborhood kid made it up. They have that in your uh, neighborhood, uh, Wonder Boy. Yeah. All right. So seven minutes in heaven. Would you be willing to that? Fine. <laughs> Seven minutes of hell for you as you're beating on the closet door. Come out! I cannot, Fezzy, imagine Mikey D losing this fight. Uh, Steve, you're on run of Fez. Hey, guys, I just wanted to suggest something to you here. Yeah. Why don't you put the Wonder Boy fight in the middle, in between the two? You start off strong, you end strong with one of the other fights, then call it a bathroom break in the middle when Wonder Boy's fighting. You know what? Well, that may be the only way of doing this. And actually... We thought we either end the night poorly or begin the night poorly, but it may be the only place to do this is in the middle. Would that be all right with you, Wonder Boy? It does not matter to me where I fight as long as I can beat Mikey's ass. Well, the problem is Mikey is a headliner in his real life, and he wants to headline the fights. Mikey is a has-been at best. He's not a headliner. He's a, he's a big dreamer, and his dream is to close. It doesn't matter. He's going to get punched. you got to have a dream in this world. Rocky had a dream. He also has a dream he's going to win. It's not going to come true. So why am I going to start getting worried now that he doesn't get to close the fight? My favorite thing today has been since ever since that meeting, yeah. Jay Dubs has, for the rest of the day, been calling Wonder Boy's match Foxy Boxing. <laughs> and he goes, why don't we start with the ladies? <laughs> Open it up with the girls' match. All right, who came up with that line? Was that Dubs or uh, El Jefe? Uh, I, thought it, I think I heard it from Dubs first. Yeah, but see, you can't tell, because I thought it came from El Jefe, and Dubs repeating it around. <laughs> I'll have to find out. He's spreading it. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? He's spreading it, all right. <laughs> Just like Wonder Boy's going to be doing tomorrow night. <laughs> So mad when he hears Foxy Boxing. What's wrong with Foxy Boxing? Why don't we put you in a... Because uh... I'm not a girl. I'm not Foxy. <laughs> well, I'm you not wearing a woman. A you, you were the one who said we have to wear shirts. The lawyer said we have to have shirts. All right, so if not, you'll go without shirts. If the lawyer said uh, no... You know that they... I'd wear at least a tank top. You know because of the buffet, they're worrying about sweat flying. <laughs> I don't want to get head in any kind of mole, so I would wear a tank Ew. top. My friend... <laughs> I put Dubs in here. I want to find out who invented the Foxy Boxing thing about your your match. The meeting was over. I'm walking down the hallway to get my coat, and all I hear is, I am not a girl. And to have to yell that out. At that point, you've gone too far. You've lost all respect if you have to yell that out. Yeah, at any point at all. Well, if you punch the way it is. All right, here's Dubs. Dubs, who's, who called their match Foxy Boxing? Well, uh, Hefe said it in the meeting, but I believe Cameron made it up. That's what I believe. And That's you've been I... taking the credit for it all yeah. day. I mean, hey, so it... this thing is just being knocked around like a ping pong ball now. I've heard you use it 20 times since the meeting. <laughs> it's well, it's been line. getting laughs, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I haven't used it 20 times in front of the same people. Yeah, well, sure. You know, you got a good line going on the road with it, like you're Brian Reagan. You're just doing it from town to town. No one's going to blame you. Uh, here's Jeff. Jeff, you're on Run of Fez. Yeah, I was just saying that uh, no matter where you end up putting the Wonder Boy fight, you can just rename that the Fastest Hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Is it going down quick? Wonder Boy, what I really want you to do is count the lights. I want you on your back. I want you passed out. I don't want you to die. But if you could go brain dead or your heart stop for a few moments, enough to panic everybody would be great. Just no. flat line. There's no way. No, I won't die. No, I won't I'm do it. I'm not going to be counting the lights. I mean, I do anything for you guys except I have to beat Mikey. I'm not going to take a dive. There's no way I can lose to a femme. It is only Tuesday, and I have enjoyed this week so much with Cameron saying, uh, if you put him on first, I'm afraid he's going to be knocked out and you lose him for the rest of the show. <laughs> well, have you really lost much? And he's so serious. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it'll just be like one extra body that's missing. <laughs> hey, here's our buddy, uh, Black Girl. Hey, Earl. Buddies. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Oh, God, I missed this show. I was laughing so hard. Yeah, it is good, isn't it? My advice to Wonder Boy, as a former fighter, don't walk away. Run. Get away. Get out of no, you were in a Ron and uh, Fez gig, uh, and you went 1-0. and oh, You got to tear up Al Dukes's, uh NBA. <laughs> <laughs> it's the plumb. It was the best. His diploma from the school that he was so proud of. He put his diploma on his line. And the people were so happy as the NBA got ripped up. And that's how people are going to see when they act, Wonder Boy, when your chick gets made out with and then seven minutes in heaven. <laughs> that piece of is I lose. I'm not going to lose to pipe cleaner arms. Wonder Boy, you sound exactly the way Al did. Doesn't he? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, That's his fight role model. You are a uh, young, less funny, more inept Al, if that's even possible. Wow. <laughs> and more gay. Uh, how much training has he done? I've been working out uh, about two and a half weeks. Show two me weeks the flurry. Before. Show me the flurry. Look at that. Seriously. It's so pathetic. It's slow and weak at the same time. You can't be serious. That's your flurry? Well, that's the spa, you know, the shadow boxing flurry. You push your punches, bro. Is it, is Mikey, you got to snap them. Mikey D could be hurt more by a Mick flurry. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but uh, uh, Earl's laughing. It's a McDonald's dessert. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is it, uh, do gates swing faster than uh, Wonder Boy? <laughs> <laughs> the gates of hell. No, I mean, I've I just been hearing them the last couple of weeks, and I'm like, oh, my God. I've been having these weird flashbacks. Yeah, it's pathetic. You should see this maniac on the heavy bag, black girl. <laughs> it makes you look heavier? It's, <laughs> it's, just, it's like a bag hitting a bag. <laughs> All right, Earl, you know both these guys. You're friends with them. Who's going to win, Wonder Boy or Mikey? Um, I'm staying with my original prediction. I'm going to go with Mikey D. Yeah. I mean, too, too much experience. He's in much better shape. And I'll tell you something else. Your chick wants Mikey to win. No. And she says she wants to be with the real man. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, talk to you later, Earl. All right, buddy. Here's Jim. Jim, you're on the Fez. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Bye -bye. I have an idea for another stipulation for the match. The loser has to wear a dress for the rest of the night. You want to do a dress match? I don't have any dresses, so I <laughs> couldn't do this if I oh, wanted to. I'll get to. you something. Why are you... That's your only problem, that we can't come no, up with a dress. No, it's not my only problem, but, I mean, it's just absurd to think I have a closet full of dresses I can wear around if I don't win a fight. Why don't you call Teresa, who wants to restyle you, uh, and was telling me today about your uh, hideous three colors of green. I've been trying to go out of my way to make sure I'm wearing all one color of green so I don't have to hear about it. Well, were you not wearing three colors of green? And you know she's the fashion police around here. I don't know how she can see anything. She's got pink eye. Oh, how can she man. tell um, what color I have? That's from taking care of her children. She hoped no one noticed, although it was pretty gross today. One eyes was half closed. I didn't notice at all. I thought she looked fantastic. 866-277. 4969-866-277-4969. You know, you just, uh, you just always go for the low blow, Wonder Boy. Because I'm tired of people criticizing me. If I had on a couple different colors of green, you don't have to make a federal case out of it and tell everyone we work with. <laughs> <laughs> what a baby. Wear the dress if you lose. You look hideous. Have... And why don't you put on a nice dress? Lose another bet, Wagner. <laughs> Please. He, be, he does it at home anyway. <laughs> oh. You probably have a dress at home where you pretend that you're your own mom. I'm sure you're the same size as Skellington. I am not going to wear any of her Have you ever dress. tried on any of her stuff? Absolutely not. Any of her under things? No. None of her under things, none of her over things. I've never even worn her jacket. Nothing. Well, it's too big for you. 
I don't wear any kind of girl's clothing. Why are you upset? Why are you focusing on this instead of the fight? Because I don't know why people have to bring crazy things like this up to me. They get me focused on it by offering to put me in a dress. He's falling apart. He's he melt- really is. He's melting pre-fight night. It really is. And it started at that meeting today where he, yeah. came, he almost came across the table at J-Dubs for saying, maybe they'll have a dance-off. Well, dance-off is not an idea. You want to do a dance-off? No. no I'm in not. Dress. He screamed at the meeting, I don't dance. But I don't. I don't know why someone would suggest that even. Hey, Mike, Mike, you're on Ron Fez. I got $300. I want up that Wonder Boy that he loses. Now, where? who's going to be stupid enough to take up that bet, Mike? Wonder Boy. That's just like, <laughs> I'll tell you right now, on RonFez.net, and Sticky Fingers has put it up, it's 5 to 1 that Wonder Boy is going to lose. The other fights are pickums, And your fight is a 5 to 1 that you're going to lose. Well, think Wonder Boy, you want to bet 300 bucks? No, thank you, though. I don't bet, oh, but man. you will put your broad up. You will put $300 up, but you'll say that your chick has to crawl in a closet with a horny Greek guy. That's not going to happen. I don't you know, Mike, why don't you put up the 300 then? Because I, I am not going to bet anyone who calls the show. This isn't a bookie. It's a show. <laughs> yes, this isn't a bookie. I want to make a car payment on Wonder Boy. I understand, Mike. Everybody wants easy money. Everybody wants to just drive down the road and see change laying in the street. And that's what you'll be doing here. He's completely collapsing in front of us. He's so mad right now. Uh, Wonder Boy, I can't believe anybody who would bet their chick, but not $300. Yeah, I'm not going to entertain insanity by anyone that, that has a phone. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> People are calling up and talking the nonsense. I'm not going to sit here and go, sure, It's the radio hey, show. They're free to call. We love these callers. 866-277-4969. What about this? Well, you know, we're doing the makeover for Wendell. Would you please let Teresa give you a ma- uh, makeover? No, she has pink eye. I don't want to get so any kind of what? disease from a makeover. It's a childhood thing. It's no problem at all. No, I'm not having her touch me after she's touched that eye. Let her wax the eyebrows. No, the eyebrows are fine. Yeah, they're hideous, man. They're big, but you, I'm you proud got, of them. You've got three mohawks, one in your head, two over your eyes. And I hate to even think of the third that somebody told me Skellington gave you. Ew! Yeah. Yeah. Chris, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, how you guys doing? Yeah. I got some uh, advice there for Wonder Boy. Yeah. You remember that? What's that movie with Mr. Yakimoto there? Uh, yeah, the Wax uh, On, Wax Off, Karate Kid. Yeah, that's it. You know, he's got to focus. He's got all this negative energy and all these persecutions. He's got to focus that and you wanna, fertilize it. You want us to get you Chinese like, food tonight, Wonder Boy? No, I do not need Chinese food. I'm not doing karate. I'm boxing. Where's the karate kid? Right. Uh, you got it on the heart. That whole I will fight for her honor. Maybe that song will get you going. Again, it's not, a, it's not any kind of martial arts competition. It's just boxing. All right, I want you to do a prediction. What round will you go down in? No round. <laughs> I, I think, Before the fight? I think he goes down... Uh, one or two times, and then stays down the third time. No, I don't even go down once. I do not take one fall. How am I going to call this fight laughing? That's my problem. <laughs> That's my problem right now. I <laughs> think he says, "Why eat a pound of pasta? Get your carbs up. You want to order your pound of pasta? I'm not gonna have a big meal the night before the fight. I mean, yeah, she got to get the carbs up. No, I'm not even hungry. Need that for your energy. I'm not even hungry. Now he's not eating anymore. Daniel San. Joe, you're on a fez. Man, Wonder Boy's a half a sissy. This guy's going down before the bell's get, gonna even ring. Oh, he's what? He'll sweat himself to death. You think I'm gonna sweat so much I just fall you're down petrified. at the sound of the bell ring? You're petrified. Hey, you're terrified. And I know something. I know he's wrong, Wonder Boy. You've gotta be at least 90% sissy. <laughs> and the rest of it I can't say under the current climate. <laughs> Wonder Boy, you're going I'm to th- lose this fight no, tomorrow no. night at Dream. Please, if you never go to another gig that we do, folks, go to this one because it is going to be so much fun to see this kid get smacked around. And you've been screaming at my good buddy, Mikey D, and have turned him into a wild man from 300 miles away. And where do you see Fezzi when he tries to shake hands with him tomorrow before and after the fight? I guarantee it.
He's a wild man any, anywhere. I haven't turned him into anything. If I might have shown the spotlight on him, but he's nuts. He's insane. He's fringe. He's delusional, and that's not my fault. All right, your partner in crime, Lutard, says that uh, Mikey is going to end up having a severe cold or broken arm tomorrow. You know what? Mikey is not going to back out of this. Hell or high water. Trust me on this. Mikey will be here. Especially when he hears about the added attraction, Seven Minutes of Heaven. He's not getting it. He's Do me not a favor. Getting it. If Mikey comes out early, three, four minutes, I'm going in. I'm using up that other seven minutes. It doesn't matter. That's fine with me. I yield my time. And it won't be sloppy seconds because I ain't going to say in place Mikey did. If you dig what I'm happening with. <laughs> if I dig, but it's not I just happen. told her to clean everywhere because I don't know which direction I'm going. <laughs> That's the thing. I need everything clean. <laughs> Come and join us tomorrow night. <laughs> at Dream, point, laugh at Wonder Boy, and drink along with us. 1350 Oakey Street, Northeast. Pick a, pick a round that he goes down to Marfa's. Um, Wonder Boy will not answer the bell going into the third round. <laughs> no moths? No, no moths. There will be no moths after the second round. Uh, here's Cameron. Cameron, come on in, buddy. Where do you pi picture that he goes down? Uh, half of the first round. Halfway uh, through the first half round. round. If... If you don't fall down and chip your teeth on the way there. No. Can I just bring up one thing from yes. the meeting that I enjoyed the most? Yeah. Did you guys recap what Fez's last question was? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was the best part of the whole meeting. I, gave, I wrote out 70 questions. It was three pages, full pages. Yes, about every single detail that needs to be covered with this gig. I used to produce. I know how to do these things. I gave it to Wonder Boy. The very last question, number 70, was... Are you in over your head? And what's the answer, Wonder Boy? No, a resounding no. <laughs> you know what? Capital N O and with an exclamation point. You could point. drown in ankle deep water. That's your problem. You might not be in on it over your head, but you laid down. Now let me bring this up to you, Cameron, because you used to produce too. Yes, sir. Do you ever remember a host taking the time to write out details so your life would be easier? That really is a literal first in my life. I've never seen that, it's ever. An, it's an everyday occurrence well, around and here. Also, I don't want to get too inside, but the whole conversation afterwards, too, was a literal <laughs> first. <laughs> I'm just saying, are you okay? As our producer, what can we do for you? But like normally, a surgical team around him. And in reality, if we were on the planet Earth, a producer would be thinking to themselves, <laughs> all right, how can I make sure everything's taken care of for Ron and Fez? So they're only thinking about the show. That's the way it happens. In our world, Fez is up 2 o'clock in the morning going, how can I help this kid from chipping his tooth on the way to the ring? Eggs, eggs. <laughs> Son of a bitch, we forgot eggs. Yes. It's just the opposite of what should happen. <laughs> hey, here's the bizarre thing with the boxing commission, and I don't even know if you know all the details on this. They, I've never seen any place take this so serious. They've come up with the referees. They're going to have a commissioner there. They've got corner men that are going to take care of the fighters and judges. Right. It, I've never like, seen that. It's like a heavyweight bout yeah. team tomorrow night. This is the most it's exciting legit. thing I've ever been involved in. Wow, are they going to be humiliated? Like Normally, Bertie Pacheco showing up. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, when we put these fights on, I'm like, okay, uh, my brother will be in the corner. Right. Uh, we'll have Jafter, a uh, dog, and a penguin as judges. You try to come up with every again. They have put together this. These are going to be legitimate fights, not legitimate fighters, right. but legitimate yeah. fights. Chris, you're on Fez. Fezzy. Yeah. Yes, Chris. Didn't Didn't you pick Wonder Boy to win? I did pick Wonder Boy to win, but I'm having so much trouble sticking with it. So you take a tap dancing kid toucher over Wonder Boy? You know, I just pick, uh, you know, I keep seeing everything that's been going on this week with Wonder Boy you can't, as the collapse continues. You know, you can't bet from what a person has done in their past. That would be like saying you're betting against Mike Tyson. Because you have to just look at what happens in the ring. Although the people that are picking Wonder Boy to lose are going off his past. And that huge losing streak that he's been on. Yeah. Since I would say, what, birth? Have you ever had a win? What would you say was the best day of your life, Wonder Boy? The big win? Um, I mean, it would definitely be something career-related. It would probably be... Career-related. How, how could it be career-related? How could your best day be my worst day? <laughs> Same day. Was it the best day when that guy that we used to work with took your chick away and started having sex with her in the office? That was 
wasn't one of my best days. No, that wouldn't be a big Or it's when you kept crying and scratching at the door about it. That was a good day. No, that was a bad day for me. Best day? Probably when you broke your own window. <laughs> no, bad day because I felt really embarrassed about doing it. So that one wasn't a good one for me. Hey, Chuck, Chuck, you're on Run of Feathers. Yes, as you were definitely for Wonder Boy, and the way you turn on him and everybody else there turn on him, I am really sick of Mickey D, and I want him to go down really I, bad. First of all, it's Mikey D. Mikey D, sorry. And look. Is Wonder Boy getting out there and running, and is he getting out there and working up for this? Yeah, you have been, right? Yes. So you're going to be able to run out of the ring and down the street? <laughs> no, the running is just to keep my heart, you know, right up. Don't I'm not actually get, using don't it. Don't let him get here. They're just trying to get you all nerved up, man. And now, now, you're saying turn on Wonder Boy. I took Mikey from the start. I know, I'm talking about beginning. Fez. Fez, well, look, he turned on him. It, they, he just wanted to join the the, uh, the bandwagon that you all are on look, there because he wouldn't have fun with everybody else that's in there. Well, I, I, why don't you do this? Listen to the 11 a.m. show and see when Fez stays with any subject. You got the Republican <laughs> who wants legalized pot, legalized abortions, no guns in the country, and then he tells me today it's because he's progressive. I am. I'm progressive. <laughs> that's called Democrat. You're a Democrat. You've been in the wrong party your entire voting life. But I can't sit here and watch him hit that heavy bag and think he's going to be able to pull this off. You better beat that girl up, Wonder Boy. I mean, I'm sick of him. I can't stand even hear him talk on the radio. The only thing I can hope is that he's being punked, is that he's punking us. No, there's no punking. There's no Wonder punking. Boy, do you know what chlorohydrate is? No, actually, I don't. You're supposed to put that in his water, man. Yeah, you're going to have to come up with some. I don't have to kind of dose his water. I appreciate your support, but no, not the dose his water. Dose gonna... my water. Make sure I'm tripping. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I won't do it. I yeah, won't. I won't do that to you. Here's uh, PJ. PJ, you're around a fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Hey, Wonder Boy, have you ever seen the movie MASH? Uh, What movie? MASH? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. You... No, I haven't seen the movie, oh. Nash, but, but I've seen you the want to go show. check it out. There's a scene in there, a boxing scene, where they put chloroform on the boxing gloves and they have to push the guy over. That's the only way you're going to beat Mikey D. There's, you're not going to knock him out. There's the no legitimate way that you can win this fight, Wonderboy. So start thinking of ways to cheat. There's going to be no cheating necessary. I'm not going to resort to cheating. Mikey is not some kind of Greek god. I mean, he's he's a failure, and I don't know why everyone thinks it's going to be possible for me to punch him out. No, look, if he was he fighting anybody else, we all wouldn't be talking that. We're only we're giving we're making him the heavy favorite because he's playing you. It's like if Franklin and Marshall was playing the school for the blind girls, we wouldn't go, oh yeah, Franklin and Marshall's going all the way. But we will say, hey, they're going to destroy the school of the blind girls. I'm just a victim of bad press. I am not this awful of a fighter. It's just I have a bad reputation. But that's what's nice about a fight is that the reputation doesn't matter. I'm going to be able to get in there and kill him. Jeff, Jeff writes in, it's a Greek god against a geek dog. That's witty, isn't it? Wonder Boy, does it make you feel better? No, it doesn't make me feel better. When you said your strategy was the hope that the heat of the moment gives you superhuman strength, that's when I really started to have my doubts. I'm not looking for superhuman strength, but I will... How about just human strength? If you get even <laughs> human strength, I would be excited. I will be able to take it up another level once it's go time, once I'm in I the game. I want to talk to your girlfriend tonight. It's go time. Explain to her that she either gets used to making out with Mikey or she should run now, like your uh, bald-headed girlfriend did. No, there's no running. It's Everything's going to be fine. She's not going to have to get used to making out with Mikey. He's not going to win. I cannot be knocked out. <laughs> I can't be. I could knock you out in two seconds. Well, I could walk across the room and knock you out without thinking about it. I can't be knocked out. Where and did that come from? And I will tell you right now, I've watched all the guys that are going to be in these fights, right? Mm -hmm. Every guy in the fights could knock you out. If this was some kind of a tournament... You would finish sixth. You're the worst fighter we have, and you're the worst producer we have. I'll go so far. You're the worst Christian that we have. You're the worst American that we have. Homo sapien, you're the worst. I, there's a lot of things for me to defend. You are the worst carbon-based life form I've ever run across. I'm fine with all this stuff. I'm betting against you. And you think you're not going to be able to be knocked out? Not by Mikey. Here's Blind Courtney. How you doing, Courtney? Hey, guys. How are you? Well, I'm I'm really having a tough time deciding who I'm going to vote for because I like both of the guys, but 
I'm going to have to go with Wonder Boy only because who else is going to drive with me in a car? Yeah, that's true. Nerves of steel. <laughs> oh, by the way, Blind Courtney, yes. I wanted to tell you this. Wonder Boy later told us that he was picking up your dress. I wasn't wearing a dress. Oh, God, Wonder Boy, that's disgusting. <laughs> she sat there naked. You had a, no, I wasn't. You had a blind no, girl he didn't run naked in the car. So I was wearing clothes. How do you know if you got clothes on or not? I, I do have a brain, you know. Now, it's you I don't know about. <laughs> I would put on like three shirts just forgetting that I had put one on <laughs> if I was blind. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wonder Boy, tell me the truth. What round do you are you getting knocked out? Uh, I will not be knocked out in any of the rounds. That's the honest truth. All right. Thanks, Courtney. All right. Bye-bye. Right, See you, Blank Courtney. It's not going to happen. Not from Mikey D. It's not going to happen. I am gonna, I am gonna kill Mike. What, what reason did you even have all these problems with Mikey? Mikey is a liar. Mikey is a liar that tries to make trouble for me at work, and I am fed up with it. So we arranged this up for me to whip his ass and shut his mouth, and that's what I'm gonna do tomorrow night. I'm gonna knock him out, and it's even the second round, second round knockout. And your world's gonna change after that. Yeah, it's gonna show people that even though they thought I was gonna lose, I will treat you differently. Thing. I honestly. What a knockout, I will treat you differently. I'll treat you like a man. I look forward to that. <laughs> I look forward to that. What did that mean, the way you said that? It'd be nice. Like, I'm, like, like I'm a bad but... father all of a sudden? No, but I mean, it'd be... It'd I know, be nice. I caught some sarcasm there. No. He tried to use his man voice. I know, and it, but he mumbled. Like, if you can, you stinking drunk. <laughs> Larry, you're on manifest. Hey guys, um, listen, Wonder Boy, I'm gonna hook you up, sweetheart. My dog just went out of a heat cycle, and I've got some extra pampers just in case you need them. You want some dog pampers? No, there's gonna be no reason for me to have pampers. <laughs> I don't know why you think what exactly would make me need. All right, now what is that? What is that phone? Stop it! What is you it? You know what it is. The things you have felt the need to say out loud just in the past 24 hours. I am not a girl. I don't need pampers. It's because these people provoke me. I would never say these things on my own. But when people call up offering you pampers, all of a sudden you're in a position where you have to go, no, I don't use pampers. How can we be sure? <laughs> Let's see the back of your pants. See if they're on. There's underwear. no reason to show you the back of my pants. <laughs> I, because I have a feeling that there's pampers there. No. The way you're protesting. At the very least. No, the butt looks too big. At the very least, there's pull-ups. No, there's no, there's just regular boxer shorts that any man would wear. I'm not going to turn around and show you. How do we know then? You don't want to look at my uh, butt. I know that everybody. It's, it's no big deal. You don't. Skid mark. No, it, there's yeah. not anything why I wouldn't want to show it to you. But there's just no reason for one man to show another man what's going on behind him. What about like, gay people? They would want to make. Yeah, it's consensual. <laughs> A man would want to prove that he's not wearing pampers, I think. What do you want, a size 2? No, I have a nice 34 waist. <laughs> two no. T. A nice one, he says. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's your smell. It's an average build on an average person. It's not like I'm... I have I'm a below average producer. I have normal clothes on. I don't wear any kind of special undergarments. I don't know why this lady would think I did. You just seem like you do. But that's not based on anything. That's just, she came up with a notion. She's as bad as Mikey. Get some crazy thoughts. Mikey's her. knocking you out. No way. It's not going to happen. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. <sighs> I'm so excited. I wish it was tomorrow, please. I don't know whether this whole theory of relativity works and the whole time-space thing. I just want to be there and have it tomorrow night and be looking at Wonder Boy on the canvas. Here's Brian, you're on Fez. What's up, boys? Hey, buddy. How you guys doing? Cool. Wonder Boy rules, and he's going to win like you wouldn't believe. I'm tired of you not believing in him. I don't believe in him. I'm tired of it. I don't Why? believe in him. He has lost at everything he's tried in his life. It doesn't matter. This is going to be a first for him, and you guys are going to be proud, and you're just dogging him, and he's going to be your boy. Brian, I told him I would treat him differently, and as far as he being my boy, 
Wonder Boy, how many times do you think I've saved your job since you've been here? I Countless. It's a lot. <laughs> Again today in that meeting. Time after time, I'll go in front of the bosses, I'll explain that he's brain damaged or retarded, and I'll make them chill out. So listen to that, Ronnie. You're keeping, you're keeping it alive, so why can't you support him here? I can't do it. Show the love. You because to. He's going to rule. He's going to win. What are you basing it on, Brian? It's because listen to him every day. He's the best. Give me something I can go with. <laughs> I wish I could. But thank you. I'm feeling that I've been there before. I try to find something positive about him. And I can't think of anything <laughs> negative about Mikey D. Mikey D is he's a stage mom. He's pushing his kid or his uh, child into things she doesn't want to do. He showers with him or with her. her. I, he, First of all, you don't know any of that. Oh, Mo Mikey! Mikey forces her onto the phone when she doesn't do well. He She's screams at her. All right, I'm a I'm a parent myself. She's a very bright young girl, and he's a good father to her. She is a slow girl, and what he's doing is he's setting her whole life up for disappointment. The same disappointment he's been through because he constantly forces her to do things and pushes her too hard. So he is an awful person. That's one thing you can think of right there. He is not an awful person. He's childish. Every time something doesn't go his way, he sits and he complains. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Easy, hey. easy, easy. Mikey. Mikey's now. here. Say something now. Mikey's in the room. Hey. Hey. Say something now. Mikey D is here. Oh, easy, easy, guys. Ronnie separating him and Wonder Boy. You're so, punk. Back up. No, I'm not going to back, back up. up. Say something back up. Back up. I'll Say talk to you. Back up. We got plenty of time to fight. Take a look at this. Back right. up. Mikey, nice. Uh, Just shove something person. in Wonder Boy's face. What are you even doing here? Your thing is tomorrow. What are you going to do about it? Don't worry about it. Tomorrow is what I'm going to take care of this. Easy, easy. About it? We got this all set up for tomorrow night. Back up. Back we'll up. We'll take care of this tomorrow. Yeah, I, you, I, you see that tomorrow. Back yeah. up. We'll take care of this tomorrow. Right. Back up. Stop. Stop for Uh, Mikey's, uh, he grabbed his neck. His neck's a little. There's fingerprints on his neck. What did you smack him with, Mikey? His... Why'd you hit him in the with face? With Lene's report card, which she got today. Nice. Only I stage mean, mother would bring that in. All right, see, so you it's because, that, you're you know why? It. Because you said that, that her report card, bring it in. I brought it in, Wonder Boy. You don't even remember what you say, man. Did you even read Come it, on. Wonder Boy? Come on. No, I never a chance to read it, because Mikey <laughs> bounced off my forehead. Because you're uncivilized. Hey, we're showing it to you. I can't right. wait. Hey, you know, I'm not standing here with this. Get out. Just get out of the way. No. Just get out of the way. Stay in here, you Get out of the way. Stay in here, we you punk. We have to take care of this tomorrow. Get Stay out of the way. Stay in here, you punk. Stay in here, man. out of here. All right, Fezzy, Mikey's just asking manhandling. Yeah, he's, he's putting him into the Where's wall. Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy. Run, out. You didn't Run out, just like you're going to do tomorrow, baby. You didn't see the report card yet. Mikey, this is impressive. Four is the highest you can get. Yeah, that's 95 to 100. Four. And it's, all, it's all fours and threes. Hmm? Three is uh, uh, on a hundred scale? Huh? On a scale of a hundred? No. Fours and threes? No. I don't know how they work with kids. Three is 80, um, 85 to 95, I think, and four is from 95 to 100. Huge in the rating. She's got a lot of fours. All right, Mike, you seem like you blew up a little bit there. I'm worried about you having trouble breathing. Oh, no, no. I'm just mad. Don't worry. All right, my, uh, Fezzy Mikey was uh, slapping him around like a chick. And uh, <clears throat> Wonder Boy's neck is all right from where he grabbed it. It's, it's got the fingerprints on it. Like, and what does Wonder Boy just get to leave work now? Do we have that kind of place? <laughs> that's, what, that's what he'll be doing tomorrow, running out of the ring. Because he's not going to take it, man. All right, this is a fine report card. What grade is this? First. All right, so Wonder Boy's got no business. You know, he doesn't even remember what he says. No, he Because my kid is stupid. Let's see your, rep let's your, see your report retarded. card. Yeah. He called your kid retarded. An inbred. Yeah, a circus freak. Yeah. And a no talent. I'll remember it. See, that's what he forgets, that you remember. That's right. All right, now he left work. <laughs> hey, he, was, he flew across that room, and he almost uh, dropped the deuce when Mikey pushed him against the wall. My favorite thing is he was saying, I'm not staying in here, and leaves. <laughs> this is where you work. What if you worked in a bank? <laughs> I'm not staying here counting all this money. What right. am I doing here? Yeah. 
That's nice. The way hey, Dubs, could you fix this for me? My mouse got broken during the melee. The way he went up against that wall, are we using the right person in Monster Toss? Oh, yeah, he went up against it quick. Oh, so that's the wrong one? The other one got knocked down? Yeah, you know what? I, I don't make up a lot of uh, rules in here, but you can't smack people with your children's report cards. That's all right. By the way, it's good to see him. I can't even have a chance to say hello. <laughs> Next thing I know, you're in here. And it was like... I don't know whether we even said anything. Did we even say what was happening? I was almost like in one of those uh, classes where they go, uh, like uh, you, a professor's teaching you, and then they come in and there's a robbery, and you have to describe the guy. I don't know whether we even said a word when Mikey came in. I think we did say that, oh, Mikey D's here. I and next thing you know, you heard something hit the wall. Something thin and pale hit the wall. All right, uh, RonFez.net has just changed the odds from 5 to 1 to 10 to 1. Good. We're uh, wow. We're in trouble here. The handicappers are up late tonight. Tim, Tim, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Mike, I'm glad you think you can win as long as you know Wonder Boy's back is against you. Why you just come running in there and and who knows? Who he knows? saw me coming in. He saw me coming in. He had no chance to do anything. Just like tomorrow, he'll have no chance. So I'm then like, I can really hit him in the head. So you can get number fours in the elementary school. Is that where you're showing your... Uh, your this is children. children. That's, 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 listen, listen to the radio, buddy. What, he's he drunk? Said, he said that... Wonder Boy said that his daughter was slow. And, this, and then he says, bring in the report card. And Mikey... I, I don't well, know whose grades are these? You, hers or Mikey's? It's her grades. It's her grades, stupid. All right, I don't know whether you got to return this back in, but you've rubbed it all over Wonder Boy's face. No, that's yeah. just a copy. Are you okay. sure? Because yeah. they almost ate it. It's just a copy. And you see the teacher wrote on the back that she writes books at home, and it's a great activity. Keep writing those little books that she does. What, what books does she write? She writes like um, um, like monster books and like, you know, family books. What a nice little book. And it's there. like, you know, Lene. Does she write goosebumps? Because I like those. Well, no, she, she wrote something you know. like Lene meets, uh, uh, meets Hello Kitty. That was one of her newest ones. Look how quick he's calm now. I have to come in here and slapping him around. Now he's being like a proud dad. Steve, you're on Run Fez. Hey, guys, how you doing? Yeah. I, I'm on Wonder Boy's side with a lot of this stuff, but Wonder Boy needs to keep his mouth shut when it comes to, to you know, Mikey's daughter. Yeah. And, and Mikey shouldn't even be bringing up his daughter in, in any of these conversations. No, I have to defend my daughter. I never brought up my daughter in the first you bring place. bring your daughter up on the air all the time. I never brought her up the way he brought her up. Listen to the show, bro. Off of the airwaves. Your kids have nothing to do with, with this show. Oh, well, who says? How long have you been listening to the show? Okay, as long as they've been down here in D.C. Well, that's not long enough, buddy. She's been with the show <laughs> since she's four. Well, right. we'll take it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Keep, please keep listening, sir. That wasn't a backhanded compliment. I'm sorry. I don't know whether it was or not, but I actually saw you backhand our producer. So, you know. And he left. Yeah, he's gone. Uh, this was his last words. I don't have to stay in here for this. Why didn't he do that at the meeting today when he was getting pummeled verbally? Hey, you're on Run of Fez. Susan. Hey, hey, boys, it's Hefe. Hey, Hefe, how you doing, buddy? The funniest thing I have <laughs> ever seen. So I'm sitting in here, and I just got done hearing a Mikey D slap around Wonder Boy. <laughs> Wonder Boy comes running up to the third floor, sitting down on Speewax's desk saying, Hey, you want to go downstairs? Uh, I'll do this. He offered to dump the show for the rest of the night if I would go downstairs and, I don't know, do whatever. Because he's like, there's no way I'm going down there. There's no way I'm going down there. He actually clinched his fist and threatened to hit me. Oh, oh yeah, boy. So it's a fight. This is what happens in fights. <laughs> So he ran up to the editor's room? Yes, he ran up here and, and said that he would edit content and asked if he could do my job for the rest <laughs> of the night because he's so afraid of going back downstairs. All right, um, Paranoid says, we're going to have to make this a lumberjack match. <laughs> so, yeah, everybody have their belts outside slapping Wonder Boy with it so to keep them inside. <laughs> Push him back in the ring. And then I go, I go, no, man, you got to do your job. And he, he looks at me for a second, and he runs out of here. He's like, we'll figure this out. We'll figure this out. Figure it out how? <laughs> he's, figure the, out. he's the producer. He's supposed to be in here producing the damn show. All right, boys, I got to edit. See All right, see you later. Yeah. All right, I'll try to send a couple words your way. I got to edit. Like he's got a quota. 
just bizarre. Wonder Boy is probably going to try to have him edit out the uh, slapping. Yeah. <laughs> and the shoving. You know what? I don't know whether you've ever mistakenly grabbed a woman real quick, but how fast they start to bruise up. That's what happened to Wonder Boy's neck. <laughs> it got that thing of, oh, come on, it's not as bad as your, your bruises are acting. It, uh, it uh, looked like uh, Kane when he grabbed Linda McMahon. Remember, she had the big, crazy glove hickey across her neck. I'm going to have to go put makeup on his neck. <laughs> Yeah, wait till tomorrow. He'll have. Or they'll take him from us. All right, Wonder Boy's in the line. Oh, jeez. Wonder Boy, where were you? Uh, right now, I'm upstairs. I'm not going to stay in the studio if this guy's going to come in and try and sucker punch me because he the can't sucker win punch you. You saw me coming after you. No, I turned because I. You heard turned. It doesn't mean I see you. It's a sneak attack. You why saw I me walk in. There's at least. 10, 15 feet before I got to you from the door. Look, you're a wimp, and you know you're not going to yeah. win tomorrow, so you're trying to come in tonight and, sure. and get an advantage. Sure, see, now that I'm here, you have to hide, right? Uh, no, you see, it's, it's easier being in here when I'm in New York, right? Yeah. 300 miles away. It's easier to say stuff then, huh? I'll say anything I want to you. Don't worry about well, that. Say no, right come now. on down. What were you saying about him and his kid? I'll come upstairs and beat you up. You're not coming upstairs to beat me up. I'm saying that he pushes his kid, and a perfect example is bringing a child's report card to be displayed in public. Only a maniac would do that. Well, why would you, why would you wor worry about that, Wonder Boy? Because why don't you come down here and confront him? No, because I'm not going to sit here and let him sucker punch me before the fight tomorrow night. I'm going to fight him when it's fair and when it's equal. Wonder Boy, you're the producer of this show. You've got to be walking point for us. You can't suddenly give up and leave. <laughs> Isn't it nice to know how well we're protected? I know. <laughs> that our producer's willing to jump on a bullet for us? I can't, but no, the, no. Uh, any other situation, it would make sense. With this guy, I'm here. I'm right in front of you. Why are we waiting to do this tomorrow? <laughs> I'm right in front of you. Why are we waiting to do this tomorrow? We found them. <laughs> we're going to wait. We're doing it tomorrow. The call's coming from inside the no, building. No, I want you to get out of here. No, I'm not going to get out of here. Get out of here. Come on. Come on. Get out of here. No. You want me to call the cops? Call the cops. Call the get cops. Get out of here. Just back up. We're going to do this tomorrow. Cops. We're going to do this tomorrow, Mikey. Call We're not cops. doing tonight. Oh, I can hear things on my desk getting knocked over. <gasps> the phone went dead. <laughs> There's no place to hide. Where was he, Dubs? He was in uh, your guys' office with the door closed. That's just how, how stupid he is to stay in the building. He's Mike. demanding that Alan installs a panic room. Mike. Any room he's in is a panic room. Mikey D went in there like Terminator and just kicked the door. He didn't even bother opening. He just kicked it. <laughs> and then again, his tune changed. What are you doing in here? No, we will do this tomorrow. Why don't we just do it tomorrow? Oh, they better be first. You know, they're going to have to be first. <laughs> oh, God. Mikey is ticked at him. Just stupid. It's very unmasculine. And unprofessional. There's a radio show going on. All right, here's Mikey back. Hey, uh, Don, you're on Hey, Hey, how you doing, man? Yeah. Hey, I just wanted to uh, comment on all this, man. Mike, Mikey D is going to crush Wonder Boy. Well, it's Wonder already kind of happened like twice. He's so hard when Mikey's not around. When Mikey comes in there, he acts like a little girl. I can't can. wait till tomorrow when I see Wonder Boy get his, get his skull crushed in. I hate Wonder Boy so so much, and just to see him get hurt is going to be worth every everything. M Mikey D, I'm behind you 100. percent Thanks, man. Whatever everything he said about your daughter is so wrong. And I just hope you kill him. I just hope you destroy him. I will. We'll see you dream tomorrow night on Oakey Street. All right, 866-277-4969. I don't know where Wonder Boy is in the building now. Or What happened, the last thing? He was on the phone in the office, and I oh, knocked him down. Yeah, he wants to call the police on me now. Oh, we got to leave the police out of this. Wonder Boy, I know you're listening. Do not call the police. Baby. He's a punk. He's got to hide. Hide in the closet, Wonder Boy. That's the first place you'll look. By the way, you're going to get seven minutes in heaven with this chick. All right. If you don't need all seven, I'm coming in for the final. You could take, you could take three and a half. <laughs> Let's split it. Wow. Oh, that's more than I need. Trust me when I tell you it's more than I need. <laughs>
It happens tomorrow night at Dream. You want to see this, people. You want to be there and spend St. Patrick's Day night with us watching the fights and drinking. Here's uh, April. You're on the air. Hey, I think personally both of these guys are totally obnoxious, and I don't really care who wins. Mm -hmm. But to have someone come in when you're working and threaten you and physically abuse you like that, you guys need to, like, control the situation and kick his ass out. Really? Well, I mean, Wonder Boy had all this other time to talk, and now it's basically Mikey's time to talk. Yeah, but, I mean, he's working. You're wondering why, like, he's leaving. Like, you shouldn't have to work in a bank like that. If, like, if you're working in a bank, like you said. You know what? That's a good point. Uh, it's, if it's this a, does go to court, yeah. Chris and I are going to look like we run the shoddiest ship in the ocean. <laughs> it's going to look like a nut house, Fizzy. Right. And you said, like, if he's working at a bank and someone came in, like, you'd call security. Like, you shouldn't have to work under those conditions. We don't have security. He, he couldn't work at a bank, and he right, can hardly saying, work here, like, April. He, he can hardly right, work well, here. So don't worry job, about it. What? This what is his job? biggest. This is his biggest thing that he's ever done. Run away and lock himself like in the I office. Like I said, I think both of you are obnoxious, but no one should have to work under those conditions where someone just comes in and puts your hand around your throat. Like that's abuse. You can get sued for that. Like, so what? He's abused okay, my okay. daughter. He's abused my wife. Oh, Listen to the on. show, you April. Had fair shot. You have a venue set up. I never said purpose. anything about his family or his Who girlfriend. Cares? You should have. You both have, have, have a perfect venue tomorrow. To That's a good this. point. That and is a good point, in, Mikey. You're coming in early while he's working on the clock and physically abusing him. Like, get some control of yourself. No, there's no control. I'm a savage. You I will say tomorrow. this, Mikey. You took your daughter's report card and you rubbed it in his face. That's right. And that's going to look crazy if we all go to court. I've never seen that before, and I think the worst part is we interrupted Wendell's facial. I, my, uh, oh, with all the right. noise. My problem is this, Fezzi, now that the court thing has come up. I don't know how I'm going to be able to defend my position <laughs> of really going... Because I was laughing when he kicked in the office door, I guess. <laughs> As all the witnesses take the stand, Wendell's going to have to say, Your Honor, I didn't see anything. I had cucumbers over my eyes. All right, El Jefe, while you're editing out the show tonight, edit all my laughs out. So it doesn't seem like I'm happy with anybody getting a report card. And, and edit this in. Mikey, take that report card out of his face now. I demand it. Fez, let go of his belt. You're pulling his pants down. <laughs> edit those things in. Hey! I don't need another one of those charges on my rap sheet. All right, and, uh, and edit, in, edit in this part. Hi, I'm Fez, and I'm going to gay rape him. <laughs> your Honor, that is not my voice. I do have your voice down. I mean, it sounds just like you. All right, I don't know where Wonder Boy is now. Oh, he's hiding. He's probably in the bathroom cowering in the stall. All right, kind of a weird night tonight. Uh, Mikey D showed up a day early, came after Wonder Boy. Um, Wonder Boy went somewhere, I guess back to our office. <clears throat> Mikey D went and kicked the door in there and chased them out. So we can't find the Wonder Boy. But look who's here now and dressed in a nurse's costume as we were planning earlier uh, to have Wonder Boy's girlfriend in to do like a little... Se nurse Skellington. To do a little sexy uh, nurse show for us. Uh, Wonder Boy not around, Skell. I nurse Skellington. I can, I can hold my own. <laughs> now, um, well, That's tomorrow... Good. She looks good. Get ready to pucker up. Wow. Now, the way we have this fight uh, set up, if you, if your boyfriend loses, you're going to be Mike uh, making out with uh, Mikey... Also, Wonder Boy took it up a notch and said seven minutes in heaven. I don't know whether you played that game when you were younger in school. No. Yeah. I'm familiar with it. It's basically, it was a neighborhood game where <laughs> you'd have to get locked in the closet. I don't want to be locked in the closet with anybody. I wasn't I, aware of this. Yeah, well, that's your boyfriend. <laughs> it's not us, but... Yeah, he came up with that tonight. Yeah, we do have to do it. So get ready. Seven oh, minutes no, with me. I don't think so. It's too I don't late, think honey. So. We're used to his girlfriend's backing out, but this time he guarantees that you would not. Well, Do I'm you... not going to be winding up in the closet because he's going to win. Mm. That's the one thing that you guys aren't aware of. You like to wake up. You had a dream. You thought no, uh, no. you were married. You thought you were with somebody else. And that you were a nurse. Yeah. Well, the outfit's uh, going to come in handy for him tomorrow. Once you, once no, I'm actually, I'm Nurse Skeleton. I am a registered nurse, registered of Kevorkian Medicine. Are you? Oh, they uh, kill him. They might as well kill him. No, Wait, it's actually... Put him out of his right misery. Here. Yeah, right. right. This is really bizarre. We have Wonder Boy's girlfriend here <laughs> talking smack to Mikey, and no Wonder Boy. 
And she has more balls than he does. That's for sure. Well, we'll find out there in seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> seven minutes in heaven. Just not seven minutes. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I found my way starting the beginning of this year. Mikey, you're just clocking her. You're just staring at her the whole time she talks. I'm just gonna, just picturing I how it's going to be to hang out with this mom. I'm going to wind up punching him because I can't. Are you that him. mad at him? Look it's at not, it's not look at anger. The it's just I have an urge to punch people. I have a bad, bad Why? Because reputation you're, you're of punching people. It has nothing to do with my boyfriend. Of it course has to, it does. I have to look at you. Look at look me. At you. Look at you. You're gross. <laughs> look at your hair. You can't even see your face. There's nothing behind it. You're you don't have to see my face. You're short. Just feel my you're tongue. Short. Feel my tongue oh my tomorrow. God. <laughs> so Bye maybe God. I'll give you a hickey. Bite it off. So you won't be anywhere thing. near anywhere. I'll wear the spike collar. I'll wear everything spiked. I have a spike corset. I, spike. You're a tough chick. You're standing up to Mikey in a way that your boyfriend couldn't do. And you really can't. I mean, even if Wonder Boy wasn't involved here, you can't stand Mikey. I can see it in your face. He's just a He's gross person. to you. <laughs> Not my and you had favorite. checked him out online before you met him tonight, right? He, yeah, I don't know the like the characters or the people of the show. I wasn't that familiar with it, you know. Mikey's thing is he's really in that like '80s uh, kind of glam rock. He, you know, he's into poison. Yeah, probably still in diapers at that point. Oh, oh. hi, Dad. Ah, uh, sure. Oh, I, I, I hope you like incest because tomorrow <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna feel your I father's tongue down your throat. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, this is uncomfortable tonight. Skellington, if your man loses, are you going to make out with this person who you can't even stand his whole 80s glam rock He's look? He's not going to lose. But if he does. If by some. Right, the man that you. A cool chance that he loses right, the bet is a I, bet. I want you to know something. The man that you said has. Stands... I'll put on the gloves if he loses. All right. The man that you said can't lose. I only hit one girl, uh, you know, per fight. So let me oh, hit him oh, first. Oh, oh. Abby Wonder now, Boy, then. The man oh. that you're betting on that can't lose, I just saw him uh, a few minutes ago get slapped in the face with a first grade report card, get his neck grabbed. Yeah, well, I don't have to take this. I'm running. He hit one of the offices. Because he's a gentleman. He's doing a gentleman <laughs> fight. He's not going to sit here in the studio. I, I, the studio apart. So it's Jim Corbett time. It's gentleman Jim uh, Jim Corbett. They're taking it out into the ring. Yeah. This is not the place to do it. You do it in the ring. Is that what they call the Marcus of Queensberry rules? Well, there's a queen in there. I don't know if there's any Marcus, though. I'd say Marcus Hook. That's where I learned to fight. The Marcus Hook of Queensberry rules. I, Mikey, now you seem like you're angry with her because she called you uh, she an eighty skank. She, she called you an eighty skank well, rock. Fun. Literally every day you're calling me pin cushion. Yeah. No, I called you pin cushion one day. <laughs> no, once. it's been several times. No, it's been several once. Several times. You know you can't. Listen to you. You even whine back okay. and forth. You're like a kid. Say the truth. That's you're like you a learn. Kid. You learn. I have better really... conversations with my brother. Yeah, well, you learn really well from. Why you guys just kiss each other on the cheek? No. Just to get a taste. Yeah, why don't you just find out how it's going to be tomorrow? Don't touch me. I will punch you. No, would you say it looks more like Poison E.O. or are you thinking Twisted Sister? Because you're... I, Twisted Sister. You know, I'm thinking Glam, Fezzy, and she's saying Hideous. And is that only because Wonder Boy is your, is no, your man? He's, he's totally not my type. He's furry and not my type. He has long hair. Not furry, though. I, actually, I do like guys with long hairs, but his is, like, unkempt and... But your boyfriend is going with a 70s punk look. Yeah, maybe That's you're not... Green. Maybe you're not com uh, familiar with Billy Squire and that whole stroke thing. But it was very big at one time. Hair of himself. At least it looks like he washes his hair. Did you ever see his teeth? Yes, I have. Yeah, it's it. yellow. You know? It happens to some people. Oh, yeah, that happens. Mental problem. You no, know, it's, it's called brushing. He brushes. Yeah, I, I bet sure he does. He brushes every morning. He yeah, does well, brush. Make sure you brush tomorrow. I can't I, believe it's broken down to this. <laughs> now, uh, Mikey, I don't want... And other I, things we're discussing cheap. That's great. I mean, I think it's bad that she has to defend her man, but uh, in a way, I think it, it just goes to show what a great chick that he has. Well, at least she backs him up and doesn't run away from anybody, you know? Not like Wonder Boy running away, hiding in a... 
in, a, in an office. He's not going to take it out in the studio here. Look at this place. You guys are going to knock stuff over. He's waiting for the ring because he wants to give everybody a show. Okay. I, like, I don't want to tear you, you apart just, in here and have nothing like that. You anymore. just dress I like that, baby, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's all. So you're not disappointed, Mikey, meeting Skellington. Not at all. I'm, I can't wait to shove my tongue down her throat. Did you want to uh, apologize for calling her pincushion face? No, because she does have, you know, she does have. I have two piercings in my face. How does that make me And pin your tongue. Pushing? Oh, look, you see that. Yes, I do. Oh, that's nice. Okay. You know, how many piercings do you have? 16? Well, my ears and... Okay. And you're a diabetic? How, how, yes. How does that happen that you could do that? I thought that diabetics... have nothing to do really? with having holes in your body. It okay. has to do with your diet. They're not piercing her with a candy cane or anything. Exactly. I didn't think that you, you could get pierced. You have to your blood sugar. It's about watching your health. As long as I continue to poke myself with a lancet. Uh, we got Wonder Boy back on the phone. Wonder oh, Boy. Oh, boy. Uh, Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy, you there? Yeah. You are not getting paid for the last two and a half hours of this show. No, because there's a maniac making a hostile work environment is, is something that Wonder I Wonder Boy, your girlfriend is here protecting you in the hostile work environment. That's because Mikey's not going to uh, do anything uh, foolish to her. Mikey is... Mikey, the, my problem with you is you're talking to her, talking about what a dad is going to do to her. That's exactly the thing that is wrong with you. You know that? She brought it up. I didn't bring it up one day. But boy. for you to be able to go, look, that's what, uh, hey, a dad will make out with a kid. She that's called exactly me dad. The, the she called me dad. Wake up. Did I punch you that hard that you can't hear? No, you didn't punch me at all. I punched you in the office. Mikey, I'm telling you, tomorrow night I am going to yeah. kill you. I'm not going to do it tonight keep, keep because dreaming. this, for me, is a job. I'm not going to do something stupid that gets myself in trouble. But tomorrow night I'm going to punch your face off. I can't wait. Wonder Boy, you should come I'm, down here. You're in trouble all the time. I feel almost fired you again today. You know, I, I'm not going to sit in the studio with this guy keep trying to sneak well, your girlfriend is here. Yeah, hide behind her. No, I'm not hiding behind anybody, Mikey, just because she's smarter than you are. She's also she's taller than you are. Anybody. You're not in the room. No, there's no, um, no, I'm not hiding behind anybody, Mikey. She is there. And she Where are you? You're hiding in an office? Where are you? I'm in the office. Hiding. In our office or in one of them? Keep Wait. talking, Ronnie. I've got three digits. <laughs> I'm in... Well, uh, why don't we send uh, Mikey up there with an axe, like he's Jack Nicholson in The Shining? <laughs> no, Mikey is, does not need to come up here. If Mikey wants to come in and talk about top of he can do it right from where he is. That's fine, Mikey. If you want your time, that's fine. Come in and talk all you want. But... Tomorrow night, I'm going to kick your ass. I can't wait. You, you try to do that. Uh, yeah, there's no sense in talking about if you're going to be up there. Yeah, it's I mean, just, you're hiding. Yeah. Talk. And Skellington didn't know anything about the seven minutes in heaven. Oh, yeah, let's That's get back nice. to that. Hey, uh, Wonder Boy? Yeah. She's not very comfortable with seven minutes in heaven. No, she knows I'm going to win. I, I didn't get a chance to talk to her, with her about it ahead of time, but it's not going to matter. I'm going to beat Mikey's ass, so it's not going to be a problem. Wonder Boy... If you lose, do you expect her to get in the closet with Mikey for seven full minutes? That's not a problem. She's not going to have to worry about it. So you're saying yes to that? Yeah. Well, Skellington, it's me Skellington, and you. how do you like that? I mean, I'm, all kidding aside, this is your man, and he's telling you... He's confident, and he knows he's going to win. And I have trust in him, and I am confident in him that he is going to win. My confidence is going to be thrown out the door. All right, hold on, Wonder Boy. Here's a big day, big day, and I don't mean Dallas, you're around Fez. What's up, buddy? Hey, it's buddy. 804 checking in. Hoo ah! Hoo ah! So, what would be a puss here? Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, you should pull his pants down and check to make sure he's got the All right, right all right. <laughs> I don't, you know, you know what we're dealing with now. <laughs> you know what we're dealing we're with. We're in a climate controlled environment. Me, me, you're around Fez. Hey, buddy. Hey, darling, darling. How you doing? Cool. What can we do for you, Mimi? I don't know. I have to say this is the funniest thing. I was driving home from work, and I actually had to hold the wheel. <laughs> I was I was crying. Right, what this part was... made you happiest? Um, I guess when Mikey D found him in the room. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> was that was a lot of joy. I was, I was just rolling. I was, and then filling the report card, having him bust <laughs> in there like that. It was so shocking. It was that... shocking to me too, and I don't know if I said anything. When Mikey I, came in the room. I wasn't 
expecting it. And I just I just started crying. And I'm not a huge laugher. you got to do something yeah. to really make me laugh. And I am rolling. But now I'm mad after being on hold for like 15 minutes listening to Mikey D talk. What is the age difference between these two? Uh, what is there, like 13, 14 years, right, Mikey? You got on them? Yeah. Maybe yeah, it sounds more. like Mikey's had a lot more time to build up all this anger that he's got. No, it's just every night when he's calling my wife names and my kid names. He's had a lot more time to get old and decrepit. You oh, you're ragging on him for doing that. He didn't get How mad at him Skellington? when he was born. What, you How old are you, Skellington? Well, you're sitting here picking up on his wait, girlfriend. Wait 10 more years, sweetheart. No, I'm just saying you're picking, here, picking on his girlfriend. And lagging on her piercings and about being a diabetic, which any moron would know that it's a blood sugar thing, that piercings aren't going to have any problem with any type of a diabetic person. Thank you. What about infections? Yeah. Anybody can get infections from piercings. As it's long going as to, it's same, but if you have a health to, issue, as long as you take care of yourself issue, and you monitor. You monitor your blood sugar. But if something went bad. Proper, it, if you eat the proper food, then... You know, if you're going to a dirty tattoo parlor and having people like Mikey D put your piercings in for you, <laughs> then you can get an infection. But otherwise, then I, I don't see that there was a problem. I was kind of leaning towards Mikey D. Don't lean towards me. I don't need you. Get lost. <laughs> you're so angry. Why yeah, are you you're so an angry, angry guy, Mikey. You're an you're angry guy. Are. Why are you, you know so what? This is, this is so 2004 because it's such a heel versus heel match. You can't really get comfortable <laughs> cheering for anybody in this fight. No, you can't. I mean, he's. I'm going more with the Twisted Sister for him than the Motley Crew with the glam rock because I love the 80s I glam rock. I couldn't care less. I, Mikey, really, do you consider yourself more Motley Crew? Poison or Twisted Sister? I think a combination of, both, of all three. But I'm getting really uncomfortable with you being put out there now as the Twisted Sister guy. Good. Let me be Twisted Sister. I don't care. D. Snyder. Like, he's a great guy. Can you Next, let me go on your slave. Guys, reach over and lift up Mikey D's lip and tell me what his teeth look like. Smile for me, Mikey. They're, uh, they're perfect. Are they really? <laughs> they're perfect and completely white. Good dental hygiene. That's not too bad. All right. Thank you very much, uh, maybe. That's a Broadway smile I'm looking at. And, and nice breath, too. It's a very uncomfortable night all the way around. You know, tomorrow's the big night of the fight. We thought tonight we'd just be sitting around. We got nice people in the other room giving uh, Wonder Boy. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm so weirded out. Wendell, a nice makeover. Here's uh, Perry Noid. Perry, how you doing, buddy? We haven't talked to you in a while. Hey, what's going on, Ryan and Fez? I can't wait for tomorrow, man. I'm psyched. I'm already camped out in front of Dream. I'm waiting for the show to <laughs> You don't have to do that. <laughs> just come in tomorrow night. Oh. You're just camping out for no reason. Oh, you, no, we're going to have a party tonight. It, it's just, we're, we're excited about it. Mikey D, I love the guy, but I'm afraid Wonder Boy's got a plan, brother. You're going with the WB Noid? I do. I mean, the guy put his hand through a window on a car. That's pretty He didn't put his hands. He used the bat, dumbass. Hey, but the strength he had. You're not getting along with anyone. My strength. I, love you. I could swing the bat and crack your head open, Perry Noid. That's pretty easy, you know? I've, I've been where you are. I've seen you fight. Yeah. Yeah, well, you saw me fight two years ago. See me tomorrow. I'm definitely going to be there, Mike. Yeah, okay. I, I hope nobody gets hurt, but I, I'm telling you, Wonder Boy's got a rage in him that I've never, you know, I've never seen him like this, man. He's very confident. Yeah, the rage of running away and hiding in a closet. He's outsmarting you. Yeah, he's outsmarting you. You already sound winded. I'm winded? Out of that little thing that you went through there. I'm winded. You sounded Did little... you hear him punch the bag the other day? He couldn't even talk for, for three minutes afterwards. I'm going with Wonder Boy. Go with Wonder Boy, Perry Nord. I don't care. In three. You're a little tired from the drive. You're man. a punk. I'll punch <laughs> you out, too. You've been, you've been partying. You've driven down for four hours. You're a little worn Seven out. Seven hours, stupid. I've been through now this you're before. Angry. All right, we'll talk to you later. Yeah, just buddy. like I was told that I was going to be a coward and not show up. Yeah, I right. showed up. All right, Wonder Boy, would you come back down here? No, I'm not going to come back down there. Cause what <laughs> no, <might> be... no. <laughs> no, because what he's going to try to do is he's going to try to do something that's going to get me fired at my job. Because no, I have you responsibilities, won't. not like him. Listen, you're going to get fired anyhow. doesn't matter. It's like Joni on Happy Days. No, that my no, not okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> You're not going to come here and try to get me in trouble at work. You send... You, you, do, you, 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 get, you get yourself in trouble at work. Don't worry about that, all right? Yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, all you got to worry about is... No, no, like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not no gonna, hide. I'm not going to have you guys argue all night. Mikey, can we try this with you once? 
Can we do the hair? Can we change the clothes around? And then nobody's going to tease you anymore. No, I no, I don't want to do that, Ron. Sorry, man. Don't it's without holes in them. Just a relaxing treatment for the hair. Good deep conditioning. You know, you know, Skellington, you don't know what happened to me where I was, you know, I got all wet today with the rain and the snow coming down here. I got here. by lightning. And, you know, that's why it's frizzy. So don't don't talk, okay? You've never met uh, me before. So shut up. No, I'm oh, not. Man. Now I'm going to punch you in the face. I know. Go for it. Go for it. Just stay on your side of the room. All right. All right, easy, 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 easy. What well, step in? Would you step? Wendell's got his new clothes on. Don't yeah. step in. Dubs, J uh, Dubs, don't step in between Wendell and them. Come here, come here, you guys. All right, Mikey, let Wendell, go of each other. Stop it, both of you. Come on over. Come on over, Wonder Boy. All right, Mike, Mike. All right, Mikey. let go of each other. Not here, not, here, not now. What? Come on, Wonder Boy, come in. And I take Mikey out. Dubs. Take Mikey out. Mikey, go out because this all happens tomorrow. No. You were gone all night. Come on, garbage. Sit down. Hey, all right. Hey. All right, that's. Get out. All right, they're smacking each other, and I'm really worried that's going to be the girl fight. I didn't see a lot of what I would call man hitting there in the corner. Not a lot of what I would call man hitting. You think at first bout? I'm thinking maybe even dark. You want to go first bout, Mikey? Wonder Boy, you came back in. You had a girl fight. Did you see Wendell? By the way, he looks fantastic. Yeah, actually, I didn't have any idea who it was. Wow. Did it, Wendell? I didn't uh, know who it was. Sorry, there's more. Where are you getting the cigars from? I don't know. It was taped to my door. Somebody likes me. Well, somebody taped one to my door. Wow, you look unbelievable. I had no idea who it was. Did you just and get punched there, Wonder Boy? Yeah. How did it feel? Like, I got hit by a girl. <laughs> Seriously? Like, a girl got mad that someone moved her purse and swung it at me. <laughs> so you felt like you got hit with the purse. <laughs> yeah, but like a really small, soft one. I saw you guys going out in the corner over there, and I got to tell you, I wasn't impressed. It looked... He's a cis. I've told you guys the whole time. He's a femme. Well, why were you hiding upstairs? Because just because he's a femme does not mean I'm going to sit down here and let him do something that's going to get me in trouble at my job. What's I have that? responsibility. What happened when he told your girl to shut up? Yeah, he's not going to talk disrespectfully to her. He did so this all isn't just, This isn't just some silly stripper I found somewhere. This is a nice girl. Can I tell you something? This is a fantastic girl. I had no idea her character until tonight. The way she defended you, the way she stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, she's like a young lioness. I'm so impressed with her. She's fiercely loyal. And she carries a blanket? I want to see her on one of those Disney things where the young lioness goes out and brings back food <laughs> for the cub that's hiding up in the office. We've always said that. She's too good for you, Wonder Boy. Clearly she is. And it means I lot. said the color TV was too good for you. I think you could do it a lot less in your life. I can't believe uh, Mikey here tonight. It's just insane. If I wasn't, if I didn't know Mikey, I, I'd say this new guy's a maniac. Yeah, he uh, shoved monster. He uh, wiped his daughter's report card in Wonder Boy's face. Then they just went into the cart wall now. And not to mention all the things he said to Skellington all night. And with every caller. Mikey, you look all upset over there. Oh, no, I'm fine. Is because of what took place in the corner? No. Wonder Boy's wiry. Yeah, he's wiry. We'll see you tomorrow. Fezzy, what's your prediction? No, right here in front of both of them. What's your prediction? My prediction is Mikey D. My prediction, Wonder Boy goes three rounds and wins this thing. And I even tell you guys, there's going to be real judges there, too. So it won't be like we can fix it. When I found that out, when I saw just what, what took place in the corner, I'm a little nervous right now. We have to put the order of this event in, in place. Wonder Boy could fight four fights, Fezzi, from what I saw tonight. He could fight four different fights. <laughs> from under the desk? You saw what happened in that corner. Mikey hit him with everything he had, and it didn't shake him. I also it's... saw him almost eat a report card tonight. That was earlier. That was earlier. What's changed? L 
what just took place in the corner when Mikey hit him with everything he had and it wasn't enough. Dubs, you were standing there. Were there any punches that shocked you or surprised you? I was shocked there were punches. Yeah. But no, not really. Could anybody get knocked out tomorrow? Yeah, anything can happen. I'm doubting that that, that, that uh, match will be a knockout. I'm that I'm doubting it. And Dubs, when you're sent in to break it up, uh, it wasn't Wendell that we needed you to push back. Well, I was pushing back <laughs> so I could get a mic over there, but then I figured, you know, maybe I should break him up first. <laughs> Wonderboy, what's your prediction? Second round knockout. Wonderboy, you're not going to knock anybody. Guarantee. It's going to go the distance. It's going to be dull. And I'm thinking because you're faster and you're moving around, you've got the better legs here, that you're going to win this thing on points. That's all. It's just on points. I'm knocking his ass out. <laughs> now you're talking crazy. I wish. Maybe he did get hit. I, Fezzi, you saw. I saw him take the full hit, and I didn't see him go down. Why are you mad, Mikey? I'm just saying what I saw. Now you're mad in the corner. Say what you want to say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow. Fezzi, the next two fighters that are coming in here, and we'll be going at it in just a little while. Mikey D. Against our producer, Wonder Boy. Mikey D, in your opinion, how did all this start? Um, it basically all started when uh, Wonder Boy called my wife a skank. Wonder Boy, did you feel that's when it started? When did it start? No, it started when Mikey had to lie and, and try to ruin my job by talking to my boss and come up with lies about me. Constantly called the show trying to break my balls and saying what a bad job I'm doing. Did you go around him to his boss, Cameron? Yes, I did. Why would you do that, Mikey? Uh, that was long before your wife was called a skank. I um, wanted to speak to um, to Cam. I wanted to speak to him. I mean, we have a... Yeah, but it was about something that Wonder Boy told you no to. You went over Wonder Boy's head, went directly to Cameron. Uh, yep. Because you're a backstabber, and that's why this is going on. And okay. tonight I'm going to shut your mouth. Yeah, I'm going to well, shut your backstabber mouth. I want, you to, I want to see that. Man to man, before this happens, you feel like you need to apologize to Wonder Boy. Absolutely not. Wonder Boy, do you want to apologize for calling his wife a skank? No. I stand by what I said. Loser has to let his girlfriend make out with the other guy. That's a tough one, Fez. Yeah, and last night when things started to get nuts on the Ron and Fez show, it was Wonder Boy who at first put up seven minutes in heaven with his girlfriend, Skellington. Seven minutes in heaven. They're actually throwing their chicks around, Fezzy, like they were gambling with them. Uh, Mikey D, what is your biggest problem with Wonder Boy as a producer? He stinks. He stinks at everything that he does. Doesn't do anything right. I can't argue with that. All right, uh, both of you guys have to know this. The other fighters, the other two fights, have, re have actually referred to your fight as foxy boxing. That's because I'm fighting a long-haired... Easy. Just do me a favor and take it easy for a second. How does that make you two feel, though? Do you feel like you're the weak link in this? I don't feel like I'm a weak link. No, not at all, because I'm going to beat your ass, so there's going to be no foxy about it. It's going to just be me whipping your ass. I think it's going to be me whipping the girl of the match, which is you. You're a long-haired, fag-looking guy, and you're going to call me a girl? You're the reason I... why people are saying we're foxy boxing, because you, you femme. All right, you want to watch your fezzes here, and some of that stuff hurts. <laughs> Fezzy, it all starts in just a few moments. In just a few moments, we will be in the club in Dream and kicking off the Saint. Pat Spat, St. Patrick's Day. You can drink with us. You can watch the fights with us right here at 1350 Oakey Street, Northeast in D.C. Free sh uh, shuttle service coming from Union Station. Wonderboy, how long is your fight against Mikey D going to go? Two rounds. I'm knocking him out. Second round. Do, can you tell us what punch you're going to be using to knock him out? Uh, it'll be a right. Right. A right Probably hand. A, a, a right cross. Right cross. Mikey D, what's your prediction? First round knockout. And call the punch. Mm, it's be a combination. It'll a combination be with your sissy hands. It'll okay. be slapping. That's what you're going to do. Okay, it'll be slapping. It'll be slapping when... Uh... You know, slapping's not a punch, right, sissy? Yeah, I know. I know. You can call me all the names you want. You just wait till a little while later and when I'm knocking you out in the first you round. You know, you wonder why you keep talking about Mikey D's hair. What have you done to your hair tonight here at Dream? My hair is green for St. Patrick's Day, a little luck of the Irish. It's a green mohawk. It does look nice, though. I'll give him that much. Yeah, I'll be doing a jig on you, just like the Irish. White people are so scared of black people. There you have it, Fezzi. These two, the ones the other fighters referred to as Foxy Boxing, 
and I'm hoping they shock the world tonight. Do you think you guys think your fight is going to be the fight of the night? Guaranteed. Yeah. Well, they finally agreed on something. Except the two of them, they each think they're going to knock the other one out. These guys are ticked at each other. I haven't picked that up from this interview, but I'm going to believe you, Fez. I'm going to hope that the kind of most laid-back interview of the night becomes the best fight of the night. That they're saving it for the ring in just a few moments, just a few minutes away here at Dream. Mikey just can't get over that defeated feeling knowing that he's going to be laying on his back in a couple of minutes counting lights. I'm just saving my energy, Wonder Boy. You just wait. I'm just saving, saving my energy. energy. For what? It's not going to take a lot of energy to lay on your back. No, it's not going to take a lot of energy for me to knock you out. Let's get it started, Fezzy. It's the main event. Here we go. We will bring them to the ring. Starting off, weighing in at 169 pounds. Hailing. From Broadway, New York City. Here comes the Red Rocker, Mikey D. And there for the Golden Great. The Golden Great comes to the ring. Weighing in at 165 pounds. All right, Fezzi, uh, I was just told we cannot bring the uh, fighters to the ring until we have the referee present. Oh, we the lost Sam. Must okay. Be present at all times. Sam's at the buffet in the in the oh, you're, in the yeah, green you're room. Yeah, you're gonna be the referee. Okay. We don't always know all the boxing commission stuff, so thank you very much for uh, pointing that out. I think we were also told never start the event with the shark song, too. I know. Well, you know, we we're live on the, the rules tonight. I'm not going to lie to you. We live on. All right, Fezzy, go ahead and bring up the next. We're ready to go. Okay, we're all set? Yeah, he's going to be the referee. Okay, weighing in at 165 pounds. fighting for it's Wonder Boy's girlfriend Skellington if Wonder if Mikey D wins this he gets to make out with Skellington let's bring Skellington into the ring now help her into the ring here she is let's hear it for Skellington this is what's on the line guys They love her. Big Pens doesn't have that much ink, Ronnie. All right, Fez. She has a few tattoos. I'm not going to lie to you. She has a few tattoos. A few? It's a billboard just came through. All right. There's quite a few. Quite a few tattoos. David will be serving as our referee for this bout from the Potomac Valley Association of USA Boxing. Also a reminder, our judges, Cecilia. Let's hear for the judges who came out here tonight. And Tawana. Tawana. And Curtis, who will be working as a judge and timekeeper. These guys have done a fantastic job for us tonight. Completely professional. I think we've all learned something about the sport of boxing, Fez. We had a chance to be on the inside tonight. And they just want to let everyone know that they're going to be in Palmer Park this Saturday for Golden Gloves. Real amateur boxing featuring Sugar Ray Leonard is going to be there this weekend. Wow, fantastic, Fez. So that's in Palmer Park if you want to check it out this Saturday. This will be it, Fezzy. This is the headlining event. Tonight, 
You can feel the excitement in the room. Guys, let's hear from him before we start. Who's picking the Wonder Boy? Who's taking Mikey D? A boo is just as loud as a cheer. It counts just as much. How? All right, Fezzy. About to open this one up, you can feel the excitement of the headlining event of the night. There's the bell. Mikey D walks into a right from Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy is dropping Mikey D. Wonder Boy has him in the corner and has whipped his ass. Mikey D in serious trouble. He's in is he taking flurry. an eight count there? Mikey D in huge trouble. Oh, Mikey D. Mikey D is getting smashed. Wonder Boy. Referee breaking it up, and Wonder Boy dominating, dominating this. Mikey D covering up, and just all Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy shot after shot. Oh, and actually threw him down. Wonder, Wonder Boy, Boy take, threw him to the ground, Fez. Taking a victory lap. Wonder Boy could end up being disqualified. He's a bit reckless out there. Is Mikey D taking shot after shot after shot? It's not even pretty. That's the end of the first round. There's the first round, Roddy. The bell rings. That's the end of the first round. I gotta tell you, I'm shocked. It's been all Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy right out of the gate in a flurry on Mikey D. Mikey's been on his bicycle the whole time. Says when he's on the bicycle, when he's not just covering up. What is he doing? Is this a strategy? Or has he just got nothing? I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Is he trying to sucker him in? All I can think is at the last minute, Fez switched places with me, and Fezzy LeJinx has put his bad bet on, on Mikey D. I'm 0-2 already tonight. We... Mikey D, resting in between the round, but i got to tell you, Fez. Mikey D, back up on his feet first in the corner. Wonder Boy, a lot of running around. Is he going to have the gas for the last two rounds? Waiting for that second round, Fezzy. And I got to tell you, I for one am in shock. There goes the bell. And Wonder Boy's coming up. Mikey D landing punch now. Maybe it was a strategy to let him box himself out. A Mikey D hitting Wonder Boy with everything. Wonder Boy coming back now. Mikey D, no doubt about it, Fezzy, was playing some rope and dope. All right, Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy, come on, man. Wonder Boy. He's getting warned again, Ronnie. At one more time, and Wonder Boy will be disqualified, Fez. He pushed him into one of the judges. Keep your head together, Wonder Boy. These guys are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Oh! He's doing hell! He's doing hell! Uh. Uh. What the hell happened? David? Fezzy! What happened? Unbelievable! His corner man that we never met before tonight just threw in the towel. What the hell? Yeah. 
Wonder Boy, I can't understand this. I'm going to tell you the truth. All I wanted was there to be a sincere decision out of this. You're the one who hooked up the boxing commission, and now the guy we never met before, who's Mikey D's corner man, throws in the towel and you win. All he could see is that Mikey was a puss that was getting his ass kicked. <laughs> if he wants to go, we can keep going. You know, I gotta tell you the truth. I would really be fighting this more if I was in like my own neighborhood. But knowing I gotta find a way out of here, I gotta just go along a little bit. Wonder Boy, you getting your gloves back on and finishing this thing? I want to. Now, no. Are we gonna be able to get this going again or not? All right, now they're saying, no, we can't permit them to get knocked out. Let me talk. Let me talk to Mikey D when we get a chance here. I can't believe this ended in a fuster. But there you have it. You have it when you do. Did you? Let me check with the referee. Did you feel like Mikey D was in no position to end this? I felt he could go on, but I'm at the corner, and the corner has a decision, and they made it. All right. The referee says, in his opinion, Mikey D could have went on, but his own corner threw in the towel. There's Mikey D. Come on up. Mikey. Mikey. Alright, Mikey. Here's the problem that you had. You were setting up no kind of defense that entire first round. No, no corner man is going to think. We're all wondering what you were doing out there. I'm trying to make him tired. In the second round, I was hitting him, and he almost got disqualified for hitting me in the back of the head. What am I supposed to do? Fezzi, you look at this. I got to say, I was let down. I wanted this fight to go first. We started well. We started strong. We went into kind of a crappy fight, and we ended the way we all knew, in a smaz. The, the first bout, Spoon left with two black eyes, and that kept going. Who can remember that now, Fez? We're stuck here at the end of the show with two guys that couldn't uh, pull it together. All right, Fezzy. The way we had this set up is that Wonder Boy was going to get to make out with Mikey's chick. Mikey, where is she tonight? Is your chick here? She's not here. She is not in the building. She's not a dream. Sorry. Wonder Boy, what is it? I think the only fair thing there, Mikey, is for you to make out with my stop manager. Hurry! All right, hold on. 
Wonder Boy has something he wants to say. I think the only fair thing is for you to make out with my fat ring man, Harry Elvis. That's a way to pay your bet. I'm not making out with Elvis. I'm All right. The way he said. I don't want to do Wait it, a minute. So Hold on. Oh, we got to make out. <laughs> Mikey D just okay. made out with a heavy Armenian. All right. So it left with a big man kiss, Fuzzy. That's the way we went out tonight. Yeah. This would be the greatest show in Key West. The greatest show in San Francisco. What a schmoz. Hi, right, Fuzzy. That wasn't the bet. The crowd is wanting some sportsmanship. Mikey, what they're asking, will you step up and be a man? And will you take the head shaving? That wasn't the bet. Sorry. Sorry. Mikey D and Wonder Boy, exactly what we would expect from these guys, a cluster F. Ends in a smaz last night. Yeah. As our final bout of the evening. Uh, overall, good time, but I got to tell you, I don't know how we got tied up with whatever we did with the D.C. Boxing Commission, but never in my life did I expect to see the towel come thrown into the ring to end the fight. Mikey D's uh, corner man threw the towel in, and all I could think of is Bret Hart's mom. I can't imagine. I don't even know what happened in real life. I've only seen it in movies. Yeah, he looked like a uh, black Helen Hart throwing that thing in there. Um, I couldn't believe it. I was in the crowd, so all I saw was the towel. Yeah. And I didn't know where it came from, and my first instinct was crawl under the bottom rope and get that towel out of there. All right, here's the most bizarre thing. All right, we have these, the D.C. Boxing Commission. Is that who supplied this group to us? What was it, the, the Potomac Valley Association? Yeah, that, it was the Potomac Valley Association of USA Boxing were the judges, but we got them through the D.C. Boxing Commission. All right, so they give us uh, three judges, two corner men, a referee, and a, an official timekeeper. And it was the most bizarre thing that they couldn't get it through their heads. This is all just for fun. There's no betting on this. It's nobody's going to get any rankings. So they were really attempting to keep it serious. And when they didn't think that Mikey was putting up a good enough fight, they threw the talent. The weird thing is, I was watching the guy who threw the talent. He also was videotaping at the same time. So I what? see him. Yeah, he. Why he's the corner man? He has a videotape, and he's just. Chucking the towel in as he keeps taping. So it's like almost like towel cam. And I wish that maybe I could see that back in slow motion so you could see me screaming, What are you doing? Because immediately the booze start yeah. and everybody was uh, just weirded out on it. So it sounds like he was trying to get on his own video of now, throwing in the towel. All right, now everybody who thinks that maybe these fights weren't legit. I will tell you, if Fez and I were going to WWE this thing, we would have had a much better ending. That was a WCW ending if I ever saw one. <laughs> we would have went bigger than that. Here's Bob. Bob, you're on Fez. Hey, guys, listen. Uh, I was listening to the fight last night on the radio. I couldn't make it down there, but I think Mikey D should have gotten uh, worse than he did because he said he was going to get... He was going to knock Wonder Boy out in the first. I got all the respect in the world for Wonder Boy. Not only did he not knock Wonder Boy out in the first, I don't think Mikey even attempted to throw a punch in that first round, Fez. I was literally sitting there just going, I don't know whether this is something that he's trying, like a rope-a-dope, but he just looks so small and frail just covering up. And let Wonder Boy tee off on him. Yeah, they, the first round was completely just uh, trying not to get hit, and, trying to stay away. And, you know, I mean, when you try not to, uh, to get hit, you move around. He wasn't moving. He went up, he put his gloves over his face, and Wonder Boy was just teeing off. And I'm like, what are we doing? Why well, is this the fight? I'd what? love to have seen the fight, but... Uh... Yeah. 
Uh, it just the, the way you guys called it, it sounded like uh, like Mikey D just he wasn't there. Well, no, there he, was no he, offense whatsoever. He didn't show up at all. And uh, it's not that I'm sitting here attacking Mikey D. I thought it was great that you know he wanted to do this event with us, but it did not. <laughs> It wasn't a real fight. <laughs> All right, were people trying to bring up to you that it was uh, fixed, Fezzy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got that the rest of the night after the broadcast. You know, that uh, people were saying, hey. Anybody you... we know, I mean, people that know us know. Yeah, Bone Daddy was in my face about it. And he's like, hey, fine, if you don't want to break the fourth wall, fine with me. <laughs> and I'm like, that's a great impression of him. When he goes, fine, <laughs> thank you. I'm just going to have this tea. <laughs> I guess he's not British. Yeah, I don't know where you make up. Your, your voices are just not from uh, of just any truth. But, yeah, just, uh, you know, come on, you can tell me. Stuff like that. And, you know, I would tell you. And like you said, we can come up with better. Right. Fezzy, when he came in with the bag of flour, hit him in the head, and, you know, everybody laughs. And it's more fun. That thing, and Wonder Boy, I'm not going to uh, not gonna say that you didn't win the fight. But you were so reckless and just stupid in there and uncontrolled and it reminded me of your producing skills. You could have really sat there and teed off on the guy. And yet when you shoved him, he went and hit one of those old lady judges. And I literally thought that's when we lost that, that the, the boxing commission people. I thought that's when it looked like a reckless, crazy event and they weren't no part of it. You what are you pushing for? I don't know. I was really excited and uh, I was just trying to be really aggressive. So when not, you would you, get... When you you would... got two uh, things against you. One more and you would have lost the fight. There's no way if you were fighting the way you would have that you they would have disqualified you you were shoving and you, you didn't do, need to do that because the guy was putting up no defense you had a chance i thought you trained a little bit well i did train a lot of the things i learned when i was training were like blocks which i didn't really use any of i just went of after not. him just I, as aggressively as i could who tried to tell you that's what you were going to do no i know I you, did. Did you to throw a punch i should have said that. and remember no pushing. Don't grab his head and push. It was like you were trying to push him over the top rope. I was just so pissed at him that when I was punching him and having no problem with that, I just felt like it wasn't enough. So I just you, kept going at him more then, so and more so. And then you shoved him into on Esther. Well, that, I, you know, I didn't even see anyone else. I just All I could see was him and that I felt like hitting him wasn't enough because for how mad I was. So I, that's what I think why I turned to shoving. Don't grit your yeah your yellow fangs at me. <laughs> All right, I'm not trying. I'm just saying. I was so mad at him. <laughs> just thinking about it, I just I really got you know wound up about it. So I think that's why the pushing came in. <sighs> I don't know what to tell you, Bill. Bill, you're on running Fez. Hey, buddies. Hey, buddy. I don't love Mikey D anymore. You could not have written a worse way for that dude to go out, man. I really do hope that was a bit, man. I didn't get a chance to make no. it up there, but I listened to it on the radio. If that wasn't a bit, man, I mean, I don't know how he could ever show his face around there anymore, man. Well, it's, not the, it's not the point that he was getting whooped all the first round and that he roughed Mikey. I mean, I mean he roughed Wonder Boy up the day before in the a, in a studio or whatever. But the worst part about the whole thing is, is we call this an ass bet. It's betting with money you don't have. This yeah. girl didn't even show up. And, uh, and I bet you he probably would have made out with Wonder Boy's girl, knowing that his girl yeah. wasn't even there to, you know, fulfill the, to, to fulfill the debt. Yeah, don't I, love that I, guy, man. I, yeah, I can't defend him. Uh, oh, the only thing that I can say is that he did absolutely. He wanted to drive home last night in the fog and the rain, and Fez wouldn't like, let him. But he did drive home early this morning. Yeah, yeah. I finally talked to him. We got back to my house, and we, I finally talked him into staying because he was packing the bag. You know, yeah. he was headed out into well, he, the night. He didn't come out of the green room for the rest of the night. He didn't hang out with anybody. We hung out for a long time and partied and uh, did the crazy salsa dancing or whatever the hell was going on there, and he wouldn't come out. And then we all kind of rode back together, and he was just really depressed with those, you know, uh, and, you know, again, because it didn't have a clean finish, it had a Wonder Boy-esque finish to it, he was still looking to, hey, I thought I was coming back before the towel came in, and I didn't want to sit around going, bro, you know, I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. but Yeah, so he stayed the night, and then I heard him up early this morning. Packing his heavy hands, clink, clink, his weights that he works out with. You heard the Hulk music in the background, <laughs> the sad Hulk music. <laughs> and and then he was out the door early this morning. Sure. I know. I'd probably go into a new town and tell those guys that he can fight. <laughs> I would be. 
changed his name to Mike C. Uh, do you think we'll ever see him again, Fez? I doubt it. And if we do, it won't be for a long, long time. Yeah. I mean, he, like you said, he wanted to go out in the middle of the night, and he left early this morning, and he really wasn't looking at me. And I was still asleep, and I'm, uh, all right, see you. All right, have a good time. All right, let me point this out, though. I was 3-0 and in my picks. You were 0-3, and, and then you also took the Florida Gators today. You, my <laughs> friend, are schlep rock. I am not doing well. I have got to turn this thing around before football season starts. And I had Mikey D to the last moment, and then you got so enthused with him, you jumped on his side, I switched over to Wonder Boy. And I couldn't have made a worse pick at that point. But you were in here and saw him when he started fighting, and, and I saw that he couldn't throw a punch then. And I, and I said that night, Mikey was really upset with me, you can't throw a punch, Mikey. And that was... And you know everything is a complete shoot. It's not a work. The, you know the, you know we've done wrestling matches and all that for fun. And we we would try to make it more entertaining. But when I saw that he was throwing real punches with no gloves and couldn't knock Wonder Boy down, I'm like, we can't put that as the headlining fight. And I will say this: I said that all the way along, and yet Mikey constantly has to be the headliner. Yeah, and I I thought going into it that Mikey had Wonder Boy intimidated enough. That Wonder Boy was just going to let everyone down again. Yeah, 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 it wasn't happening. What do you think? You're just a train fighter now? You ready to go? No, I'm not. You want Fezzy to... and I start barnstorming you across the country? I'm not trying to rest yeah. on my fighting laurels, but, you know, I did all right. You know what I mean? I kept my head up, and uh, I beat his ass. So I feel good about that. I can't fight that part of it. The fact is, it was so ugly, and it had an awful ending. And all I asked you to do is to put on a good show. I didn't even ask you to win. I just said, put on a good show. And you were the third best fight of the night, as predicted by me. At the same time, I can't take it out on you. You came to fight. I don't know why Mikey didn't. Can he not fight? I, I don't think he can. I... Why would you go out there in the first round and put your gloves up over your face and let the other guy start teeing off on you. And if you, if you watched all the boxers in the uh, green room last night getting yeah. ready for the event, it was Mikey who had the shirt off and was doing all the big stretches. And, you know, everyone else was just kind of in their head getting their tape and their gloves on. It was Mikey that was going through this big routine backstage. He should have been standing there with his car keys in his hand. <laughs> he was afterwards. <laughs> Chris, you're on a fez. Hey, my two favorite bodies in Radio Land. How you doing? Bye, hey, buddy. Hey, I just want to throw my props to Wonder Boy. You the man, brother. You held strong. Let's go, man. Thanks, Chris. I said I was gonna do it. Oh, God. Shut no, up. I, I'm gonna have to put up with your bragging now. <laughs> but I said I was gonna do it, and I was saying, hey, if you want, you can finally back the winner, get in on the ground floor. Don't you remember what we just talked about? One more shove, and it would have schmazzed the other way. You were so close to losing that thing just from being a nut bar and having no self-control. And literally, you can win and not get respected. I don't even know how you can do that. Uh, Chuck, you're on a fez. I wish I could have been there. Yeah. I couldn't even listen to it. I was on duty in a hospital. But good job, Wonder Boy. Getting rid of Mikey D, I'm so glad. But just remember, man, he was out there for his kids, so don't say any more stuff about that. You well, know? Can Stay I tell you something? That. Here's the other sad part. Yeah. As he's in the backstage area, he's sitting there in a very, like, rocky thing where he's trying to be quiet with his robe over his head and staring at this framed picture of his kid that he brought, and he's saying, this is for Lene. He was talking to it? Yeah. Don't worry, honey. And I'm not. I wish I was making that up, but I'm not. We should have put that on the line, where Wonder Boy got to smash it. <laughs> I know that's true. <laughs> you should have smashed the picture. <laughs> Hector, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Run of Fez. Yeah. I think I think Fez uh, would have done a better job than Mikey D, man. I'm really disappointed at Mikey D. You know, he he he, he acted like a like a wolf, you know, like a whip. You I, know, just. I, I wish you would have prepared, you know, like take some, uh, some, uh, I'm not training, you know? You know, I can't defend him. And, you know, Mikey is my friend. He will always be my friend. But I can't sit here and say that I wasn't, not just sh let down, I was shocked that he had nothing after all this anger. 
if he would have fought any of the other fighters, he would have, I mean, Wonder Boy was literally the fifth best fighter of the night. Yeah, from process of elimination there. It was like the Parenthood movie. Clint Howard should have been screaming he's got no business being in the ring. I gotta tell you, at one point he's all, he's all covered up. Wonder Boy is just teeing off, just bringing the punches. And Mikey looked so small and frail. I thought he looked like Lene to me. You know how she's small? And I almost jumped in to save a little girl. I haven't talked to him today. You've never talked to him since he left, right? No. I mean, and this morning it was just real early, and I tried to get him to stick around, hang out today, maybe go have lunch or something. He just wanted to go home is what he kept saying. You know, and it's very, yeah, I, I wanted him, because I knew, like I even said last night, like, hang around, we'll have lunch, because I knew that if he didn't stay and kind of be a man about it, we'd never see him again. Yeah. And, I mean, when does he ever got home and I called you to say, hey, I got I made the trip okay or left an email. Yeah, I didn't get any of that. Yeah. No message that he made it back home. Uh Will. Will you're on Ron Fez. Uh as I'm listening to the fight, I don't know if you said that Mikey D was doing a rope a dope, but that's the idea I got. I was hoping. And that was a rope of hope there from me. <laughs> but you don't do that to someone that you're convinced that you can beat up like it sounded like you know, from the way he was talking. I I don't I don't know whether Mikey thought that he was a much better boxer than he was, but yeah, you don't actually even try to rope a dope a smaller guy. If you were fighting J Dubs, who's a big guy, and his heart has to pump all over his body, yeah, you might attempt to rope a dope. First of all, no one's ever pulled off a rope a dope but Muhammad Ali, and that was after his skills were gone. So it's not, it's not an effective thing to do. And it was also. He used to do that during 15 round fight. Right. But not when there's not only three one minute rounds. rounds. Yeah. It's, it was dumb. And you and you're literally sitting around giving up uh, the first round, and the second round also belonged to Wonder Boy. Even though I got to say he was just you know crazy and out of his head and and not keeping it together. Yeah, I mean you saw that how the judges were doing the other fights. You know there's a limited amount of time to impress those old folks. Charlie, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Charlie. Hello, hello. How's it yeah. going, guys? What you got, buddy? Had a uh, good time last night. I was actually at the fight. And I thought uh, Wonder Boy was your best fighter there. He brought the most energy, the most uh, drive. He had the most... Uh, I thought his technique was a lot better than what? the rest of the guys. Wonder Boy, you, good you thought you were the best fighter of the night? I was definitely the best fighter of the night. I came out. I had intensity. I was working the oh, crowd yeah. before I he beat like he's That's not a fighter. That's a wrestler working the crowd. <laughs> he had the three eyes. You did have a rage. Why don't you just fight Tommy Batts then? I think that may be a chance for you to prove yourself as the... Uh, the WJFK Featherweight Champion. I got no problems. I'm ready to go. You're nuts. <laughs> I can't tell you how crazy you are. Uh, Chris, you're on Fez. What's going on, man? Yeah, buddy. All right. First of all, congratulations to the Wonder Boy. Yeah, well... Secondly, mm -hmm. after hearing Mikey run his mouth for weeks and weeks about being Mr. Tough Guy and getting beat by Wonder Boy, he didn't even have, you know, he wasn't even a man enough to stand up and honor his bet. Uh, so either ban him or start calling him Mikey Staples. Uh, I, I, I got news for you. I, don't, I honestly will be shocked if we ever see Mikey again. He felt that bad, and he was that humiliated. It was basically like a loser leaves town match. <laughs> and I'll always be friends when the match is over. Yeah. I'll always be <laughs> friends with the guy. But I can't imagine he would come back on the show. No, I mean, uh, Ronnie and I saw him last night, and the one thing he wanted was to leave, yeah. was to head to the city limits. That's what he wanted. You know, when I was in uh, sixth grade, so awful that his family moved to another town. <laughs> and that's kind. Of, and I still think that that guy left with more dignity than Mikey did last night. And I just think he's gone. <laughs> like Hall and Oates put it best, he's gone. <laughs> Is this uh, Black Girl? Hey, Earl. Buddy. Hey, my buddy. Hey, buddy. Uh, for, I'm stunned that Wonder Boy won this fight. No one believed in him but me. <laughs> I was the only <laughs> one who really believed that he could do it. All right, here's Doshu. Doshu, you're on a fez. What's up, buddies? Hey, hey Doshu. How's it going, my man? Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting a little bit financially. I, uh, I called for some action on the fights last night because I couldn't make it. 
so I threw old Andy Jackson on uh, the <laughs> infamous Greek. Lo and behold, to my dismay, bam, I'm out 20 bones. Yeah, I went 0-3. The freaking humanity. Oh, oh, thank God I just did 20. Uh, some guys were talking some smack to go up. i got to give credit to Wonder Boy, though. It's, yeah, I hate that part. Yeah, I know. That's the part of it I really hate. It kills me. That's it's not it, even bittersweet. It's just bitter. It's just physical pain. That's what it is. It's like when I pull my back, I throw my back out. It's like, oh. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's why out of all my addictions, I'll never be have a gambling addiction. Yeah, you know, because I, I hate paying those guys the money I lost. Yeah. It just annoys me a lot more than getting the money I won. Yeah, it drives me ballistic, psychotic, man. It just, oh, bitterness. And then there's that, you know, hanging it over your head for the rest of the time. This is Steve. Steve, you're on the air. Hey, guys, how you doing? Hey, buddy. I, I think Mikey, I think Mikey D got, got punked right when the fight started. The night before, he came down, you know, he, he came rushing in on Wonder Boy and, and got Wonder Boy running scared. Yeah, so Wonder Boy, why did you act like such a bitch the other night and then you were a tough guy last night? Because... I, I'm not going to... I was going to fight him in the ring. At, when I was backing away, it wasn't because I couldn't have kicked his ass. It was just I was not going to do that. I'm not going to let him come in and dictate when I whipped his ass. I wanted to whip it at uh, Dream. But at that what? point, he had made you kiss his daughter's report card. No, he brought his daughter's record, report card out from his back and smacked it off my head before I even knew he, ha he had it in his hands. You should have ripped that up last night. Well, I think, I think what happened, you know, when the fight started, Wonderboy came out and, and, and tagged... Mikey D, and it threw Mikey D off so much that it scared him, and, and he couldn't get his composure back. He just sat there and thought, oh, my God, I might get my ass whipped. And yeah. Wonder, Boy, Wonder Boy proceeded to dictate how the fight went until he got overexcited. Yeah, started being crazy and, and out there. started flailing. Yeah, basically but like a dog humping somebody's leg. Hats <laughs> off, Wonder Boy. Yeah, hats off. Thank you, sir. Hats off, Mohawk up. Geek, you're on my affairs. Hey, what's up, Wonder Boy? How you doing, buddy? Hey, man, you made me some bones last night, baby. <laughs> you are welcome, my friend. <laughs> hey, man, you made me some bones last night, dog pound. Has Cameron Gray paid off his bones? You know bets? what I'm saying? Check this out, man. Has he paid off his bones at the dog pound? <laughs> you said your boy talk all that smack, baby, but you did your thing. You hold me? Yeah, I you hear hold him. Uh, you hold me, baby? You I hold him. Hold him. I hold you, sir, yeah. He wants you to be held. 60 bones on my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's uh, up, Ron and Fed? That sounds nice. Geek, All right, Dick. We'll yeah, talk take to you. Take it easy, people. Yeah, holler. take it easy, people. Holler. I holler now. Yeah, we'll take a break. Wonder Boy and Mikey D. How many times did I ask you guys not to close the show? Did I not tell you you were going to be a disappointment? Well, Mikey was a disappointment, though. When I said I could do it, I wasn't uh, assuming Mikey was not going to try. I said that I could come in and fight big. And I did. I whipped his ass. It was horrible. I can't, you know, I understand. It takes two people to make a fight, but my thing is, and I talked to you extensively about this off the air, this is what I didn't want to happen. I want you to try, I want you to close your eyes and just think real hard and try to become Tommy Betts. Just when you open your eyes, I want you to be Tommy Betts. Okay. No, you're not. You're still that jerk wonder boy. I don't think that uh, just because Mikey wasn't ready wow. to withstand being Hold boxed. On. I, I cannot believe it. I didn't think we'd hear from him tonight. It's Fuzzy, our longtime buddy, Mikey D. No way. Yeah, he's on the line. Hey, guys. Hey, Mikey. Hey, man, you know what? Props to Wonder Boy. He came out. He tagged me in that first that first round. But in hindsight, uh, my strategy backfired. I figured, let me get him tired. Who knew that I had some nutty corner man that was going to throw in the towel? And believe me, if Wonder Boy knocked me out in that second round, no problem. I would have accept, uh, accepted it. But he uh, he came out. He he was throwing punches. Um, I I figured let me let me let let me get him tired. And I thought that I was coming out in the second round and starting to uh, really fight with him. And I thought I was going to get him in the third round. But you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because 
The result is the towel was thrown in. I lost. So, Wonder Boy Man, my hat goes off to you. And I'm going to stand up like a man and say that. Mikey, what about the fact that the last fight had no entertainment value whatsoever? Uh, you know what, guys? Uh, you know, I more than anything, I'm, I'm disappointed in myself that, um, you know, he, he comes out and he's punching. And I wanted to do the strategy that I wanted to do. And um, it, it didn't pan out because, in, in hindsight, again, if I knocked him out in the third round... It would have been the best strategy in the world, and everybody would have... And now like that always is. Mikey, you cannot tire a person out with one-minute rounds. Well, it you wouldn't know, happen. It's like saying, I'm in a 100-meter race, I'm going to try to tire the guy out, or I'm going to stay behind him until the last second. There's only nine seconds in that race. Well, Ron, in all due respect, when I heard him, um, you know, punching the bag, and he was winded after, you know, one minute... I'm saying to myself, last night, now, now, this is not the way I went into the fight, but if the guy was going to go crazy and start in a frenzy and, and, and start punching, you know, punching all over the place in that first round, you know, I'm not hurt. I mean, it's not like he hurt me, I wasn't bleeding, I wasn't, you know, nothing was... No, you were covered up. There's no doubt about that. You, you had your... Your gloves over your face yeah, while he was did. punching. Did you go? And I mean, that's not even rope dope. I don't know how that became rope a dope, but if you actually go back and watch the Ali fight, he was laying back on the ropes and he was moving. He didn't crouch down and put his his gloves over his head. That's the the sight of a guy getting just pummeled, Mikey. Did well, you go over the strategy with your corner man, Towley? That that corner man was telling me. So many cockamamie things. Meanwhile, he's got the video camera in the in one hand, you know, and it's like. Well, I hope he's showing that at parties. Well, you know, it's you know, Mikey, I'm, I'm sure it'll be a. a Mikey, you thing. know, Fezzi and I are uh, always going to be friends uh, with you, but this was uh, really disappointing. You know what, man? I'll, I'll have to agree with you then. You know, I'm not going to go against you guys. Um, my strategy, my, my, that, but my, did I ask? Time, but if that was your strategy, that's not the way to be a headliner. No, you know. You know what I mean? A headliner but, but Ron, doesn't play cover tunes for a while and then uh, do his hit. But You've got to have. It wasn't my strategy going in, but I saw the way Wonder Boy was looking. I saw the way he Punching. came out, and I saw all the hits. And I just said, you know, once he started hitting me and throwing all the punches, I said, let me go into a turtle and let. Him get tired. No one has that thought. I'm going to go into a turtle. It just happens. It's instinct. Your instinct kicked in, Mikey. There's not a sport where the turtle method comes in. You know, and the thing, well, there is. I mean, in this in this situation, there was for me. You know, it's like street fighting and, and anything else that comes on that that's instinct in, on the streets. That's different. This was a boxing match. Wonder Boy had the right. You know, um, Mikey, to come in Mikey, and start punching me. You're, you're talking like this is all making sense. This is the second time we did this with you. The first time you fought, you didn't throw punches. And I said, Mikey, I'm concerned if we set this fight up because your last fight was not entertaining. Well, the second round last night, Ron, I was punching. You know, that's when I started coming on. And, you know, and all of a sudden I'm punching. I think that you're remembering it different from the rest of us. What did the guy in the corner say to you on why he threw in the towel? What was his official expo explanation? He didn't want to see me getting hurt. That's go, the, what he told me, he goes, hurt? I can't let you guys have a knockout out here. And uh, I'd then, rather have a knockout. And then, No, can I tell you something? Sure. Then I talked him back into it, and the judges came over as they're loading up their stuff. And they just go, no. Their point was, Mikey... You weren't fighting a fight. You were being defensive. And they weren't, as boxing commissioners, are going to allow that to go on. That's the kind of stuff that's going to show up on 2020 later when they're going, look, this guy's not even trying to defend himself. Well, it's exactly what they look for, a fighter who doesn't try to fight. But the thing was, Ron, 
The first round, yes. But the second round, I was throwing and I was hitting Wonder Boy. And I just heard the replay where I, where, you know, I was hitting. Bro, that's me trying to, I was trying to hype. Well, and I'm not going to like And then the referee says I wouldn't have called it. Yeah, I got to agree with you. He, he said that, but the judges are the ones, that, and I'm not defending them. I would let you guys put it out. I don't think Wonder Boy can fight hard enough. But let's suppose you were fighting against a Tommy Bats. Yeah. Which, the way you were talking, you would have said, I'll fight anybody, right? Yeah. You have got to be, fight if you're going to get in the ring, and you just you just didn't show up. Um, I, I thought I did. I was, I was hyped before the, the fight. I was ready to go. And like I said, my strategy backfired. It wasn't a strategy if you thought to yourself, he's hitting... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into a turtle. That's not a strategy. Not throwing a punch doesn't count as strategy. Again, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to tire this guy out and I'm going to come out in the second round and start going. You know, and that's... And, and if the towel wasn't thrown in, if Wonderboy knocked me out, that's fine. But what, what my intention was... Mikey, get him I want you to understand end. this. They will not allow a fight to go on when the fighter doesn't fight. Now, Fez and I got a lot of emails today saying fix, and it was all hype. It was everything that I told you I was worried about before. And did I not tell you the other guys were going to put on a great fight? You did. And did they go out there and put on a great fight? They did. Now, if Spoon would have said, okay, I'm just going to hide under my gloves and wait till he's done punching, that wouldn't have been a great fight. The reason why it was a great fight... Is Spoon went toe to toe with Tommy Bats the whole time, and when Spoon lost, everybody's going. There's a champion. There's a fighting guy. Yeah, he, he took. You know, and he and he, he really, took the fight to him. That's what we say. That's what we talk about when we're fans, and we wanted to see a fight. Well, then I guess I disappointed you guys, man, and I'm sorry. And um, you know, again, I I I can't take anything away from Wonder Boy. He, he came out. He did what he said he was going to do. Yes, he did. He that's, showed up. That's it. You know, that's it. All right, some people want to talk to you. Mikey. Sure. Here's uh, Dave. Dave, you're on Rana Fez. What happened to the rage? The rage that I heard the night before the fight. I could have. I would have bet my house that Mikey D would have torn him up. A guy who is fighting for his family, for his daughter, for his name, and it was just a complete letdown. How do you answer that one? Uh, did you have a chance to talk to your family, Mikey? I'm sorry? Did you have a, he was saying you were fighting for your daughter, for your family. Yeah, I mean, I, I was. I mean, again, you know, it's not like I was in the back, in, in the, you know, in, the, in the, uh, the back room saying to myself, oh, wow, uh, this is my strategy. This is what I'm going to do. You know, it's like you I was panicked. pumped. You I panicked was once, you got in, once there was punches. You know what? It wasn't a panic. It was just that I... Where did his first punch catch you? I don't know. I mean, he he, he, he rocked say. me, and I was very surprised at the strength that he had. So I said, you know We're what? We're talking about Wonder Boy. You know, he he hit me a couple of times, and I and I my put my God. hands across my face, and I said, let me get this guy tired, and let <laughs> me go after him. You were just gonna take. You were just gonna get pummeled then. Well, I mean. These are one-minute he rounds. He's knocked. not. You, he could have fought twelve of these. It's twelve one-minute rounds. He never knocked me. He never knocked me out. He couldn't. You were under your own arms and gloves. But in the second round, I was punching Ron. I was coming out there, and I knew he was tired. I mean, in between the first round, he's sitting on a stool. I'm standing up. Yes, I don't see what that's got to do with anything. He, he, was, he must have been more tired landing 100% of the punches. That's fine. and that was. But that's not entertaining, Mikey, and that's part of what we asked you to do, you was to what? go out there and actually fight. Because you wanted it. We didn't say, hey, Mikey, would you please be in a fight, right? No. Then you, it's... No, it was I, me. I don't understand uh, the excuse. Here's uh, Randy. Randy, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, guys. Hey, buddy. Two statements and a quick question. Yeah. Wonder Boy won the fight. The bet has not been paid. Mike, where was your wife to pay off? Dude, um, because of medical circumstances, my wife couldn't be there. You know what? And, and, and I'll be honest with you. I didn't think she had to be there. 
I thought I was going to win. Okay, listen, that's you know that's medical thing is a big deal. You know, and that's and that's the truth. How are you going to pay off the bet? It's not it, it's not an excuse. How are you going to pay off the bet now? I, I kissed I kissed Harry. That wasn't the bet. Okay. How are you going to pay off the bet right? Well, that may have to be up to Wonder Boy, right? Is it going to be a rematch? It could be a rematch, but I don't you know you know I don't know. The way, I'd say the no. Way, the way I. The way I fought last night, I don't think the guys want that. Yeah, right now I would have to say no to a rematch. And you know what? I would have to agree with you, Fez. I don't. You don't want a rematch, and I don't want to put the audience through that again. I understand. And the listeners. That's cool. Uh, Wonder Boy, what do you want for paying this off? I don't want to have anything to do with Mikey. Mikey, he disgusted me by shooting your mouth off and not even trying. I don't want anything to do with you. That's fine, then. If you want me... You know what, Wonder Boy? You're just... Mikey, you embarrassed yourself last night, and I want you to keep doing it. It's it. Okay. I mean, what, whatever you want, Wonder Boy. You won. I'll have to adhere to what you said. Mikey, uh, was Lene listening? Yeah, she was. Why? Why would you let her listen? I'm, I, wasn't, I wasn't home. She was listening. She wants to listen. What'd she say? You know, I'm always her father, man. That's all that matters. Did you tell her exactly what happened? Yes, I did. And no matter what, she still loves me. And that's the way it is. Here's uh, Martin. Martin, you're on Fez. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey. Hey, Mikey, man. Let me tell you what. I started this new job, and I worked one to nine. And I could not wait to get off work to see that to, to listen to that fight on the radio. And when... <laughs> Well, come on, man. I, I was so disappointed I did not take off work to go watch the other two fights. Man, you know what? You know, I was rude for you the way you was hyping it up. You know, I come home, I can't wait to get on the air to listen to this radio show. Uh, you know, I'm big fans, and, uh, you know, you hyped it up. And I, I would have, just like the other caller, bet my house on you. You know what? You know, you know Martin, uh, you know, it's like I'm, I have to say I apologize to you too, man. That's, that's. Just the way it happened last night, man. And I'm sorry, Martin. Here's uh, Perry. Perry, you're on Runner Fez. Yeah, Runner Fez. I think the punishment should be that if Mikey D is off the air for a good long time. I get so sick and tired of him whining, him and his little pink panties. Helen could have beat um, could have fought better than him. What a little girl. I get so tired of him being a little bitch. Thank you, Perry. Mikey, how do you answer your critics? Um, how can I, um, at this point, how can I uh, beg to differ? Yeah. That's, that's the thing. You know, I, I'll be a man enough to say, that's it, you know. Whatever you guys saw, whatever was, what was in my head, doesn't matter. The fact was, I didn't entertain, I didn't fight, I didn't... The strategy didn't work, and if that was my thing in my head, and everybody is mad at me, and everybody is upset at me, that's fine. I'm here to take it. And, again, I, I can't say anything else but say I'm sorry to everybody, and, and that's it. You know, and Mostly I'm sorry that I, I dropped that F-bomb, and, you know, I just was just incredulous that this guy threw the towel, but... That's the way it is. And um, there's no excuses, Ron. There's no excuses. Fast. I'm not asking you. Hey, look, there's Fez no and I are always going to be uh, friends with you, Mike. Well, Mike, we you always know, know that. You know, I, I know that, man. And, and the thing is, there are no excuses. I lost when the boy won. I... Well, you know, yeah, that's the way it is. Mikey, the thing I don't understand is, who did you let down more, us or your family? I would say you guys. Thanks. All right, let's just make sure there's no more yelling at each other and all no. that kind of you know stuff. what, man? Wonder Boy, you don't, you know, you don't want to have anything to do with me. That's fine. I understand. I'll adhere to your wishes. You, you were the better man. You beat me. That's it. And that's, you know, the the truth is there. Mikey, the truth Dave, is there. I want to explain something that a wise man once said. Okay. There's an elevator, and it runs 
to the suite, and it runs to the street. Okay. And where's my elevator going? Well, that's your choice. That was your choice, right? Yeah. I guess so. Amorosa. It's a rough one, huh, Fez? It is. It's very rough. It always is. It's very rough because, you know, you said Mikey's a good friend of ours. He's always going to be one of our best friends. Yeah. And and I know Wonder Boy's, <coughs> excuse me, I know Wonder Boy is hurt because one thing was this is really one of his first live appearances, live gigs to try to put together. And it was ruined. And, and I had and, to... And he's, you know, he's taking the heat around here for it. I had to convince you guys that I should headline. And you shouldn't have. And I begged you not to. And I said it constantly. And I I actually argued with you, and I said, no, I'm going to come out there, I'm going to bring it, and this fight's going to be great. I'll even say this. Cameron stuck up for you guys going, this is the most hype fight. It's the one you got to stick with. It was a disaster. And I believed in myself, and where I went wrong was believing that Mikey was going to do what he said he did, or what he said he was going to. And he didn't do anything. And he hung me out to dry. Mikey, what did you say in your audio diary last night? Um, or did you talk to it today? I didn't do it yet, but um, I have a lot to say. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, you know, Wonder Boy. I mean, the strategy that I had didn't work. I know, know. we've heard. That's it. it. I mean, you know, again, it wasn't a strategy, Mikey. I'm going to say that as your friend. The fact uh, every other fighter goes, what is he doing? You know? Well, you know what? What's Helen yelling at us? No, she's yelling at me. Okay. Well, I don't want her to be in trouble. I'm sorry. Don't take it out on her. Yeah. No, 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 no. 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 Has nothing she to do. didn't lose. She's still a nice girl. All right, Mikey D. All right, guys. The Wonder what? Boy, man. You, you came on strong. Mikey, just stop. Props, okay? Mikey, please. Yeah, stop. well, please. He doesn't want to hear it, Mikey. Okay. All right, man. See you, Mike. See you. <sighs> that was like at the end of Gentleman Jim Corbett when uh, John L. Sullivan had to come back with that big belt and hand it over to Corbett. Never again can he walk into a bar room Slap his hand down on the bar and say, I can lick any man in the world. Never again does he get that opportunity. The sad part is he keeps stressing the strategy part. Yeah, it's not when, a strategy. When everybody there saw yeah. exactly what happened. I mean, Spoon had a strategy. Right. El Jefe had a strategy. Look, that would be like me saying my strategy against my brother used to be falling on my back and kicking. And then every time he moved around, I would try to kick. That's not a strategy. That's a panic defense mode. So it, and I, I love Mikey D, but he did not have a strategy. And that, and saying he did, you know, really just makes it worse for him. If it means anything, Wonder Boy has done 800 things that have annoyed me uh, since that night. So, and it's only, it's 24 hours, Fez. And already uh, Wonder Boy's got yelled at 16 times. He should be basking in glory, and he can't because he's Wonder Boy. If your screw-ups were hard-boiled eggs, you'd be a champion right now. I'll tell you, there's only one thing I like about you, Wonder Boy, and that's your chick. I don't know how you ended up with such a drunkard's dream. And she sticks up for you, and she showed up for you, and she's a great chick. Yeah. I don't know how I ended up with her either, but I'm thankful to have her. She stood by me no matter how I wanted to up the bat. Whatever it was, she was always ready to go. This is going to hurt when she takes off a stifler, huh? Yep. A lot. That'll be any day now. Howard Stern, Don and Mike, Bill O'Reilly, Ron and Pez, and the Washington Redskins. 106.7 WJFK.